I've got cat tape crafting. PKA 688 with our guest Richard Ryan Taylor. This episode of PKA is brought to you by FaroDistro.com, Merrick Health, and of course, Lock and Load. A lot of wonderful sponsors. We'll talk more about them later. Richard, thank you so much for joining us. You are muted. There you are. No, there dude, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, guys. Let me let me start by circle jerk in here and say, like, I like the older I get, the more I start thinking about certain things. And I fucking hate people who close doors on other people. And I really appreciate who people who are like assets. Like they always like just come to the conversation, like willing to contribute, introduce you, whatever. And like Kyle, like you were always that for me. Like even early days YouTube, like when we were doing fairly similar content, some people would get competitive. You'd be like, hey, bro, let's do this. Let's do that. And I'm glad you remember it that way. (laughs) It's like like almost 20 years now, man. Like fucking two decades. And so like I'm like, I'm getting I'm like getting older and I'm like one decade, right? I I, 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 I (laughs) one and a half appreciate people who are like, I don't know, they they're just door openers. They're not like Fuck you, closing a door or whatever. Maybe I'm just dealing with too many VCs or something. <laughs> Richard, I can hit it back because I got this. I was talking to my mom two days ago, and she met somebody new. And it was the owner of a dog that bit her. And this guy was like this perfect, super nice guy. Super fa- Everything was so perfect about this man that she's like, he's too nice. I don't trust him. And uh, I was like, that can happen. But sometimes they're actually that nice. I've known this guy, Richard Ryan, for over 10 years now. <laughs> and he's a, he's that nice and he just continues to be the actual him. No, so. you're 100%. I always say that about Richard, that he is he is so nice that you'll be suspicious of him at first. Because like, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm glad that you're like, yeah, from the very start, you're great. Uh, no, I was like... That Richard guy's way too nice. He's trying to introduce me to people. Well, he's saying he's going to like hook me up with this, that, and the other. He knows people that I he, he thinks I need to know. No, there's something going on here. I don't, I don't trust this guy. I don't trust this guy. <laughs> well, you never, you, never, you never conveyed it. In well, the, I was polite like, about it. I wasn't going to be like, I don't trust you. What did, what did you don't Richard, need to know that I don't trust you? Kyle, what was the thing you used to tell charisma, me? But bad. that was like, at the God. Twitch party. Um, that it was back when it was twi- um, Justin. Yeah, yeah, it was at that party, oh, um, or maybe an after party of that party, and I was I was chatting with you. Um, so it was a long time ago, but but whenever we met and you came and obviously helped me with um, high speed stuff, that's when I was just so happy to to you know I felt like we had a um, I don't know symbiotic relationship, symbiotic relationship. Yeah, yeah. dude, I, mm-hmm. I I say that all the time. There's there's no reason for people to have parasitic relationships. Like there's there's way too many people out there looking to extract value, not really provide it. Um, it just it's 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 so nice to just Dude. involve people around you that are just looking for symbiotic relationships provided for everybody mm-hmm. I, it is. I have been on both sides of the 80 20 like um oh no no i better yet i've been victimized by the 80 20 deal right you can do a win-win or you can do like machinima and get this win loss right where it's like oh we're going to take 80 percent of the money we're going to give you 20 not let you know that you're only getting 20 mm-hmm. and fuck you over. And th- that's how EA like got around machinima and stopped working with them. They created their own thing so you could go directly because they were like, what? We give you a $10 CPM and you took eight of them and gave the other two to the content creators? That's bullshit. And then they lost EA. And I have had the opportunity to screw over people who didn't know better and didn't take it because I'd much rather have 50-50 deals for as far as you can see then in 80 20 and then the guy figures out i'm an asshole like it, yeah. it's it's way better mm, yeah, just it's have so good. funny you wins. say that because I, I i've been given that analogy a lot about the video game industry in the early days of machinima specifically like because you know last time we we chat i was kind of alluding to the things that i was building in the world of software development and everything um but it was early days extracting value we're going to become a choke point for this thing we know is big. The, this is probably a horrible analogy, but what I was trying to you know, articulate to people is like, it's, it's like a garden hose and watering a lawn or a fire hose. You got all this water coming out and then you get somebody who's trying to choke it off a little bit and get a narrow focus so that they can extract the value. It's like, well, the lawn's gonna suffer for it, right? Like Machinima mm-hmm. was extracting so much value that other content creators couldn't come to the... Uh, to the table and whenever all these other video game developers said, Hey, you know what? Screw it. Let's let the market 
do its thing. This is going to be free advertising for us. In return, you know, Call of Duty became the largest entertainment release every year for how many years? Um, scripted theater mode with Red versus Blue became a thing that never really would have happened had you not let the community say just build. And that's why I'm like such a big advocate for open source, you know, everything in a number of ways, because, you know, the, how do you compete with an Apple or a Microsoft? You have to, you have to incentivize developers that they can't hire. Yeah, they can hire the, the best ones in the world. They've got the budget to do so. But if you really want to make a difference, build an open source ecosystem, fork it, and let's incentivize some developer in Argentina who's got time on his hands to make a meaningful contribution. It's just like, again, that's I go to value extraction. People are just trying to control fucking things, and I hate it. I hate mm -hmm. it. Dude, and you've Apple been hanging goes, around a lot of meanies. Like you're, <laughs> you're just thankful to be around. Does that yeah. go too far, Richard? Right in, or do they get it right so if people don't know apple does roughly this you make an app am I, i'm calling him richard ryan like, <laughs> I know, I know, I'm, I'm joey diaz like hey joe rogan <laughs> but anyway um oh, oh so apple takes 30 percent of the revenue right so if you make a game you can put it on there they will handle all the freaking like credit card transactions they'll get the platform they have the user base they have all this stuff they provide a lot of value for their 30 percent in a game or if you make a better ruler, I don't know how you do that, or whatever it is you're going to put on the phone, then Apple will take a, almost a 30 or profit, 30%, but then you get access to this ecosystem. And that to me seems like a fairly good deal. But then it becomes a bad deal for certain things. Spotify comes to mind. It's like, dude, a lot of work goes into that. And Apple, imagine if Apple got 30% of all of Spotify's revenue. That seems like a lot. Um, there's probably other examples like Tinder or something. No, that's like, perfect. Yeah. Apple is perfect. Um, and and it, again, 20 years ago, this is, it, it, this is your mind is just on fire. You're like hitting all of the analogies I like to give in these conversations okay. <laughs> while we're building. We open. could be friends. <laughs> well, because, because YouTube, YouTube and Apple are the two perfect examples. Um, you know, we're almost, you know, 2006, 20 years ago um, when YouTube came around. Hosting a viral video, if you had, you know, a million views worth of van bandwidth would probably cost you a hundred grand. I'm like, it, like it would break a lot of people to try to host their own content. So YouTube was providing an insane value. But now when you start looking at things and like how they may weight various algorithms towards things that may not be, you know, well, let's just say it firearms. Great example. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everything that Kyle and I did. Uh, on cameras legal in the US. It may not be in, you know, third world countries or places where firearms, you know, are restricted or whatever, but you know, for them to demonetize or even restrict um in search and related curates a a narrative to society in, in making firearms taboo. And it's like, well, now the only things you're going to see propagate are probably like school shootings or something like that. Not 22 plinkster out at the range, you know, with his two daughters practicing firearm safety, you know, and, and doing mm -hmm. an Annie Oakley trick shot or something like that. That's mm -hmm. really frustrating to me because the cost of hosting on AWS and a number of services now is a fraction of that. So how do we build these infrastructures that uh, essentially index all of these other videos? Um, and I, that's what, one of the reasons why I'm so excited about AI specifically and being able to parse all that stuff um, and, and cut through the noise because for 20 years, we have been manipulated in so many different ways to increase watch time on platform through mm -hmm. the exploitation of our neurochemistry. It's it's so frustrating. So many, like if you're watching uh, a cooking video, um, it shouldn't be 15 fucking minutes long. Give me the recipe and show me how to do it. Don't try mm -hmm. to extract value by milking the algorithm so you get more watch time on video. Some and assholes then, make four hour podcasts. Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, right? But, but it's like, it's like, we could you know. break it into 400 short clips. How would you like that? <laughs> I We're being that. nice. <laughs> Dude, I, so, the, the thing so funny. Like, like, like five like, of the clips deathbed, every week in dead air. <laughs> if you were to take and look at how much time you spent listening to somebody say like, comment, and subscribe if you like this video or milking this, think of how much time of your life was spent. Is it one day? Is it two days? Is it weeks? What is that time of your life worth if you were to quantify it in dollars? Are you willing to pay $10 a month for a fucking app 
that like distills this down and penalizes in some way, shape or form people click baiting or not providing value or at least open sourcing it in a way that allows people to uh, authentically rank what they like and what they dislike so that they're uh, served up things that are better, but sorry. I think we need a little bit of human moderation on some of these sites. Like it seems mm -hmm. like there's n like how expensive would it be to get a room full of college kids instead of being in a call center hawking credit cards to be like, whoa, I can see your labia. Let's take this off YouTube. <laughs> I, so Woody and I, our new fuck favorite that guy. YouTube trend. Yeah, fuck that. Well, <laughs> Put this on our new page. <laughs> we want to monetize the labia, Woody. Like, like we, 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 this is YouTube triple mm -hmm. X. YouTube X. That's coming. That That's the adult <laughs> side that I want to help these girls get monetized on, not on the regular side where they're currently monetized. There's this trend where these girls basically try clothes on. It's called a try-on haul. I just went to the store, did all the shopping. Now I'm going to try it on for you guys. And I'm sure it began as a very innocent thing, right? Like literally maybe a mom goes out shopping on a Saturday and comes home. Girls, check it out. Look at all these shoes I got. Look at this blouse. And they try on normal clothes. Well, that is not what it is anymore. It mm -hmm. is only Leave fans. It, it is it is hot, hot girls often, like 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 eights. And, and they are trying on see-through transparent lingerie. And I'm like, I can always, almost always see pubic hair and nipples. And sometimes you can just see their labia. Like they're just naked essentially. Um, and then there's this other side. And those are the, the Western girls. There's some, there's some Aussies. There's some Europeans, mostly Americans though. And then there's the scary side where it's these Eastern European chicks who look too skinny with dark circles under their eyes <laughs> and their mouth is moving, but it's not their voice coming out. It's a different Russian lady being like, Oh, how I like this transparent blouse. Show off my titty very nice for you all. Oh, boys, you like my titty? Yeah. And then the, the real <laughs> girl so probably happy, saying, so please help me. We gave the money to Gustav. If you could just get me out of here. Is what she's probably real, really saying, but you can't see what... <laughs> yeah, that's the darker side of the Tryon girls. But I'm still a fan, nonetheless, of, of, of both both sides. Dude, the Tryon girls are interesting because uh, at least the ones I see, they'll have like 5.8 thousand subscribers. And I look at the video, I'm like 725,000 views <laughs> on yeah. 5,000 subs. Like th this is totally organic. Yeah, they're tremendous. Um, I was watching one just before this, like just before we got on, I had, there was some redheaded Australian chick with, um, <laughs> with some transparent lingerie. Um, you it was great. This? What do you mean? What, on YouTube? What do you mean? Where was I watching? No, it? no, I said why? Just, just look at porn, dude. I like, like no, I'm not. Doing? I'm not like, I'm not masturbating. I'm not getting turned on. I'm just having a good time. I'm enjoying the the art form uh, over on YouTube. You From know? what I can tell, like scrolling through the suggested for try on haul right now, there is no middle ground between pornographic actress and morbidly obese whale. Yeah. Like there, that's all there is. There's no There's normal biggins. women trying like, like hmm. the, the nipple pasties thing. You're right. There's women trying nipple pasties on. And then there's this woman who I don't even want to link for Zach to show because it would be bullying. But she looks like a fucking garbage bag full of melon pulp. Kinda, this mm. disgusting animal. How does melon pulp? It well, I mean, he said see through clothing. I just don't know if the viewers understand how see through this the strip is. Strip tease. Like, like <laughs> at a strip club, they wear more. Like, like I've never been to a strip club with like a, um, there's topless bars and there's strip clubs. I've never been to a topless bar where you see this much pussy as you do on YouTube. You know when a nipple is erect, sometimes there's like almost little goosebumps yes. around the nipple. You can sure. see those through the clothing. That's the level of transparency we're talking about. Mm. Yeah, full on. Or, yeah. You don't miss. They anything. do a fun. This one chick does this fun move where she wears like a transparent gown, and then behind her, and I mean like behind her ass, is a big bright light that shines through the gown, so that you can see her vagina um, mm. just perfectly through everything, and she's just moving back and forth. I don't know. What do you guys think? And then my favorite is the idiots in the comments who think this is genuinely a lady trying to pick out clothes. And they're like, I pick outfit three. It really, it really makes your eyes pop. It's just like, a lot, of, like, lot of Indian guys on in sale. these comments. Oh, <laughs> your boobs and vagine, they are so beautiful. I am so very much a fan of your content. <laughs> the, Kyle, the ones you're seeing are better than mine because at least they're like bringing the clothes home and doing lighting. Mine are mm. in the changing room at the store. Now the, oh, the upside is there's mirrors. Well, here I am. There's mirrors on every wall, 
<laughs> but uh, so you can see pretty well. See, that's it, stolen valor. They haven't even bought the clothes. No, they haven't. Sponsored by the brand. The girls it's I watch are often on. sponsored by the brand. They're like, now head on over to the fucking Love Honey and get yourself some of this sexy lingerie. Use my code. You're watching. I, although I do like those Eastern European girls who do not have any codes. They wish they had the code to the door because it's locked. <laughs> <laughs> do you think this guy Poor is? Girls. Do you think this guy Steve is interested in fashion? He says. She has the face of an angel and the body of a vixen, typed with one hand. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking, that's fucking ghoul. I always just say great because you can do that with one hand. <laughs> you always say great. Right? Yeah, you need left hand great. That's why I adopted your water password on, on video games. Yeah, always water on video games. Yeah, it's it's password. Up. Yeah, well, now our lobbies are ruined. Thanks a lot, Taylor. Fuck, you're right. Remove this, Zach. Been <laughs> using that password for 22 fucking years. But 22 years. Well, okay, no well, longer will my code names game, games be the private. What's chemical name for water? Is it hydrogen dioxide? I think Dihydrogen that, monoxide, right? Thank you. I think, yeah, I think I had it backwards. Well, we can use that. Well, actually, only Taylor can use that. I can't spell that. Half the kids I play with can't spell that shit. Yeah, I, I'm in that club. That's I why know. I'm playing video games with them. They're easy to beat. <laughs> <laughs> I need the fucking... Uh, the best. We were playing Rust one time. Hold and, on, real uh, quick. We were... Peter left a comment that says, "Nice areolas on on this com on this comment <laughs> section." He spell areolas right. He's yes, he did. This is guy he correct? is correct. This wasn't his first rodeo. Saying nice areolas. Taylor, fact check this comment. This comment. Were they history's... indeed nice areolas? Yes. Yes. All right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'd yeah. say very nice. Yeah, uh, I can see the whole thing. Yeah, back in my day, I don't remember any any stuff. I just remember titty girls. Like there'd be a lot of cleavage. Um, there was a lot of big titty goth girls, um, and there was a lot of those reply girls who would be kind of like looking up at the camera and and uh, with their with their boobs out. And oh, and the reply like, girls! Like my video would be called like I don't know AK forty seven car destruction, and their video would be called AK forty seven car destruction colon reaction. <laughs> but did the I thumbnail ever tell you what my I did? thumbnail with like their titties uh, like superimposed on it and it's like what i want to watch the one with the titties <laughs> dude so i uh I, I i had a reply girl channel and like i like testing out different channels to see how different things weigh in the algorithm and everything mm -hmm. and so i was like screw these reply girls man they're like gaming the system. So I look and I got some uh, really busty woman mannequins and I took and <laughs> took photos of them and I did a garbage mask a la annoying orange style and mm -hmm. I did voices for them. <laughs> and, and every day I would go through Google search trends because I didn't think that they were that smart in, in figuring out what was going to trend. And so I would do like 12 videos. Hey guys, what's happening? Sexy little mannequin here. <laughs> Stupid <laughs> voices. <laughs> Did it get any and views? Then, and then a lot of times they would hit trending, which was fucking crazy. And they started flagging my videos. And Good. so like they started like, I don't know, getting their little armies together and, and botting oh, my video. Fly girls. Yes. Yes. Oh. And so I was like, okay, I got to test this. Because they would start copying my videos. So if I uploaded a video on, say, FPS Russia with AK-47, blah, 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 blah. Within three hours, they would have a video up the same topic as mine. So I was like, I'm going to try to trick them here. I'm going to do a video that I think would look like it's going to trend. It was like the like a Samsung car or something like that that had like a LCD panel on it or something like that. Mm -hmm. And... I was like, I know it's not trending. It's probably not going to trend, but they'll think it is. And I want to see if they copy me. And they did all of them, hmm. which is fucking crazy that I had this small channel that was just kind of testing this thesis on these reply girls. And they just had, they, they were botting me. It was awesome. I, I hate to be this sexist, but I wonder if, if it was the girls themselves running the channels or if they were like, because there were there was a COD player, I think, that was like, oh, this is the girl who's good. But it was really just like a guy with a hot girlfriend. <laughs> really? So you think <laughs> there's some Andrew Tate behind the scenes here? Yeah, it might be an Andrew Tate situation. OK, I do remember the one big giant titty reply girl that would make explicitly FPS Russia videos every time. She's a big and fan. She would respond like. Her reactions were so disinterested, I could be like convinced 
that she was just like she someone was off care. camera with a gun because she really I was convinced that she hadn't cool. watched my video. Like, like it was the <laughs> thing she was saying could be could apply to like a cooking video. Wow, the things that the person in this video did really blew my mind today. What a what a creative <laughs> and innovative content creator. Yeah. I gotta say, when you're doing things like insert name here, <laughs> like. <laughs> what are you doing you're i don't think you watched the video yeah. yeah it was annoying but only because they get like a quarter million views sometimes and it's like i don't know if that 500 dollars was supposed to go to me or or or, or if that's just some yeah. extra that they got because pe but i wanted that slot you know you've got your big your video mm -hmm. here and then you've got this row of thumbnails to the right of it i want all those at least the first like half dozen or so should be me and she'd sometimes get up there with her titties it's like I would click the titties too. Clearly, that's what we were talking about. Me clicking titties. Yeah, I used to use tags that were unique to me. Things that look like passwords, almost. You know, like mm. not, not even real words. But yeah. it's like, all right, all right. If one of the tags on this video, YouTube has tags that like for searching or I don't know what they're for. And the the, the goal was to own the sidebar, like you said. You know, if you're enjoying my video, my hope is that the selection of other videos that you might go to next are also mine. There's mm. a T Mart had a very distinctive like text mm. font. Yeah. Uh, and color Thumbnail pattern. This, look, th he had this yeah. gold on blue look, and it and it was a certain background. The, the 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 it was a bit abstract, but once you knew it, you knew it, and you could pick a T Martin video from a thumbnail. Uh, and there was this guy stealing it, making it his business to do so. Um, now oh, even that. there's a guy in the in the Tarkov yeah, community. Max. Oh, I thought it was like Alibaba or something. Like some, it, that was the channel mm -hmm. name. I don't remember. There's some guy in the Tarkov community doing that now. There's this guy, Rollins, Piranha, yeah. that I watch. He's the guy who makes like all the tutorials. It's the three-minute videos. All right, you want to know what this key does? Here's what it does. <coughs> Thank you so much. I make 10,000 of these because it's my passion and love in life. Thank you, Piranha. And then this mm -hmm. other piece of shit, like, I'm going to make my video, my thumbnails purple, black, and gold, too. And also show people where keys get turned. And it's like, mm -hmm. fuck you, man. Fuck you with your with your bullshit. You remember That's the guy who would target videos for advertising with, and he would Photoshop his face in with those people and run ads on their videos. This is like early days when CPMs and CPAs were a little less. Oh man, yeah. I wish I had some screenshots of that from back in the day. He would do it to all the big YouTubers like I Justine and everyone. And he would run his ads on all their videos and like crudely, like he was like, you know, like you would say like a, a bearded overweight guy in his like, 50s or something like that mm. i don't know but <laughs> it was just really <laughs> funny that was just a little side hustle for him yeah making some spending money a little pocket cash oh it really was really the wild days. west back then that and selling women's shoes <laughs> you think that was what he was doing yeah oh. in addition to his youtube yeah. content they, they go well they go so well together it's a it's there's a, a good overlap yeah. there it's like bait and tackle come on <laughs> I, I i at this point like I just I'll get into one thing on YouTube and it's the only thing that will be suggested to me for like a six oh, yeah. month period. And so mm -hmm. it's almost like a cyclical obsession. Like it, if I go to my homepage right now, it's nothing but Age of Empires 2 stuff to guarantee I'm going to stay into that. And then I'll end up finding like a bunch of hockey highlights in a few months and then it'll be nothing but NHL stuff like it. It's very predictive in that way. I really in a few months, your team won't be playing. I really That's liked that fair. system. <laughs> <where> <laughs> so never mind. I guess I'm in AOE too for a lot longer. Than I <laughs> if you remember, like they had almost a, a Reddit like system that was so much better back before, where you had categories. It's like I want to know what the biggest mm. video in entertainment is and the biggest video. Like if I'm thinking pets and animal videos, I I'd, I'd, I wish there was a category where I could go to and I could learn. I could watch all the cute cat videos or whatever. There's not though. I don't think. Or if there is, it's so deep within menus that it's not. It used to be just the homepage. Dude, the monetization of like Twitter with all the, the payouts and everything, which apparently like they don't pay out much at all anymore, mm -mm. even to really, really big accounts. But they will basically like these former accounts where it'd be like, I'm like engineering world or something. And like before all the money came into it, it was just a guy who was posting like, check out how these gears work in a steam engine from, you know, 1880 or some shit. It's like, oh, that's really cool. Now those accounts like will bait with like posting incorrect information or like trick question math problems and be oh like, my God. only 10% of people are smart enough to figure this out. Mm -hmm. And then the dumbest people on earth in the replies are like, not me. It answers for 
And then some <laughs> other person will respond like, nice, nice try. You didn't, you actually didn't include the division part of, and, it, and they're both wrong because there's no answer because no it's answer. meant to have no answer because it's trying to drive engagement. And it's like, this is called world of engineering and you have people arguing over a fake math problem. And then you go to their account and it's like, oh, it's been weeks since they've done anything but bait at all. So it, in that way, like it, Twitter has been wrecked with some content because there's so much bait like what, what's the old rule of the internet like if you want the answer to something don't ask the question explain it wrong and mm -hmm. someone will come along and correct you i was talking about politics like three weeks ago or something and, and they decided to this management course i had where you get the behavior you incentivize this is like it, circling back to that again twitter is absolutely incentivizing these people to do bullshit bait tweets and yeah. that's what they'll get paid for mm. youtube incentivizes people to make 15 minute long cooking videos so they do you just have to change the incentives and then you'll change the behavior completely yeah. agree but they want as many eyeballs on every post and so they they're not going to change that i wouldn't think they want those advertising dollars richard if you were in charge of x how would you make it better more better yet, how would you make it more profitable i think that's his biggest issue yeah, um, man, the it's funny, man. You are you are lockstep with me today. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Well, yeah, mind melding, because, huh? Well, y'all gonna be. So, I've been you riding been, motorcycles any, anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been telling people like the, the, three, them on the, the back. three areas of focus for me, at least in the last few years, is first and foremost incentives, inefficiencies, and optimization. That's the three things that I focus on to tackle at a high level and get as granular as I can. And social has been that really big kind of existential crisis for me. Um, and like, it, again, the, the manipulation of human neurochemistry to increase watch time on platform. Um, I had hopes for X. I still do um, just because of the discussion there's, there's tweaks around certain things. Um, you know, if you're paying for a product, hopefully advertising isn't the mechanism or the incentive, um, that's driving the ecosystem. Um, value is a subjective thing. So let the users define what that value is, um, and let their interactions or their muting, their blocking have higher weights than certain people who, uh, rage bait. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I mean, if you look in the comments on mm -hmm. Twitter, you you genuinely ask a, a serious question or you say something funny and you want your followers to engage with it, then there's 20 fucking random things that have nothing to do with it uh, yeah. in the replies. And it's really frustrating. It, it, it confuses the user experience and really makes me less sticky with it so um i i think that people need to throw away the traditional advertising approach and and thinking about again watch time on platform and, and advertising and think about what is the value to users can i can i tell you about something i've been working on yeah okay so this is legit this is a problem i've been trying to attack uh for the last few years and really like like trying to think about it from a high level and if you get too high up, you, you, you just have to start building stuff to experiment. So one of the first things I'm building is actually for the warrior dog foundation. And so when military working dogs were retired, they used to be euthanized because they were classified as equipment. And so Robbie's law, it was too big of a liability for the government to, um, to adopt them out or let them out. Um, like a machine gun or something like that. They treated them like equipment. And then in 2000, the Clinton administration enacted Robbie's law, which prevented, like kept them from being euthanized, but allowed them to be adopted out to government organizations like um, local PD, sheriff's departments, NGOs, stuff like that. Well, hang on a minute. I don't want some PTSD ridden Iraqi dog policing my small town. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hang on well, a goddamn minute we, we, we'll take care of the vets but maybe not all of them titanium that's not it's, pets it's that's funny you thing. bring that up because uh early days of youtube actually worked with blumenthal's office on my my channel to promote uh the canine members of the armed forces act because essentially what we were doing we were pushing for treating uh military working dogs as servicemen and women 
because they already rank them higher than their handlers. Um, and so giving them veteran benefits after they're retired so that they could live out, you know, their, their golden years or whatever. Um, and here we are today, they're able to be adopted out by certain people who qualify. They go through Lackland. Mm -hmm. Um, but some, like you say, suffer from PTSD and some of them are just top at the top you know, they're the highest drive dogs out there and they're not really pets as, uh, Kyle can attest to. They're very, yeah, you know, he bit me, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, so, he, yeah he died, uh, last year. Uh, oh, late last man. Year. Yeah. Uh, what was Rip. his name again? Rip. Dak. 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 Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And so, so I'm trying to attack this problem and it's like, what is, what is the value here? to the end user and to the brand or the creator, which is the warrior dog foundation. How do I build a more meaningful relationship between them and cut out all these middlemen that I can to at least increase the, the, the value exchange here. And so I've built a complete tech stack from the ground up and I don't know what the second and or downstream effects of this are going to be, what people are going to build on top of it. But in the collars of the dogs, I put QR codes NFC and RFID. And then I put like 60 cameras all throughout the facility inside the kennels, where they sleep, where they eat, where they get bathed, where they play, um, all these different things. And then readers. So as the dogs go throughout their day with the handlers and stuff like that, it triggers events and it curates a media feed for them. So you can sponsor one dog, you can sponsor three dogs or all the dogs. And so it's meant to build a more meaningful relationship between the organization and the end user without the organization having to hire a bunch of social media people and, and scale mm -hmm. that in a way that helps, mm -hmm. you know, uh, reduced overhead in some way, shape or form. Also not throwing mud at St. Jude or anything like that, but you know, you might get a mailer, uh, at Christmas or a blanket or something like that. That's not really an efficient way of, uh, marketing and, and providing value. I think just here's mm -hmm. my money. Thanks for the blanket, you know, or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so for the dogs, I'm like, now you get a voyeuristic intimate relationship with the thing you're actually, uh, supporting. And then that helps the organization reduce the churn and increase the lifetime value of that customer too. And so this whole tech stack, I'm like, I'm going to just build it and then give it away for people to build on top of, but I got to build these use cases. So this is the first one. Then the second one, and maybe third, I was thinking coffee company. So you'll quite literally see your coffee growing on the plant, being harvested, being washed, roasted, shipped, not stock footage, your actual coffee using the QRs and, and timestamps and the, the footage. But then this is where it gets crazy. Everything I like to do, I like to escalate to the, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. the, the next level. So it at least gets on people's radar in a way that really makes people have difficult conversations. Uh, so Maybe somebody like Vital Farms, there's a lot of, like one of my neighbors is a CEO of uh, Vital Farms, a founder, um, putting RFIDs on the chicken's legs. So you see at the regenerative agriculture farms that they have, the chickens roaming around in their nesting boxes, extreme slaughter. <laughs> <laughs> so eating, eating one another. <laughs> so it, it's funny you say that. That's the next one. So the Kansas City Cattle Company, food waste is a massive <laughs> problem in the US. And so... My goal with this is to, if somebody is thinking about throwing half of their steak away, give them pause, knowing that they'll be able to see the calving process through the lights going out on their steak and the butchering process of it, the entire Bro. supply chain. And so we're going to have to get a, a a guy who's like camera ready to hit the, put the rod in their head though. Right? Like we can't just have big Jim there. He's, he's, he laughs every time he loves oh, yeah. automated. <laughs> you don't even have to have a cameraman. That's what I'm saying. It's like, it's, it's yeah. almost like all the cameras are hear fixed. me out. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I pay a small fee and I get to, with my mouse control, the rod gun myself. <laughs> I am, I am so process. with the warrior dog with the warrior dog foundation i am gonna do like, it, it's hard because i i just kind of got back into like the hardware hacking side of things so like i'm i'm trying to build a treat uh dispenser mm -hmm. like a furbo or something that people can donate and dispense treats maybe we figure something out with the rod have I don't you thought know. about like <laughs> the applications of like cabs um, in that room have you thought about the application maybe at like a homeless shelter for this like i would donate 
to the homeless if I could have footage you can and one? like see what yes, you know, just so I can see what they're doing. Like <laughs> this is Roscoe. Now. He's an eighty-two year so, old Kyle. I know you're similar to me person. in that you would never in a million years donate to a homeless person ever. <laughs> but no. if you can see kind of what he's up to late at night near the train tracks, you can follow around Roscoe. You can see what Roscoe's up to. Roscoe had a little run in with, you know, the, the king of the tracks or whatever it happens at night. Big Jim? Big Jim. Like the, <laughs> these are things we don't know. I, I don't even know how to this make it. This guy dropped 20 like, bucks on mushrooms. When he's not using that, when he's not putting the cows down with a rod, he's out there on the tracks yeah. messing with the hobos. It's like he's, Twitch, but like I get to guy. donate to give him his drug of choice. Keep him, <laughs> keep him active. You can just, so Zach, just, Zach says only fangirls. And that's like that legit. Like that's why I'm doing this open is like if people yeah. want to fork or uh, build on top of it have at it because i think that i got um it. you know I'm, I'm even building a generative uh art um application without rails so if you can come up with a way to specifically from a simple affordable ish bot that the thousand dollars or less that that i can then as a user in my home control and manipulate an arm that's in the on, on camera because then you could make it weird right you could have I know there are guys who are like feeders. They like mm -hmm. to feed fat chicks and make them fatter and fatter. Imagine if with your mouse, you could scoop up some ice cream and put it in her mouth for like a, you know, a couple bucks, couple, couple, couple. Did that reality points. show do that with a paintball gun? Where you could shoot point? people with a paintball gun? Yeah. yeah. No. Oh, they, there was some kind of, it, oh, it was for a video game. I remember what you're talking about. They did a, um, maybe it's something different, but around the time we were making videos, maybe Rage or some video game did a promo where, like users could click and shoot a real machine gun at like a car in the desert or something. I remember something like that. I see happening. That's I have no memory. That's that. actually not a bad idea either. If you can control a gun from, I might have some. We we'll give you control of this Reaper. <laughs> <laughs> that's the future. That's oh, that would be the best because I feel like we don't have our. Be I'm sure the guys controlling the drones are really good at it. But dude, you you've seen Twitch. There's some gamers out there. Kyle, like, have you mm -hmm. seen the last Starfighter, the movie? Of course I have. It's this exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. It, it, for people who haven't, there was a movie in the 1980s. And uh, this is back when video games were like uh, consoles you stood in front of at like restaurants and arcades. It turned out this one game in particular wasn't just a random game. It was put there by aliens to select the best pilot in on Earth. The and, galaxy. The galaxy, the galaxy. Whatever. yeah, yeah. So these so machines are on planets everywhere. <laughs> these machines are all over the universe, galaxy. Uh. I don't know. <laughs> and they're getting people from all these different, uh, I don't know, races, species. I get them mixed up a little bit, but like, like humans and non-humans and whatever. Yeah. And this yeah. one guy, a teenager from like Missouri or something, was just really good at this video game. So the aliens came down, trained him up, put him in a spaceship, and I forget something. They and, all got what it is, except him. So he became put, the last. Star they put fighter. him in like the super duper prototype. Like we've got we Did got they? one of these bitches, and you don't even know. It's like it's the F twenty two Raptor of space, and everybody else is in third gen MIGs. It's a bad day for the enemy team because he's got like a rotating cockpit where like the it you know the 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 sort of structure of the, like the crab under stays the same, gun, but the, but, in, but the yeah. whole cockpit like rotates so that he can like turn around and shoot behind him and like. He's got a co-pilot who's like a weird, like doo-doo faced alien guy. I never it's saw cool. it. Is it is it virtual that he's playing and he's playing a game? So it starts off and he's at a console in a outside his trailer park and he's like new high score. They come down and kidnap him and they put him they put him in a real spacecraft. But then mm -hmm. shit goes wrong. Enemy takes out the whole star base and now it's just him and his co-pilot and they got to take on the whole evil galactic empire. Wait, is that South? park episode with kenny playing the video game i had no idea that was like referencing a movie well it's kind there's of ender's similar. game as well ender's you... game is is really cool um i read the book and then i watched the movie uh i like that concept is like i don't know it's a twilight zone episode it probably could have been that I... instead of a whole movie <laughs> <laughs> i like um the reality do you guys remember beyond he was a very good call of duty player and the three was a that he was yeah a, actually he, sure yeah yeah um yeah, yeah. anyway oh, yeah it, like early on it was like hutch blame truth and beyond was like one of them he was very very good at video games anyway he left and started flying drones for the navy and i'm like they don't know what they got with this guy <laughs> he is really good I've, and i think he was like he was better a better drone pilot than his peers 
I just wish that Summit would be like, all right, guys, today's stream sponsored by the U.S. Air Force. We're going to be taking control of this Reaper drone. I'm told we're at, uh, what's the latitude launch to? Yeah, yeah, right above Pakistan right now. We have no <laughs> idea we're here. Well, if they're watching the stream, they no stream snipe in Pakistan. We actually disabled the stream in their country. Yeah. So fuck There's you, Pakistan. Here we off. go. <laughs> I'm going to ask everyone to refrain from using text to speech for the next few minutes. This is top secret. <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> Dude, we could All right. Donos in the chat time. if you want me to take out the nuclear centrifuge. <laughs> <laughs> like, Some guys just leaving like R, 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 R. <laughs> just like where they say the Poggers, so Poggers, Poggers. Pog hey, they take out the nuclear centrifuge for the Poggers in the chat. Seven. Poggers in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> On uh, I didn't know that that tiny little like hat looking key is called the circumflex, I guess. On and so six? the the no, it's okay. not on my six. I don't know. It just a little top like a rice farmer hat. Little yeah, on the eight text. for me. Okay. Yeah, oh, I guess it is on the eight. So they the text to speech person says that that is a circumflex, and so during all of fish tank. Like there would be like five minute long messages with nothing but that because it's like three syllables you can get from one tiny thing. Just circumflex, 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 circumflex. And they do it in black guy voice, which is funny. Like circumflex, 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 circum and just do that over and over. Made me laugh. Circumflex. <laughs> what the folks is circumflex. It's crazy. I always That's wanted navigation six. with a voice like Sam Jackson navigation, I think would make a long drive. Or e even if you were like a delivery driver, UPS guy, I'd love to hit turn left, motherfucker. God yeah. damn, it's traffic. Wait, He's always like late that. on telling you, turn left in 15 feet. Like, <laughs> it's like, it's ML Jackson. You could get like a lot of different people on ways when they would do those things. You just don't update your app. Yeah. I didn't hmm. know you could do that. I, I, do you have to pay to get Arnold? On ways, would, I think if I, they would run a promotional thing <laughs> when like a movie would be going on is like, oh, the new thing or whatever. And you just download that voice as a I, I would know. like that. Honestly, I've got a like a like a cold British lady. Turn left at the next intersection. You can use I'm an Australian, Australian guy. dude. Yeah, I use an Australian guy. That's I, I drive a F-150 and it just seems like that's what his voice should be. Yeah. And it's more jovial than like a most a of your whole, parts are made here, mate. <laughs> Maybe. Turn right here. <laughs> If you wish, you know, like, <laughs> whatever. Cut. Life's an adventure, you know. We can keep going straight if you prefer. And like, <laughs> got, like options there, whereas like a cold kind of shrewd British bitch. No, thank you. Richard. Yeah, back to McDonald's again. Or like a nanny nine one one vibe. I don't want that. Do you remember I, that show, I, nanny nine one one? Yes. Well, there were like <laughs> three different out, shows. That came out when I was too young to know that like all reality TV was scripted, and so I'd be watching and be like, "Damn, these kids are getting away with murder." Like, I wish I could behave this way. No. It there was, were like it was three awful. of those shows. There was Nanny 911, like World Trade. Super, Super Nanny. Super Nanny. And there, I think there was another one. Um, there was the funny South Park episode where they tried those and he, he would spit in their mouth. Like the British, <laughs> like Super Nanny. He did, she's like, you're going to do what I say. And he goes, <laughs> and spits in her open mouth. <laughs> and then who did they get? The dog. These whisperer. are Milan, the dog yeah. whisperer. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, every once in a going, while. And pinching Eric every time Eric does the wrong thing. And he's like, ah, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and it totally works. He gave him the model Trains child. It. Don't argue yeah. with it. Don't debate it. Dominate it. <laughs> <laughs> so he does Richard, that. back on dogs. You said dogs are ranked higher than their handlers in the Correct. army? Correct. Yes. Because if it, well, all <laughs> branches of service. That way, in, in the event the dog um, abuses it, uh, it's abusing abuses his uh, rank like makes people do too yeah yeah it's, it's a superior op uh, yeah and if the dog bites the uh the handler it's we just sweep it under the rug because that didn't happen <laughs> wait a minute <laughs> oh so if the dog bites someone they tend to be very high they, they just rank the dog at the level they're allowed to bite what am i hearing no, 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 no. So, so say the colonels and below. Are the, yeah, the, <laughs> the, the, one of the military is falling to shit. Dog is one, dogs. Rank above, <laughs> one rank above the handler. So, okay. in the event that the handler neglects it, um, then that's the. the you think uh, anybody ever gets called out for not saluting a dog? Probably. Like ho ho ho! <laughs> the yeah. sergeant entered the barracks, soldier. <laughs> Stand Sorry, attention. Sergeant Wuffles. <laughs> Do not salute Enjoy your this sergeant. He works for a living. <laughs> you will show the proper respect to Major Pop Tart when he enters the tent. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, to be honest, I don't know of any stories of people like not loving the dogs in their yeah. their units. Like, 
Like I love Trump one. going on and on about the dog that uh, they sent after that Baghdadi guy. Oh, these beautiful dogs. These beautiful dogs. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh. one of my favorite clips. Do we from have Trump. the best dogs? Do you think? Well, we he was the... talking about how they. Hey, oh, he, dude. So I think that, people need to know he was concern. screaming and crying and begging. It's like, Jesus, did they let the dogs eat him alive? The experiment process for the dogs is interesting because there's there's probably there is a very finite, let's say, amount of reputable um, organizations that breed them. Breed. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And 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 so the American or the DOD procures so many of them that it's really hard for civilians and a lot of ways to get a good dog without paying a shit ton of money, like a lot of money, just because all of those really good dogs, they're spoken for. And mm-hmm. then like the, the females, another hard thing, or at least I'm told is like, no, none of the breeders want to come off of any really good females because they want to breed them. And so, you know, there's, there's really interesting challenges. My concern is that you, you start getting these like essential puppy mills of Malinois in the U S people wanting to buy them just because they want to look cool or whatever. And it's like, mm. dude, that's, I, uh, I don't know about, mil- I would imagine military dogs are very, that- very well trained. Um, but some of the police dogs I see, I watch a ton of police videos on this police activity channel on YouTube. I see a lot of dogs that are, that are not good at their jobs. Just like they think we're we're playing right now, and they're supposed to be attacking somebody, and they're just like <laughs> lollygagging around on the field. She's like, "Come what on, breed? Cobra, get him, Malinois." Oh, thank you, Zach. That's is that what Dax look like, roughly? Yeah, similar. Yeah, Kiwi. Do you have a Malinois? Yeah, well, uh, is it my Belgian Malinois? Is that what the full uh, name? Yeah, Belgian Mal. My uh, my pit bulls on the on the couch. I thought my Mal was oh, in you here. Have a pit bull? Both of my co-hosts would like to kill it. So if oh, you yeah. need that service, well, I mean, I mean, I'm sure he's got a good pit bull, and he he's is, a total pit uh, bull. Everyone who's ever watched him was like, "Hey, if you ever decide to get rid of him, just let mm-hmm. me know." It's like, dude, fuck you. <laughs> They're like kids. I'd never get rid of a, a dog. <laughs> like, yeah. Richard has much more dangerous things than pit bulls. I'm okay with him owning one. It's just Richard it's, is it's so like... likable. I'm okay with it. <laughs> like, <it's, laughs> I really don't like those kinds of dogs. Richard's like, yeah, I see Richards, and I'm like, we need a no, compilation <laughs> of this juxtaposed against what we say when Richard isn't here. <laughs> oh, next week it's right back to it. I'll be like those fucking things. Those hellhounds. <laughs> Line them up against the wall. I'm gonna They're go bullying no all the other shelter. dogs. Get no, I think that like no both of them shelter. are such loyal dogs that the wrong people bring out the worst in them. Like, I can see how they would be really bad dogs for other people. Um, mm. But, uh, I mean, they are super loyal. They're like the Captain America serum where they just, like magnify whatever they their handler yeah. has if a dog has traps you have to be has to be trained well <laughs> like, <laughs> like they're like defined triceps ripped ripped dogs if you just gotta break your knuckles trying to knock out a pit bull i just gotta i i nearly did trying to knock out my fucking knuckleheads the other day when they were fighting i was punching them in the head what do you have? um i got i've got a bernie doodle it's half bernie's mountain dog half poodle uh, he's like 75, 80 pounds. He's a big goofy boy. He's a year old. Uh, I've got like a shepherd mix. She's four. Um, she's sort of the speckled thing. Um, I've got a 10 year old Malamute that I got from the shelter that they were going to kill. Uh, and, and his name's Rocky. He lives on my couch now and he gets to be outside in the cold as much as he wants. And I just bought a four, uh, just the tiniest one pound Pomeranian. Uh, the other day and what I was going to say is like it's not that pit bulls are inherently mean I don't know that breeds breeds clearly have like genetic drive to do certain things when you see a pointer point when it's six weeks old you're like okay it's just in you to do that Mm -hmm. but that Pomeranian tries to bite my face every time I hold it like it is it wants to rip my lips off but it can't because it weighs two fucking pounds what are they ratting dogs what are they Pomeranian huh I would think it's just for aristocracy. Like it's some fancy dog for like, but, but maybe they were ratting dogs. I don't know. But I don't, I, I would, everything used to do something and have a job, but some of those breeds are ratting? just for sitting like in laps. Cat? Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, like, yeah, like okay. rat, like terriers, like a lot of terriers are for clearing fields of infestation. I've never heard that term. Okay. Yeah. There's great videos of ratting. Um, is it minks that they use? 
It's something like they, they use like a, a weird little critter. They I think they use minks or something, um, or or um and and dogs, and they clear these fields of rats, and it's just rat screams everywhere because the dogs and the yeah. I can't remember what the little critter they send in after. Jack them. Russell yeah, are like rock stars at it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's they their fuck job. Up rats. That's to end uh dachshunds. At one point, dachshund is German for uh, badger hound. So they're all they're, <laughs> those weenie dogs are shaped like that to go down into a badger's hole and to give him such a hard time that he turns around and comes out the other side to you. Man, I, and uh, all that horrible back problems, little feet, just to go underground and fight a badger. I mean, you've really been are, a little cruel to dogs. We should keep thinking, what, what were pugs good for? <laughs> <laughs> no, this yeah, is honest, the worst honest, ratting dog ever. <laughs> Honestly, pugs are like a. Uh, we show that to the other dogs. We're like, see, it's not so bad, is it? <laughs> it's not so bad being a terrier or a pit bull. Now, now get into that hut and find the bad guys. <laughs> yeah, look at your look at your compatriot here. He needs a little uh, a CPAP mask. <laughs> they usually love. <laughs> they usually love whatever they do. Like like us pugs aside. But like, I don't know, bird dogs, when you're dove hunting with a Labrador, he's just like, oh, this is so much fun, boss. Do I get to bring it? Kill another one for mm -hmm. me, please. Can I oh, bite yeah. that guy's birds a little? I won't bite them. I'll just carry them. He just wants <laughs> to hold that bird in, and yeah. they know not to chew it up. Like Labradors, like, no, not to damage the bird. They'll hold it really gently. But I don't know. There's something. Yeah. That's How does that work? How does that genetic sort of information almost work? It's, you it's, just breed the behaviors in. Do we have anything like that besides being afraid of fucking spiders? <laughs> we suck on nipples. <laughs> and that's a good point. Fears are a, definitely a genetic trait, right? Like something, mm -hmm. something downstream snakes. Phobias. Yeah. Most ph phobias. I mean, I, I, I'm heights. I'm very afraid of heights. I'm <laughs> very afraid of. Uh, I didn't think I was afraid of snakes until I saw a real one. Um, but I'm afraid of snakes. And a then real, I'm afraid what, of was a real snake. A rattlesnake, like a big um, diamondback rattlesnake in Texas, that one that I was going to handle that time. Um, and just like, man, you don't look like the snakes we have back uh, back east. You, they've got little round happy eyes and they go. <laughs> and like, <laughs> You're looking at me like, do it, motherfucker, do it, do it, well, you do, got it. do it, right? You got copperheads or cotton mouse. We just, yeah, you know, we got those. Like, we exterminated those off our property to such an extent that you just, ne I never saw one after a while. Like they were all gone. We killed them all. Um, but, but yeah, I'm afraid of rattlesnakes and I'm, and I'm really afraid of spiders and I'm definitely afraid of, I don't know if it's millipedes or centipedes. I get them a bit confused, but one crawled in my bed once when I was like 11 or 12 and bit me in the ribs. And, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll always be afraid of them now. Did it whelp up? Did it hurt a lot? Did, yeah. Like what was the impact of it? It was like a bee sting. Um, oh. It just hurt and what and yeah. like woke me up and so I jumped up and freaked out. Lights on and there it is, like with all of its thousands of little legs. Did it continue around. to hurt like a bee sting does? I don't think so. Although yeah. I was like real fired up about it. There happened to be a hammer because I'd been hanging something and I pounded him into the carpet with a with a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but I think my parents came in my room because I screamed and then the lights are on and I'm pounding the floor with a with a claw hammer. <laughs> yeah. Wonder, Did you get it? Oh yeah. oh yeah, you got him. All right, justice yeah. was served. I was. It probably uh, wouldn't have scared you that bad if you weren't in such <clears throat> a place of like peace and tranquility, sleeping. When I uh, when I lived in that lake house, we had problems with bugs because the doors didn't seal well, and so like there's around by the lake even there's always extra crittery things, and so there would be spiders in the house, and I was in bed with no shirt on, sort of sitting halfway up watching TV, and I looked, and there's just a big fucking spider crawling across my chest. And I, I jumped up, flicked it off, and I lost it. Oh and no! So, and so now I have to. I'm slowly taking my entire bedroom apart, making sure that the spider isn't on it, in it, and then putting that in the safe zone over there. There's like a green zone on the other side of the bedroom where I'm putting things that don't have spiders in them for fucking sure, because I because <laughs> I made sure. And then after a while, there's very little left on the red zone side of the room. But I've got my I've got like my bug spray and I'm digging around. I'm like, well, I guess I'm gonna go to a hotel. I'm okay, not okay. Well, that's that's psychotic. You don't know the types of spider. spiders though, like like what, the difference. Between, it was like, a wolf Daddy spider. Lama. It was like a wolf spider. Like that, like it wouldn't hurt me, but I I still don't want him living in my bed. Like like a tarantula wouldn't hurt me either. He can't live in my bed either. Yeah, a wolf this spider will bad, bite you. By the way, how bad I am. I was looking for my dog. I thought he he's like he's literally right there. <laughs> 
<laughs> dude, good fella. So, though, dude, we got scorpions, tarantulas, like of course rattlesnakes here and everything. But fortunately, I have king snakes and uh, hognose snakes here. Now, of course, coral snakes. Where they, are you? Like, uh, Texas. It's like central mm-hmm. Texas. Um, and so they pretty much keep the rattlesnakes in check and off the property. And so I don't like snakes, but I tolerate these guys. Like, and they, it's really weird because like coach whips kind of have a personality whenever I'm, I'm, you know, drilling the field or brush hogging or anything like that. Like I'll look up and they'll be like sticking their head up and watching me and following me, seeing what's going on and all this other stuff. It's really cool. Hmm. Oh, wait, what kind of snake is that? A coach whip. And if you've ever seen a hog nose, those are really cool snakes too. They like, they like, I don't know, compress flat, lay flat and like make themselves look bigger and puff out, but hmm. they're really cool. They're not like hmm. aggressive or anything like that, but, and they eat the have other you ever had any, uh, snakes. Have you ever had any exotic pets? You seem like the kite that would have a fucking cobra in a cage somewhere. Oh man, that shit. Like, uh, again, I'm not, I don't like snakes. Like I, I, I just know the value of the, them in the ecosystem here. Right. Mm-hmm. Cause we don't have rats, scorpions. I could do without the tarantulas. Dude, have you ever seen a tarantula hawk? Yes, oh, I the, saw the, the wasp, Coyote the wasp? Peterson yes. stand himself with one. Yeah, yeah, yes. They pair like wasps either, and then drag it to their nest. Yeah, they do that a lot. Wasps might be the worst thing on our planet if you think about how they live their lives and and what they're about. They're completely carnivorous. They they many of the species do what Richard just described, where they paralyze a specific species often. That's like the and and drag it back to their nest, lay their eggs in it, and then their larvae eat it alive from the inside out, usually, and then burst from within. And that's a big part of their life stage. It's not it's it's and it's not like oh, it was either lay you in a tarantula or in a f- orange. No, they don't put, <laughs> <laughs> it was never going to be an orange. It was always going to be a poor tarantula. Um, yeah. It's uh, the we call them dirt daubers. I don't know what they're really called, but they're these wasps wasps that take mud and make these sort of um, lines mm-hmm. that they make their little colonies in. And if you've ever knocked one off your building or if you're e- the eve of your house or whatever, you'll see they're full of spiders who have been interred semi-alive to be devoured. You, they're full of little really? spiders. Yes. And and any co- not just spiders, but sometimes there'll be other little like flies, like anything the wasp could capture and, and like inter in there for its larva to eat. It's terrifying. It's like something out of the worst science fiction. It's 40K Remember we would, we'd go in the garden and we'd see all the caterpillars where the wasps had laid the eggs and the caterpillars and like all the scars on their backs and then like the, the babies growing inside before. It's just... Ugh. There you go. Yeah, Cater- inside there is a hellscape you can't imagine if you're a spider. <laughs> <laughs> it's Ender's a dark game. place. Oh, Ender's Game is a, is a fun concept. For those who don't know, like like the at the end the, these children are the only are the ones to to like control the um the sort of alien defense network and like and and uh they don't realize they think they're playing a game and it's a very structured militarized game that they're playing but they don't realize they think it's a simulation that they're like trying to figure out how to fight the enemies in the future but they're fighting the war right now so when the, they're making st- strategic choices like take having a cruiser full of humans just crash into the enemy because it gives them a quarter second more time to to charge up the weapon on a different ship and it's like that was a hundred thousand people but the kid doesn't know that he just sacrificed a hundred thousand humans he's trying to win the game um it's a it's a fun movie and it's a good book but like i said i felt like it'd be, be a good like 30 minute twilight zone episode <laughs> i knew what was going on right away if i'm being honest you you like, mentioning the tarantula hawk have you guys ever seen coyote peterson's videos the like nature guy who's like unbelievably upbeat and he lets himself get stung and bitten by the most horrid things he's been doing it for so many years Jesus, and dude. there was a, a recent one that came out that had to be removed from youtube because i think it was too gory he it's like it's set up like a sketch he's like all right i'm gonna let the snapping turtle a real snapping turtle like bite onto the meaty part of his hand and the plan to make sure that it didn't bite all the way through his hand was mm-hmm. to put a stick here. 
And so it can't bite through the stick. Now you might imagine a stick like a big old beefy dowel, <laughs> hard wood, like a baton. Steel it rod. was it was the kind of thing that like if it was the structural post for a gingerbread house, it wouldn't hold up. It was the most, it's the most, it's the most laughable stick you've ever seen. And it's like taped to his wrist. So it's just kind of splayed out here. And he's like, the stick will protect me. And so he puts his hand in front of this snapping turtle and it bites damn near clean through his hand. And immediately he's like, beforehand he's like and the way this if this goes wrong you just dump water on a snapping turtle's head that convinces it that it's now underwater and it will release and so he immediately is bit and is if you've seen this guy he doesn't freak out like ever he can be stung by the most painful bugs and he's like oh that smarts gosh darn and like <laughs> He it bites clean through his hand and he's like freaking out. The camera is moving up and down because the guy's like jostling it, trying to get close. And the cameraman is panicking so much because he's bleeding so much that he's dumping the cold water on Coyote Peterson's hand instead of on the turtle's head. And so he wastes all the water <laughs> on no. this guy's hand. And he's got like like a chunk of meat that is like if the thing pulls is going to be gone from his hand. It was up on YouTube for like 20 minutes. And they removed the man. Is he? He's, I don't know where he is. He travels the world. He travels abroad he to accent? get stung. No, no, he's just a dude okay. in a cowboy hat. I like him. He makes good. I'm content. watching a video of his from eight years ago where he has the a snapping turtle, but he does safe things. He has, he has like a, a big on. chunk of yeah. meat. He has a cast to protect his hand at one point. But the turtle that he's showing, if this is the kind of turtle that he he actually let bite him that's crazy because it's it's the that, biggest meanest turtle you've ever seen that's an alligator snapping turtle yeah uh, I, dinosaurs we have those here i think um we call them logger head turtles again when you're in the south everything has a made-up name um, <laughs> but, but they would be fucking huge we'd pull them out of the cat we'd get them out of our cat catfish pond because you know they, they eat the babies i'm sure <laughs> man snapping turtles are the most ornery just shitty looking animal. They look mad. They don't yeah. look at like have you seen a box turtle? Box turtles just popping around, having a time. He's got friendly eyes, which is he weird does. for a reptile a to little, have. He has a grin. He's a he's yeah, like, little there's a little little toothless grin. A little you don't remember Franklin from PBS? A little Franklin grin. That for that uh that I remember, turtle. Hey Franklin. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. This though, demonic. Like yeah, evil. I've never seen one that that big, but I've seen them so big that it's you're 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 standing like that when you hold it. Like it's just like this thing is thirty or forty pounds. That's a That's huge amazing. fucking turtle. How long do they live? I think I bet a long time. Yeah, I wonder if it's comparable to like those uh, those sea turtles that are, or whatever, like um, or that those Galapagos turtles that um, live for hundreds of years, seemingly. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. They get to live oh, for wow. hundreds of years. But it's like hundreds it's of years shitty. of like of what grass and laying around like being on the bottom too. of a pond just sort of are they stupid? I I went to an aquarium recently and they had a sea turtle of some sort and I was like, mm -hmm. hey, are the turtles smarter than the fish? You know, like, can you, do you get any vibe? And she's like, turtle brain is about the size of the end of your pinky and they're no smarter than the other like fish, yeah. you know, sharks, whatever. Swimming yeah. around. Reptiles are notoriously retarded. Like they don't, they don't have a forebrain or a midbrain. I don't think they're like all impulse. And so, like mm. when when someone's like my little my little pet crocodile uh, booby, he loves me. It's like no, it doesn't. It quite literally doesn't have the capacity for the emotion you are willing it to express. But they have you. something. They have something though. Like look, Hatred, I want to be coldness. with you. Huh. <laughs> I, I want to agree with you because I like to be that that cynical guy. That's like no, that's a monster. It will never love you. Mm -hmm. so check the monster box and move forward. <laughs> But then I see, I see TikToks and YouTube videos, and it's like, this is Arnold and the and and is alligator Terry. He's known Terry since Terry hatched from the egg. They live here in Florida, and they're like in a pond, like playing together. And Terry's like being like clearly, it's not one of those playing together where a handler knows how to handle an animal. This guy's just letting the thing sneak up behind him and like nuzzle up to him and shit. Um. It looked like he had a tame gator. And then I've also seen those lizards. And I don't, there's a bunch of different kinds of lizards. So I don't fucking care. But I've seen the ones that they'll like scratch on the lizard and he'll respond like a cat or something, sort of mm. lean and like, oh yeah, right there. Have, have like, you seen dogs with big cute. cats? 
big cats dogs being like and... cougars and tigers. Oh, and I've seen those. Yeah, yeah they friends. get along well. <laughs> yeah, they do like yeah. That. Yeah, they're smart though. So I, I I just know a tiny bit about it, but apparently, big cats are really skittish and bad around people, and I don't know how to like fear aggression is is one of the uh, common attribute in them. So what they do is they pair it with a dog who is the opposite, and it becomes a good role model. And then as the cougar, for example, grows up, it just has a little bit of dog influence in its personality, which is great for a zoo. That makes yeah. sense. If you remember the Tiger King, those um those animals had little dachshunds or something running around with them oh. like yip, 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 like chasing the lion and like licking it in the lion's mouth and chomping on its ears and this big lion is just like oh but like this little dachshund <laughs> fuck it these up. are yellow labs but yeah i can imagine that would work yeah, yeah. have yeah, you seen really the videos of uh there's this guy and actually actually i think it's happened multiple times this one dude raised a hippo from birth <laughs> what in a Africa. terrible idea yeah a hippo which is smarter than a reptile. And it's like he raised this hippo for like 18 years. And then one day they were going to do what they do, which is fool around in the, the swimming hole. And the hippo like bit him in half and drowned him at the same time. Like just <laughs> just murdered him. And it's like, what did you think was going to happen, moron? I like, love that, know dude. where hippos were on the how scared you should be hierarchy until like 10, 15 years ago. It was Steve Irwin. It was uh, yeah. the, the crocodile hunter. Don't this kill guy more people than just about anything like else? Yeah. snuggles crocodiles and alligators and whatever. He doesn't think twice of swimming underneath them and touching their bellies. He was a football field away from a hippo. And he's like, this does not feel safe. I am yeah. concerned. I don't know how to handle hippos. Because they, they have move. like an internal map and they're, they're so fiercely territorial that even if you're that far away, they're like, that, uh, that guy? He's on my area. This is my area. The only Have way to solve this chase is murder. A boat? Like, yeah. there's yes. a boat with like full throttle and the wake of the hippo. Yes. He's like, he's like, how is he hippos going? Hippos are underwater? incredibly fast in the water. They're basically yes. aquatic animals. It's mm -hmm. scary. There's a scene in, in the movie Congo where the hippos attack, and I thought it was science fiction when I was a kid because the rest of the movie is. I think it's the Crichton <laughs> novel. You know, there's lasers and and attack gorillas and blue diamonds and shit in that movie, but the hippo shit was legit. It topples the boat and eats Makimbe. Yeah, that's a problem. They we needed him. You. He knew the way. They just <laughs> they just tear you to pieces and then leave you. So, yeah, they. I I have seen them also like feeding them whole melons, and I I'd love to feed a hippo a melon. Like okay, I'd take the risk. Okay, you're right about that. But other than that, I would like to stay far away. Have you seen the clip of the oh, the one dude an in like an Indian zoo slapping a hippo on the head to get it back in a cage? Have you seen that? <laughs> This, this hippo was like trying to escape an enclosure that had a barrier that should never have been past muster for a hippo enclosure. And it, it's like both feet out, like the way a dog is on a like those little like kitchen gates, like a smaller midsize mm -hmm. dog. It's like that trying to go over. And there's like this. I think it's in like fucking India. And this guard is like lackadaisically like smacking it on its like hairy <laughs> nose. And eventually the thing gets like kind of spooked enough that it's like, all right, uh, you win this round. And it goes back in the water, which everyone was like, that's so well trained. That's crazy. And I was just thinking like they're shocking the shit out of that thing every night or something in order for it to be that afraid of something like that's like you being afraid of your yeah. Pomeranian. That might not hold up forever. I am afraid I, of that Pomeranian. It hurts. <laughs> Ever put peanut butter on a dog's nose and then you get like. It, it's a little it's bit torturous, going. but it's kind of funny, and they like lick the 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 thing. I want to put like a watermelon or a pumpkin on a rhinoceros' spike. Just fucking plunk that thing on there and watch him try to get the pumpkin. See, what off. you do? You take your rhino, you put the pumpkin on his snoop, and then you put him on a treadmill that powers some sort of electrical <laughs> generator. It's genius, All right? No. And he just walks and walks. He never gets the melon. Oh, yeah. People are debating if this is the best use of the final three rhinos. <laughs> they used to have, <laughs> yeah, they used to have those. I think Kyle just These rhinos power enough the energy electricity crisis. every day to almost light this bulb. We figure after the millions we've given them, it's time they return the favor to us. <laughs> and the bulb like turns a little like brownish yellow for a second. Oh, oh. No, still not enough. <laughs> Perhaps a fourth rhino would do it if only there were a fourth. <laughs> only there's there's only three. <laughs> no, I don't care about endangered species that are like that. I think we should no, save like as much. 
Nah, that's, we should save that's, as much. That's fucking communist, Taylor. If you were capitalist, if you lived in a meritocracy, you'd let these things go extinct. Yes. Okay, I'm fine with like bugs going away. Like the, <laughs> which ones? We need bees. So no, much. the shitty, the shitty bugs. Like bees are good. And I'm which fine with like a, a terrible shitty? wasp. A, a wasp. All right, the wasps I'm can fine go. With that. But like, I think the white rhino is gone now, right? Isn't that the big one? The big rhino. And the well, black rhinos are almost gone. I mean, there were bigger ones before that one. We act like we're supposed to keep the exact number of animals that were here when we started counting fucking animals, I guess. I just mean like, if we like, can keep them. How is that the good. bar? Like let, the cool let, animals. Let, rhinos are no. awesome. What's awesome about them? They look, they're, they're, they're blind. They're stupid. You ever see an elephant bully a rhino? I saw an elephant pick up a stick and throw it at a rhino. Yeah, I have. Those are <laughs> cool videos, too. We shouldn't okay. have elephants. Save the elephants. That. Fuck the rhinos. They're too People? expensive. And fuck those goddamn <laughs> Chinese communist bears. I've had yes. enough American Western dollars go to those commie bears. Draw a Pandas, fucking line. Right? Pick yeah. an American species <clears throat> and, and bring them back from the brink. People I'm always fine. worry about the animals going extinct, right? <laughs> oh, this thing drops off. That thing's wrong. We'll never get it back. They never talk about the new animals being created. Humans alone have added like 37 genders in my lifetime. Oh, mm -hmm. so, far. Seen... <laughs> so, 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 37 37 so far. 37 so far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that is true. Uh, I don't think we can yeah. just invent new animal species, though. What I'm excited about, and there's, you never know when you hear about something where it's either something that's very ambitious or maybe even overly ambitious and slightly science fiction. If it's a scam or or if it's a real dreamer who's got an idea and there's that that one program that's been taking money for a while to bring back the mammoth so they they, mm. to, they want to like fertilize an egg or create a mammoth with some some uh some genetic material they have and put it in a african elephant womb and have the the elephant would give birth to a woolly mammoth essentially i'm and fine with that that's awesome that would be so cool and it's short-sighted thinking it's only one mammoth you get we're gonna make more up. Yeah. We'll make more. The idea, the idea. Once you have one, we have so much funding, we can make a fucking uh, Jurassic what if, like, uh, two. It's in the Bible, Kyle. It'd be good. So if what you they were that. they were saying that we were gonna do is <laughs> take the DNA of the woolly mammoth and then and then have this hybrid, which is like 50 50 and then they okay. would take the hybrids DNA and then they would do it with the woolly mammoth's DNA and incrementally make yeah. them more. Woolly okay. mammoth. So we'd get like a Makes faux sense. mammoth over time. You would have wouldn't, a wouldn't be 100% like right on the money, but it would be, it would be way so, better than what we I got. Mean, we're not 100% fucking like homo sapiens. So like, what if we, we made the pass. first mammoth and then like it hit adulthood and it killed itself and we were like, oh, you're like that's homo why they're sapien. gone. They all killed them. Oh, they all killed them. Out. Like, <laughs> so it suicidal, uh, and, it, and it was like a species. It like it, it braided a rope and ever and hung itself. We yeah. <laughs> were talking itself. about like genetic. Yeah, it didn't just jump off a cliff. <laughs> they, they jump off cliffs. We can't stop them. All these yeah. fucking. We, we spent so much money making holy mammoths, and they I jump off everything. Uh, I'm out over my skis on this fucking mammoth project. <laughs> I'm losing money. <laughs> didn't they just uh, auction a stake? Like a woolly mammoth steak Ooh. or something where you could like, like they had some that you could buy or something. What? That's a good idea. I remember to, something about that. It. That sounded like they pulled just, it from the tundra. It was preserved and they were like, we're going to have steaks. Use steak? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got plenty of them, Woody. You don't even know. These things died by the droves for some reason. Yeah. We don't know. The guy who's like <laughs> making that steak is like, God damn, if this wasn't a scam, I'd be guilty. <laughs> it's, a, it's just USDA beef. Wow, this is a steak with fucking I hair in it. it. <laughs> That's all it is. The the idea though, like if you could get one mammoth, I think there would be enough funding that would flow in to make multiple mammoths. And if you had a mammoth park. What if you could get like not Jurassic Park because that's too too long apparently like DNA doesn't last that long, but maybe like like a like like a ten thousand year ago BC type part where you had some of that some of that mega fauna that you could bring back because there was all sorts of crazy Giant shit. Slot. Apparently, apparently we used to live inside of armadillo shells. Like people yeah, made our homes people. in armadillo shells because there was this gigantic armadillo I think in North America that we hunted to extinction mostly because their shells were house sized. And like what were, what else were they doing? 
Well, I mean, they were being fucking gigantic armadillos and, <laughs> until we came along. <laughs> Are armadillos like always sick from something or never sick from something? There's something. I think, I think some leprosy? of them carry leprosy, which yeah. someone should have Are told me before I chased that one down. <laughs> Yeah, you're not supposed to touch them because they. Yeah, I guess they're immune to leprosy, which is why they can just carry. I grabbed one by the tail, tried to Gross. pull it out of its hole. Yeah, he was too strong. He just kept going. Really? I only see them yeah. dead on the side of the road. I've never seen. Never holding seen someone's tail though, I'm always afraid to pull too hard. Uh, you know, like what if his tail comes off? And he sprays you know what me I saw with that leprosy. was really cool, <laughs> and you guys won't think it's cool at all. The first time I saw tumbleweed, that was cool. Like tumbleweed actually oh, yeah. rolling across the road and shit. Like, you're right. That was stuff. that was cool. The twentieth yeah. time, you're like, they should fucking do something about this shit. <laughs> <laughs> this <is> build a <laughs> wall. <laughs> Why is tumbleweed? there not a tumbleweed wall at the very least? Like, like <laughs> Jesus. We should, should let them in Western if they bring tingle. a tumbleweed with them. It should be like that thing where they did with wolf ears back in the day. Jesus. It's cool when you uh, travel a bit. So you're right there at ground zero. Um, animals not. Not not literally, but a lot to do going on in Texas. I heard that Taylor State, the great state of Missouri, is uh, is stepping up. They're not going to be left out of this border crisis. They're sending some, I think, state patrol officers and maybe some guard, some state oh, really? guard maybe. Yeah, to reinforce the, the border down there and stop the invasion as your, I think it was your nice. governor. You've got a very based governor, if I remember correctly. I mean, Missouri is a great yeah. state. Yeah, we, we got a good state. Mm. One of the top we 50. All the weed. All the guns. I saw like some some lib on Twitter posting like like some like a complaint list about gun laws. And they're like, you won't believe Missouri's gun laws. Did you know anyone can open carry without a license and anyone can uh, conceal carry without a license? And there's no registering firearms. And you can just same day go anywhere and buy a gun. And like all the replies were like based like awesome <laughs> like that's all that's incredible like uh, i wish they had that here I, i'm i'm stuck in california take my money yeah hmm. and of course like the california comment from the sunglasses selfie avatar like in the car which is the classic heuristic of like the the conservative boomer on social media if you haven't hey, noticed that let's calm down all right let's, let's... It, that is but if you see someone with a selfie with sunglasses in a car on in their Twitter account, you know exactly what that person believes. They it depends love what kind Trump. of sunglasses they're wearing. If they're, they're wearing mirrored with multicolors, like rainbow. Oh, mirrored. they have rainbow Oakleys on, my friend. That is, uh, he's voting. He's voting red. That dude was in Charlottesville. <laughs> he was. He, he was. He planned Charlottesville. Yeah, that guy's got he's, a tiki torch in his profile pic. He's. He's. Yeah. This he here is an normal. authentic tiki torch. It has Heather Hire's saliva on it because I poked her a little while she lived there. Like, like that's a dark red Republican for sure. Yeah. I, I like. I remember seeing those pictures with the uh, with the tiki torches, and there's no way. I don't want to bully the the tiki big tiki torch, but like, there's no way to hold those or even they look so cheap. They look oh. so silly and cheap walking around with them, but they they're absurd. You look I like a fucking goober. Like, dude, they look strong, organized, well kempt. <laughs> I like that they had. They, okay, they all had good haircuts. Like, they all looked like they just got back from. They all went together. They had their to khakis on, and they were wearing khakis. They were dressed. Did they have nice. khakis back then. I know they do that now. Oh, you gotta have your khakis on if you're if you're part of the movement. Yeah. We, yeah, I'm okay. sorry, we had Gavin McGinnis on a couple weeks ago. I've still got a little bit of that in me. <laughs> that was Check a bit of a out. proud boy. No, <laughs> no, no, no. He didn't no, like me. No, <laughs> that was fun. That was a good episode. You guys, you guys fun. Every time like Kyle or Taylor, he couldn't see us. I guess his tech was different. And every time Kyle or Taylor said something he didn't like. He assumed it was me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that liberal. I was he, like, no, he it's like, the gun guy. Yeah. <laughs> he brought something up. And I was like, oh, damn, really? And he's like, who's that? The guy that doesn't know anything? And it's like, yes, <laughs> but you're only coincidentally right. Like, <laughs> Oh, that's a good dog. Oh, what a good fella. Yeah. Good that's Kiwi. Like that's you. Kiwi. That's Dude, Kiwi. Kiwi. Dude, I love when they bring the... I, when, when I'm watching Police Activity and it's a dog episode... I know it's going to be a good episode. I love those. <laughs> mm. I, like, like sometimes, like I said, some there was a lady cop with a dog that I, my pet would have been more effective. And he doesn't know attack or he barely knows sit. Um, it was silly. The dog did not know it was there to do any sort of work. But then I saw another dog where the guy just was like, go get him bonkers. And bonkers like leaves. 
bonkers went that way. And the cops dealing with the other bad guy, like gets him cuffed up, thrown in the back seat of the car. And he's like, I'll be back. And like bonkers is down the road and has the bad guy and is holding him. And I don't mean just like, oh, yeah, right there. He went down the road and around the path and beside a house. And he's got the bad guy. And they got bad guys screaming, get him off me! Get him <laughs> off me! Because <laughs> Bonkers is chewing his ass up. That's the thing yeah. about those those mouths. Like I mentioned how Labradors have that soft bite, and they also have dull teeth. Like I, I think they've been bred to have dull teeth somehow. But those Malinois teeth are pokey and sharp. <laughs> <laughs> they go in. Y'all Look at that guy. He wouldn't oh. bite. <laughs> Look at my chompers. Yeah, look at them, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Don't oh, stick your dick in that. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, we, we comparing chompers. <laughs> Always chompers time. That pit looks sweet. Is that yeah, the pit? Oh, he's the best. Yeah. Oh, sweet dogs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like his collar, too. Jesus. Does it inject testosterone? <laughs> it's like no, no teeth. Wow. <laughs> no teeth. Where? Where is teeth? <laughs> oh, no. You can put your dick in that one. <laughs> That's <laughs> awful. <laughs> Why did you do that, Richard? I, th- I feel like I'm on to you. So what happened to his chompers? Ah, there you go, bud. I'll give you cookies. I hope you chew mine up a little first. <laughs> can you baby? Yeah, so I'll tell you. you uh, he he was actually they were going to euthanize him because we found him in uh, Bernie, Texas, and he was a little chupacabra. Like he had n- no hair. Um, he was he looked like I don't know. People called him armadillo, but um, hip out of socket. I guess he was hit by a car, and so for a year or longer, it calcified, and they couldn't put it back in his socket dual cataracts, pretty much blind. He walked into a pool at the ranch and I was like, oh, fight or flight. This dog's going to try to swim. He's going to save himself. Nope. Just ah, that's it. It's the end of it for me. And, uh, sank to the bottom of the pool and I dove in phone, wallet, keys, all that good stuff. Pulled him out. This dude took maybe eight surgeries and I was like, screw it. I guess I'm keeping him at this point. Um, Mm -hmm. dual anal sectomy, like, uh, removing the glands, mm-hmm. um, uh, FHO on his femur, uh, dual cataracts. Oh, 16 tooth extraction. That's why he looked like a, a little crackhead. Like all of his mm-hmm. teeth were broken or rotted out. Mm. Somebody must've just had litter of puppies and just said, screw it. Nobody's going to take these dogs and just let them out. Um, and so, yeah, I was going to try to, fa- uh, find a home for him or whatever, but I kind of have a rule six months. They're either gone or they're mine. And uh, <laughs> Matt, nobody from Demolition yeah. Ranch used to do rehabs like that. I don't know if he still does. Have you ever seen those videos? I haven't. I actually, so what? it's funny. Oh, I reached like out them. to him. I reached mm-hmm. out to him as soon as, because his practice or his former practice, I think his sister's running it now, um, is in Bernie. And I was like, hey, dude, I don't have a dog, um, but I just found this one and it's needing some serious attention all the shelters want to put it down and he's just a sweetheart if we, is there's anything we can do and so he's like yeah just bring him down to the the clinic or whatever and i did and so i worked with a uh a rescue and they you know rescues are great there it's just you get what you pay for and you don't pay for anything uh <laughs> and so uh you're getting a a, vet, a veterinarian that's willing to donate their time and their resources and so you might not be getting the best quality treatment uh for the animal and so i was like all right well i'm going to take him to matt's office and 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 you know make sure he's taken care of so well that's good that's he's got cool. a good home now i've got yeah yeah oswald he's lucky Is dog it, sorry yeah. So we have a, a tradition in my family where we take turns naming the dog, right? Every like my turn is next. And I have two Great Danes well past their expiration date. They're I think they're 10 and 12 years old. Oh shit. Any day now. Literally, I it's like when we went away for that weekend, what 10 days ago? I'm like, I don't know if she'll be here when I come home. Like the, Damn. my uh, one dog in particular, you know how very old ladies get just to be skin and bones. Uh we cannot get 
one of my dogs to eat enough. She eats every day, but she's skinny, like whatever. And anyway, so I named the next dog. What would you name a Great Dane? Wow, that's tough. So mm. here's my leading candidate. We would call it Bones, just as a right, but his full name would be Indiana Bones. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the best I have so far. I like, yeah. I, like I like the pun. Yeah, do you like, do you like I like Bones name? as an everyday name for a dog. Hmm. It's good. It's good. Yeah, I sometimes I, I feel like personalities have to shine through before you really come up with the the name I you're going to call them. But it's hard to prep without. Depends what it looks dog. like at the very least, right? Mm -hmm. like, like it's it, sometimes you can. Um, I named my dog after Roots, of course, Toby. Uh, hmm. If my dog is solid black, I think we're going to go with Bark Vader. Bark Vader. But mm -hmm. what are you going to call it? And just call him Vader. Probably just Vader. Yeah. Yeah. Vader. That's a mouthful. Yeah. Vader. <laughs> Vader's oh, it works. Mouthful. It works. You got to make yeah. sure you can scream it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, my both both two of my dogs ran out the door the other day. So a, a tree fell out of my yard into my neighbor's yard, big pine tree, and just crushed our fence. I've got a good bit of um, backyard that my dogs can go in. There's a there's like a wooded area at the back of it. They can go poop and privacy, and then I don't have to deal with poop. Well, when the tree falls through, now I have to walk the dogs every couple hours all fucking day long. And they escaped and ran through the neighborhood chasing this black guy. And <laughs> and I'm screaming, they don't bite! They don't bite! <laughs> Which nobody wants to hear, um, you know, because because what, what they do do is jump on you and like poke you with their two paws. Like, like, yeah, like, they fucking like do that. So he's just like, ah! well, these two dogs jump on him and I'm dragging them away, but they still want to like attack him more. He didn't say a word the whole time. It was the most awkward, scary thing ever because <laughs> I don't want him to bite and then have like a woody scenario where I get maybe sued or, or like there something like that could happen. I don't want anything, yeah, I don't want anything like that. Woody had a down. dog that savaged uh, a neighbor one time. They did. Yeah. I, I've i told the story of the show a couple of times, but the quick version is uh, we left the door open. I didn't, but I'm the adult, so it's, I did it. And uh, um, the dog was outside while we were gone. The neighbor was like corralling it, like with her arms to like, I don't know, guide the dog to somewhere she wanted it to be. It turns out in North Carolina, that makes the human at fault. Like Even if the dog bit her, which it did. Uh, in North Carolina law, I guess if you bend over and like try to dogs have dog. castle doctrine too <laughs> it would seem that way <laughs> so uh she when the dog bit her, the Did dog you bit touch her that dog good. bit her in the forearm and kind of like tore a little bit so it was a good cut i saw a picture of it it, it it's not to be minimized and uh we were worried uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> about for woody yeah <laughs> <laughs> to move the story to From the a, end a, a um, litig litigation standpoint yeah, yeah yeah no i'm well insured like i've got a homeowner's insurance and then i have umbrella insurance on top of that like i didn't i wasn't worried what but you um in civil court for, for pain i think i'm covered I, I hope i'm yeah. covered so okay. anyway um uh moving the story oh, to the yeah. end uh when she told the cops and the animal control she told the story that i just told when she talked to my insurance company after having hired an attorney, she said she was getting the mail and the dog came out of nowhere and bit her on the forearm. But they looked up the police report and the animal control report and found that her story had changed. And that's when everything just kind of, I got off. Mm -hmm. mm. Bark, I had Bark a guy, That's not bad. My, uh, <laughs> my girlfriend's dog, uh, rest in peace. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, you know, he was he was a kind of intimidating, um, you know, 90 pound, hundred pound ish, like Rottweiler, um, mm -hmm. Aussie mix, um, beautiful dog. And, uh, I had a, a contractor come out to my property and he claimed that the dog bit him. So fortunately the, the statute of limitations is up now. So I'm going to talk about, it. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> like you, like you say, uh, umbrella insurance and, uh, homeowners insurance and everything. But the guy, like he was so shady. Like he clearly like stuck a screwdriver in his leg and said that the dog bit him and there was only one oh. puncture. Um, yeah. And I was like, 
I did. I got cameras everywhere. When, where did this happen? And then it was only a few weeks later that he said that. And then he's like, I had to go to the, the doctor. And this is where flags started going off. He's mm-hmm. like, um, they had to give me, uh, an antibiotic shot. And I, you know, just want to be reimbursed for that and everything. And I was like, well, a hundred dollars. No, here's the thing. Whenever you, you, you run into a situation like that, typically you get a general oral course that gets in mm. your bloodstream. They don't give you a shot like locally oh, okay. in the, then the thing It's like, Oh, okay. That's weird. I was like, I'm not talking to this guy. Like I'll let my girlfriend do it. Um, and then, you know, a few weeks later, he's like, I had to go back and get another antibiotic shot in my leg. And it's like, this, this dude's got syphilis. <laughs> so, so I, like, I handed it off to my insurance company and, uh, they're like, Oh yeah, this dude is career criminal. Like multiple, like counts that's how fraud. i choose my copy that, as well yeah, like, <laughs> well th- th- that's what they were like you need to you need to start like any like running background checks on people that like work and I'm like did you, who, like who does that like you yeah. you want to work as electrician on my property like i'm gonna run a background check on you it's like nobody does that but he had a, a massive record do. like theft over like you know <laughs> insane amount <laughs> like that i was like oh okay well that would have been good to know but, but he'd moved on to low level antibiotic hoaxes yeah well mm-hmm. it's so mm-hmm. it, the insurance company was clearly like handling it it was just you know like i say the statute of limitations is up and they weren't even his ambulance chasing attorney that he had didn't see a case there so mm. well what a shithead yeah. It takes right a lot of gumption though to stab yourself with a screwdriver. He wanted it. He was, Maybe he had an accident and he was and he thought he could like it's funny you two say that. together. He fell off a roof, not like a month after like selling or uh pressing charges or whatever, or mm-hmm. filing suit or whatever, fell off a roof in another incident. It's like hmm. I wonder what yeah, to he, make he of it. He falls that. a lot. Yeah, right. By I'm always getting hit by cars and slipping He's in the very mall. Very unlucky guy. Turned <laughs> <laughs> by that coffee shop, and now your dog bites me. It's been a terrible week. It's been a terrible week. And after this, like a fucking 1870s huckster, I'll be off to the next town to trip and slip and get bit by dogs. <laughs> Where <laughs> 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 Jack's <laughs> cigar. Yeah. Yeah. Made a cool 700 as he's like sitting there with two casts on and like <laughs> <laughs> missing a toe. He's doing me for a million. Oh my oh, goodness! Jeez, yeah. That, what's that like, uh, Hurt Locker looking bomb defusal suit you got going on back there? What is that thing? Oh, that's a uh, EOD eight uh, bomb suit. It's real, like like under, like yeah, yeah. You want? To, I'll check it out. I guess you've had c- cause to put that on before, huh? Yeah. Um, <laughs> let me see here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it reminded me of Hurt Locker. Is that similar to what uh, from the movie? He's muted. I don't know if he knows he's muted. No, oh, yeah, he is muted. That's Damn, you hear me all right? Thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Huh. I thought that was a. I thought that was like a red bookshelf. With a bunch How of much can it save you from? <laughs> like, but, could could you handle a grenade? Could you handle mm. a mortar shell nearby? Um, what's up? Do you think you could handle a grenade going off if you're in that? Man, that's a thing with bomb suits. Like, I, I, I get why. I mean, they they're really they're not going to stop over pressure that well. I mean, they will a little, but it's it's really a light frag protection. What is can, can I like 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 I think it's the light frag protection. And it's also like on the approach and the and and getting away. Like like there's definitely even, no matter how big the thing is, a, a while you're walking up to or walking away from whatever you're gonna defuse or fuck with, where you're like oh if it went off now I'd be okay because of the suit. You could right. not stand here. I can stand here. Right. There's a, a range suit, where I that don't. is. You're safe at fifty feet. I'm safe but, at two hundred. But once you're up there tinkering with the thing, right? Like that thing. I, I don't know what the thing is that doesn't kill you, even though you're wearing that suit, if you're tinkering with it. You know what I mean? Like, like it has to be like a yeah. little thing. And even then, this shit's gone. And your face is gone, maybe. Like, definitely well, your hands. Most people don't think about soft t- tissue damage with overpressure. Like, like I've got uh, 
I very seldom post a social at this point, but mm -hmm. I've got a, a reel on my Instagram feed of like me uncorking a bottle of champagne with a fireball going off behind me. And you watch the overpressure go uh, through the champagne as it's coming out. And you just think about that going through all the soft tissue on your body in your organs. And like, I mean, you can even look at my crotch on that and look at how the ripples on my blue jeans are affected by it. And it's like, most people think about fragmentation as like the, the primary means of whatever, like the damage, mm -hmm. but like the overpressure can quite literally turn your brain tissue into like jello. What is that it to create explosion? overpressure? Like a frag grenade? A regular one an army guy would throw? It's, 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 the, it's the kinetic kind of energy of the gases expanding, um, leading out from the I think the I understand reaction. overpressure. But for example, if I was next to a 50 oh, cal, sorry. that's not enough overpressure to do anything. If I was next to a frag grenade, is that where more than just the fragments are dangerous, the overpressure is also dangerous. Like what does it take to create o dangerous overpressure? Well, it, it really depends because there's a lot of different variables, right? So if you take like a 50 cal and like the, the, the round in itself is going what 2,800 feet per second, um, give or take. And, and if you're at the muzzle break, how that overpressure is focused could be X amount of energy. Um, but then you take most, like PETN or C4 and stuff like that is running at around 30 or 28,000 feet per second. So quite literally 10 times the amount of energy being released. And so you look at things like up onward Humvees and stuff like that, and you get these really, really weird reactions inside the cabin because you have all these, these uh, hard surfaces that can actually reflect and channel into like, essentially laser beams of overpressure. So like you're channeling a muzzle break onto somebody. Uh, so it really, it depends on the circumstance, but that's why it can get kind of, kind of hairy. I, I know a lot of guys who preferred to be in soft vehicles versus up armored. Could they be no wrong? Like, I, I think you're a subject matter expert on this, but like I can imagine this being a field where there's a lot of bullshit where like wives tales run rampant on what overpressure does. I've heard people claiming to be snipers saying that if you miss someone with a 50 cal, you know, from like a distance that they're still in deep trouble. They could still die. If that bullet comes anywhere near Dude, them. I know the fine. guy you're talking about. What's that guy's problem? It's the guy so, with skinny so what, and black. The one I'm talking yeah. About? It's, it's a skinny <laughs> guy. Who's, oh, he's, oh, he's, he's one of those guys with credentials who does social media stuff, right? Like, like I, I'm ex Navy seal, Billy badass. And mm -hmm. I was a sniper for Delta force and I was sheep dip and did CIE black ops and i also play call of duty now so subscribe to my channel <laughs> he's that guy and yeah, he's just like guy. yeah the 50 caliber bmg is such a powerful round you can miss someone and the bullet can go past them tear their arm right off and then no. like and uh, no of course it won't like like you could i don't it, if you could shoot it through my hand reliably i'd be okay i bet i don't think it'll shatter well it, i don't know if it'll shatter a champagne glass i think i've seen did you do a video where you like debunk this i feel like i've seen the champagne glass video. no i've, I've shot i've did. shot i've uncorked a bottle of champagne with a 50 cal before and it didn't shatter it yeah it just, i mean a glass like a flute a champagne flute i should say like i think mythbusters like shot right next to a flute because that's considered like this really dainty mm -hmm. fragile mm -hmm. piece of glass shockwave um women can break those by hitting high notes right you've probably seen that happen yeah. it's a real mm -hmm. thing but the 50 cal going past it won't it's silly it's fucking science fiction and him saying that as someone who supposedly served or used that weapons platform is just, he looks like a, he might just want a lot of interaction because <laughs> people are making videos about the stupid thing he said, you know, it's you got to think about know. what's happening. So the, the, the round in itself there, there, it, it is accurate to say that there is a, um, a supersonic overpressure wave around the bullet, but the, w most people are talking about in overpressure, like, kinetic energy like damage situations it's like the rapid expansion of the gases not necessarily the projectile uh that's creating the the overpressure so the be it inside the chamber of the round going off the gases coming out the muzzle break you're getting way more um 
overpressure there than you are from the round going by. Yeah, there's the mm-hmm. supersonic component to it, the shock wave around you it. You see but that's the not air really... condensing because the, the 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 water molecules are being pushed together and it's condensing into like visible water and from just the humidity in the air. Shock waves yeah. are fucking cool. Like the big yeah. ones, like that Beirut explosion. That might be the most impressive visual shockwave ever recorded because there's that there's been a couple yeah. of Chinese factories that blew up. And I think I saw a flour mill flour um, like bread flour is very explosive in the right conditions when it's atomized in the air per, just right. So that when one piece of flour burns, it can set off the piece of flour next to it. If it's the right concentration, it's a b- huge bomb. Um, that explosion was big. But that Beirut thing is crazy. I think you're Crazy. smart enough now, like after all your experiences to to not fall into that situation that those were kind of uh, kind of tragic and that like you I, I know most people the, the urge to want to film ooh big explosion, but like in the back of our heads are going, oh shit, light travels faster than sound. That it's coming. It's exploded. coming. It's fucking coming. Take cover. <laughs> um, yeah, especially when you're you buying glass. Like, yeah, and you see all the windows just like five seconds later. Whoosh, just yeah. Who knows yeah. who when lived? You, and- when you see it, you know that that moves at 186 thousand miles per second. There's some other shit coming at like 700 miles per hour that's gonna ruin your life. Like you need to. Is move. that guy in the clip you just shared? It was the one with the Beirut explosion where there's a guy on a sea dew and he jumps into the water as the pressure that's the video wave I just is coming. Like, yeah, I just yeah. Was referencing it. Oh, that I haven't seen is, it. Is that dude? So he's totally fine, like I going underwater, underwater. And yeah, I, like he, you see he's the fine. camera like get all upturned and everything because he's underwater while the wave is passing. So he's 100 percent, 100 percent good. Shit the water. Did. Protected. I don't know that it would have. I don't know what it would have done to him if he hadn't gone in the water. That was a colossal explosion. But wow. going in the water yeah. is a smart move. It's super heads up, and yeah. it look, it's it looks cool on the video too. <laughs> that was very cool. But I didn't know if that was like, oh, that you know, it traveled through the water and still fucked him up a little bit, or oh no, it just it, it the pressure goes the path of least resistance, which is across the top or something. I don't know. I don't yeah, know how physics works. It's the air moving is a big part of it. Like, like it's about to hit. Um, that's the problem with those. Nu- you know, we faked all that nuclear. F- Every time you see a nuclear explosion footage and you, I'll describe it and you'll picture it. A building gets hit by a wave of pressure. And at first all the paint is scorched off and then the building blows away. Or then there's the one where all the trees lay way over to the right. I'm and then they both. come back. And as they sort of settle, like you can see ash and soot falling off of them. That's all fake footage that the Department of Defense crafted, like, made. Cr- cr- it's not nuclear d- detonations. But when the Russians saw that shit. <laughs> yeah, they were like, oh my God, the West has the most durable cameras in all of existence. <laughs> well, if the camera <laughs> Look at what it does to that house, disaster. and yet cameras stay perfectly focused. Exactly. <laughs> Imagine American camera technology. <laughs> <laughs> in 1939. <laughs> yeah. Like, like our fucking camera can survive the black. He's yeah. right. Camera doesn't I was move. Kinda, I was kind of disappointed when I learned that, too. And I was like, I'm oh, no wonder I'm those look so cool. It's I'm not fucking real. proud. That, that, that's such a good move. You know, it, like that. You think we got them 100 percent or do you think there was some? I think we're still getting them, Taylor. <laughs> we should make more fake nuke tests. Um, the Ru- <laughs> it's working. For, that's what the Russians are doing right now, right? Like, like, I think they're threatening to shoot some in, in space or whatever. Oh, really? Maybe that's what the UAP things are or whatever. Oh, I don't, UAP? Those UAP things are, uh, are, are either, most likely, that's our shit. That's our drones. That's our, like, <laughs> sixth generation Dark Wars stuff. Or, like, slim possibility, it's some sort of, like, alien race that lives beneath the waves. That's always not alien. Like they've been here all along. They're like the sea people. We're the earth people who, but, but the sea people are like millions of years of evolution ahead of us because they haven't had to deal with any of the crazy shit that goes up on up, you know, top side, now, you little mermaid have, people. I think the footage right is now. real, Kyle. Huh? I think that footage is real. I don't think so. I, no, the, the ones where it's like the fixed camera and like the, mm-hmm. the house blows over. No, mm-hmm. I think those ones are, are fake. The ones in like the Bikini Atoll, um, the underwater mm-hmm. ones where you see like the naval vessels doing stuff, the space one, which is really cool. Um, that's all real. This is all I, this is what I just found out. So the artillery I was like, shell one. Is the it real? I was looking into so it. Cool. 
There was a guy on Joe Rogan's podcast recently, Mark Andreessen, or I can't pronounce names, but that sounds rightish, yeah. who claimed they were fake and said, you know, what happened to the cameras, et cetera. And that was like one of his ways of debunking it. But um, the powers that be have come back and said, ah, the cameras were well protected in their housings or whatever, and that these are real footages. This is real footage. Are you tell me a HB Joe Rogan News. guest misled me on scientific information. If that's where you got it, it seems I get that most at least of that's my... what Associated Press tells us. Oh, my God. I get so much of my historical data from the Joe Rogan podcast. <laughs> I, I, I'm i in shambles right now. If this I don't know where you heard it. I'd only be guessing. But uh... It was literally that. I mean, I'm sure oh, it was. was. It? I'm sure it oh. was. I... So that no, guy... I've heard about these ones from other... I don't remember where, but like obviously nukes are real, but it totally makes sense to make propaganda videos to, to scare geopolitical enemies. I mean, we're I mean, right next I to the house. Hear the logic in it, like I'm not denying that it does make a certain sense to do this, but that doesn't prove it false. I think they showed many. I thought you could see like that some of the stuff was miniatures or something. I thought that was the case. Uh -huh. um, I could, I, I had that belief, but it's it's very anyway. If you're curious, it's here's the it looks right. fake once you're once you hear someone say it is. You're like, oh. Yeah, I guess that doesn't. Well, really make you're sense. a moon denier, so you misbelieve anything. <laughs> Am I? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't even think it's fucking there. There is, there is, there is no moon. He doesn't think there's a That's moon. That's no moon. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks it's a Death Star, and that if Death we don't star. pay <laughs> our annual tithe of rare earth minerals <laughs> to the lunar elite, then they'll zap us. So that's where the Chinese metal find in northern Arizona and southern something. I forget. What's Wyoming, north of Arizona? Wyoming? I thought north, it was north Wyoming. The Cowboy uh, State. I was afraid that sounds stupid uh, if I was like, you know, the border of uh, Arizona and Alaska. Dude, I didn't know Wyoming was the Cowboy State mm -hmm. until last week when we were looking at state mottos because we, you know, it was like four hours in or whatever. And, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but, but, but I, I was impressed. I don't know. I like that. I like, I wouldn't have thought that's Wyoming. Would, I seems like Texas should be the cowboy state, I, but I think that's just uh Hollywood propaganda. Yeah. Is it think, uh, to be Oklahoma's that. cowboy. Isn't that what they're, what is the OSU team called? They're Sooners, right? Oh, you're yeah, right. Sooners. Yeah. Cheaters. Uh, what the fuck cowboy. The cheater. You don't know what a sooner is. <laughs> we call them. Beep. You don't know. You, you know what a sooner is. Is it a is it a dog? Is it like a hound no, dog no 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 no. Okay, so back in the back in the days, they people would line up, um, essentially with sticks to go pick off their plots of land in the big, you know, migration out west, and they could mm -hmm. claim land. Sooners were people who would cheat and leave early and go stake off of their land. Ahead yeah. of the official start time. Yeah. Uh -huh. We got that. They got That's this, how they it? got Oklahoma and you were stuck with Texas. <laughs> okay. so, well, I joke because I, I grew you know, I grew up technically there in Georgia, uh, but I tell everyone Chattanooga. Um, and so, you know, they're like, you know, they'll see me with something UT on and they're like, Oh, that's not the right, you know, color or whatever. I'm like, oh yeah, that's Tennessee. And they're like, Well, Oh, you know, not UT. That's that's Tennessee, and like, well, technically, Tennessee had a college before Texas had a state. So, who's really the real yeah, UT? And people always, and I, it's just who's fun. That fight now? was like, how many national championships do you guys have? I'm like, I don't really care. How many Dollywoods like, do you have? <laughs> yeah. you know, using that I argument, don't, <laughs> I don't know this for sure, but I bet USC, University of South Carolina, is the real USC. Yeah. 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 I but I would imagine I, like, so. and again, I don't I'm not that passionate to like the argument. Well that's why you're even harder to be in the argument. <laughs> you're like, I'm gonna throw this out there and not care about your rebuttal. That's the easiest way to win the argument is you say <laughs> something. Just walk third, away. Is is someone some you say something wild it's very fun. Try this, everyone. You say something you like out there and then someone's like, actually, blah 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 blah. And you're like, okay. Like whatever. I remain homo. unconvinced like, the moon is real. Wow, look at this guy fucking googling, like trying to <laughs> this guy didn't my, go with his first impulse. <laughs> my my favorite thing Taylor does is when you come and you're really excited about something, you're like, Taylor, Taylor, guess guess how much weight I lifted today? And he'll go, twelve thousand pounds. 
It's like no, no. What? The fuck you, dude. Guess what? Deal? No dude, one I, near I, that. Uh, no, I do, I do that. John Deere three thirty three G just benching it in the back. Dude, I like I had someone like this is years ago brag to me about like a deal they got on a car and they're like, what do you think I paid for this Lexus? And I'm like, oh, nine ten grand probably. <laughs> and they're like, well, no, no. Like, just, like, and you just, you just totally take the wind out of those sails, and you just ruin it. Oh, it's so fun. Definitely got to try that. Like, I got to think about more it. scenarios where you can really just throw off the gas just yeah. by. Oh, yeah, it's fucking awful. It's so funny. It's fucking awful. <laughs> I, I, I hate it because you come, you're coming in hot. You know, you're excited about an accomplishment or an achievement of some uh, kind you've made. You're like, oh, you'll never believe how many subscribers I got today. Taylor, yes. Oh, did you get thirty thousand? No, I, I got 800. What, what's wrong with you, man? Why are you? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. You just came in so excited. I thought it'd be big news. Oh, no, that 800. That's horrible. <laughs> that's, that's good for you. It's a good fucking day, man. There's 800 new people showed up. And then you go, no, no, I am excited for you. That's oh, that's great. Like, 30, just, <laughs> my, <laughs> my favorite, my wife and I, we do this thing where, like, when we insult each other, it's like a veiled compliment. Mm -hmm. So she's like, what do you have drawing a blank? How do you spell who? I'll be like, you're so pretty. <laughs> that's a, that's the way we lay it down. Oh, geez. you guys are sweet. Yeah, you have your little sexcations, the dream the relationship. Dope. D are they dope? <laughs> Dude, the sexcations the way I don't know why everyone isn't doing this. You should. Fuck at the mayor's house in fucking uh, wish, it's the shit house in South fucking Carolina. Historical landmark, but not a tourist you know, attraction. You know what the pl I feel like? I don't know if it's like super pricey or, or whatever, but but there's that one hotel where you're you're underwater in your room like your room is an underwater crazy. and so like the windows are opening to like a fish tank basically you're in a fish you're like that little house you put in the fish tank you're in that house basically with with your lady friend um in some sort of fish tank hotel i definitely saw that on the internet yeah i'm that, getting or i dreamed it. vibes i'm, I'm good <laughs> i, I could have dreamed it. it that happens sometimes too oh i definitely am seeing this have you seen those hotels that are made out of ice? Yeah, maybe in um, yeah. Norway or something. Maybe in Norway, Finland, something like that. One of those cool countries where they haven't... Oh, look at that. That is neat. I would be... Uh, I'd have trouble sleeping there. I think I would be scared a little I'd bit. I'd never leave the room. Really? I, it, and let me see. Is that the one I'm thinking? Is that the first one I saw? Yeah, I like that I got the floating $10,000 like, a night. You better not leave the room. Oh, God yeah, damn! I'm not leaving. Okay, Dude, so it's you, not we, that deep. I mean, you you'd probably still die, but you wouldn't be crushed. I mean, what if it just makes some pinholes, yeah. though, Richard? And it just fills with water. It, it's not going to shatter and allow you yeah. to swim to the top. It's going to fill with water. Yeah, and you're like those Chilean miners or whatever the fuck. Oh, like, don't even talk about that. That's awful. They left them in there. They left they them did. in that pipe. Mm -hmm. They didn't even I mean, no, try. They, they, got them out. they got them out in the end, right? No. All right. Here's what happened. They all got all these Chilean fucking welders or whatever scuba welders fucking got sucked into this pipe because of a pressure change, and they're all broken up in there, broken arms and shit. But there's enough like air in the pipe, you know, that they can lean up and they're yelling down like Domingo's got a fucking broken leg and and Mikey's head's bleeding and like, but we're all like in sort of communication, and one of them gets out. And the people, the company doesn't believe him that his friends are alive in the pipe. They're like, nobody could be alive in the pipe. And they don't rescue them. They let them die. Oh, shit. No one could be alive in that pipe, Domingo. You must have hit your head. <laughs> Had too much tequila last night, I suspect. Get on out of here. You're trying to get some workman's comp, probably. And they left those guys in there to <laughs> die, and they fucking died. <laughs> Damn, Jesus. I had in my head that they had made a movie about this and that they had all gotten out safely. I mean, gun to my head three minutes ago. That's how I would have told that story is like, oh, and then they got them out and, you know, they, you know, they were back to mining happily doing their songs. No, <laughs> there's one of those like dark stories, YouTube channels where like it breaks it down. I think they have like the guys there yeah. talking and telling his story. And then they have that, you know, the graphics showing how they were in the pipe. Looks awful. 12 miners, grievous pain. 
This episode brought to you by Squarespace. <laughs> <laughs> All these guys like. wished that they'd gone into web development. <laughs> <laughs> now it's your chance. Great segue. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, that would. I love those those like really dark murder <laughs> channels that are like VPN sponsored. Just very very silly, disjointed. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other horrid stories like that that I might be misremembering? I don't Mind know that you misrem. I, I I like the stories about um there was a salt mine that that filled with water um because yeah. it was like built under a fucking lake inexplicably. But then the terrifying part, besides if you're a salt miner being drowned like hundreds of feet below the earth, yeah. But the people who were in the lake like joy boating suddenly a whirlpool like in the cartoons opened up in this lake. That started drawing everything down into it, and you and you're going down into a salt mine deep within the earth if you get sucked in there, um, and it sucked huge swaths of land up, and and I don't remember if any boats with people on them got sucked in or not, Dude. but oh, well, you said with people, so I had. I'm I not sure if boats, boats with people boats did, but what was impressive to me was like trees were getting sucked down there. You're like, well, the I mean, the earth isn't going to get sucked down by the whirlpool, and then sure enough, the trees' root systems would break free. And these trees oh, were wow. 75 feet tall, 100 feet tall. It was not a that huge good. volume of estimating of, big of, things. Yeah, and yeah. Um, so you watch a hundred foot tree get sucked into the lake, and it's like, holy shit, it doesn't come back. Yeah. I saw one um, about some mine in England. I think it was like copper and tin. And they had the way you got back out of the mine is they had these two reciprocating poles with steps on them. So you'd grab one pole and put on the step on the step and it would lift you up 10 feet. And then you stepped off onto the other pole and it would reciprocate and go up. So they're always going like this. And the miners doing this like jump back and forth thing. This is before elevators were mm -hmm. invented. Um, but that that system broke off and fell hundreds of feet down through with men on it and everybody's just pinned down in the bottom. Yeah. I like the mining disaster videos because it's like that's one of the worst. That's one of the worst job. being stuck down there buried beneath the earth. Um and, and even on a fantastic day in the mines, like that sucks. <laughs> like you're mining salt the best day of the mines like the pizza party worst like i'd take any other job i did see some scary stuff of those oil rig workers so maybe i wouldn't actually i'd prefer that I, as long as i can see the sky i'm in a better place than in a mine shaft mm. or maybe I think i'd enjoy more. being an underwater welder i feel like that'd be a mm. cool gig you like scuba I've, i haven't really done it i always like other water things though i've only done uh snorkeling and then scuba in a pool have you scuba richard yeah i uh i don't know man i just feel like the ocean will fuck you up <laughs> and humble you in a heartbeat mm -hmm. yeah like I, I like it's just th there's so many variables I, I, you know what it's one of those things it's like skydiving i was there was no, no way I was going to do it until I did a lot of research on it and realized what the variables were and the, all the incidents and most people that died, why they died and all these other things. But man, there's so many variables in the ocean between you being not the top of the food chain to like, I don't know if you've, maybe I psyched myself out. Have you ever seen any of those like dives that people do in caves like jacob's well and stuff like yes. that. they gotta take their yeah. rig off love that shit it through dude it's so stressful not my thing i'll take i'll mm. take all the snakes give me all the snakes in my pastures please like mm. not to yeah, i'm off. a snake guy before yeah. <laughs> I, I changed my name to snake yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna incorporate yeah. snakes into my Tinder profile. The snake Ryan. Oh. <laughs> Jeez, It'd be so funny to be I'm a not... snake guy who like has it on his shoulders, and every time it's slithering, I'm like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> I just love snakes. It's better than, it's better than scuba. It's better than scuba. <laughs> oh man, yeah. I just... <laughs> the snake voice. So you, have you you've done scuba and didn't like it? Yeah, or... no, I uh, I'm 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 certified. I've uh, mm -hmm. I actually have tanks. I have a couple of rigs. I I just like, yeah, I do. Like I spend most of my time shooting crap underwater, uh, like 
cameras. Mm -hmm. I have a spear gun and stuff that I'd film high speed uh, underwater and everything because I wanted to see like the mm -hmm. the bubbles and like the super cavitation effect underwater and everything. So I'd shoot guns underwater and everything. Yeah. Um, but I'm like I I don't know. I'm just I'm too ignorant to you ever see, really um, embrace it. You ever see awesome. the scene in the abyss where they use the liquid oxygen um, to go super deep? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's I so. I guess you know you can't below a certain depth. I guess you couldn't breathe. Um, Maybe it smushes you because you've air inside. You can only take yeah, so much pressure. Something um, like that. Something because of the pressure, and also like the uh, the liquid mixture is much more oxygen dense. Oxygen dense, so it mm -hmm. lasts longer. You could have a tank of liquid O2 mixture that would mm -hmm. last for hours, I suppose. Versus, is it different just, than nitrox? I don't know what nitrox is. This stuff's pink. And in the movie The Abyss, they demonstrate it by putting a rat into the liquid solution. And you're watching the movie and you're like, wow, that looks real. It is real. The rat is breathing the liquid solution. It works. That's got to feel so weird. Yeah, the rats hate it. The prob the reason the shots <laughs> are so quick is because the rats shit themselves constantly while they're in the solution. <laughs> That's what I would do too. Because yeah, they're terrified. I'd probably <laughs> shit myself if you submerge me in the breathable pink liquid. Yeah. They drown you. Um, um, Imagine yeah. a breathable liquid, like how hard it would be to move that liquid in and out of your respiratory system. Yeah. You you would need a um, a, a suit that worked kind of like a, air, uh, a fighter pilot's pressure suit, the way that it um, squeezes your thighs to get the blood up here. You need mm -hmm. something to help you with operate your um your lungs your your lungs your your whole system it help you squeeze that stuff out and draw it in um that would be that would be really hard so if I'm you good. like took a, if you like put your face in a <laughs> in a vat of that and just like <gasps> and breathed in and then like stood up and exhaled they would it would like look like you were vomiting like just pink goo exhaling i would really be vomiting. it's not goo it's liquid <laughs> it's it it's very watery like um, it's it's like the consistency of water. Um, you could pull the clip up and like see it's the like rat water? breathing I, it. I remember it being kind of syrupy. I don't. Um, okay. I, I'm just like risk risk to reward. Like I could go hiking, or I could put a bunch of fucking pink goo in my lungs and walk at the bottom of the ocean and risk dying. Oh, ah, by the way, the deep sea dive. One's better. Using content. it for humans to deep sea dive. I'm I'm like. Is like science fiction, but mm -hmm. it works on the rats. Is what I'm saying. Like in the oh, movie, okay. now they put it in William Hurt's fucking suit, and they drown him, and he's like, oh, and then they send him down to the bottom to to fix to defuse a nuclear weapon. But so we don't. You know, we've never used this on people, really. I'm sure they've used it on people. If they probably got pneumonia the next day, I think that's <laughs> that's the main problem. Is when you put liquid into your lungs, you get pneumonia. So that's that's going to be an issue. Okay, because well, like, then that's another point in Richard's column of why. Like, <laughs> just, just go for a hike. We're terrestrial animals, and we are yeah. best on land. We're we stars, suck in Taylor. the water. We're, we're not even, like, lower third in the water. We're bottom 1% of water-dwelling creatures. We're top tier for hominids. Like, like, look, at the, look at them motherfuckers. They drown right away. They fear the water. Orangutan sees you jump in the water. He thinks he writes you off right away. He thinks you might as well jump into lava as far as he's concerned. Have you seen the clips of the gorillas like crossing a stream and they're doing their gorilla like quadruped walk and then they get to the stream and they stand up like a person with like their gorilla <laughs> paws <laughs> up and they like <laughs> across because they don't want to get their knuckles wet and then they go back to oh, it. Funny. Yeah. Yeah. They don't like it any. I guess they like it way less than we do. All yeah, right, fine. I've, We're the best of the the bipedal apes. I've seen the orangutan um, that washes itself with soap in the river because it had seen people do it in the river, and I saw the one that sweeps its enclosure, but not well, mind yeah. you. It's, <laughs> it's, it's operating a broom though, for sure, on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of do doing what uh, hammers too. With the, there's a David Attenborough. Oh, that's sad. David Attenborough is like, notice the way they can mimic human behavior. Lucy here is using a hammer because her handler Marcus was using one last week. And like you show Lucy doing it and she's holding it totally wrong. She's not even, yep. the nail is like laid on a piece of board and she's just. Uh, uh, smacking there's no, it down. there's no spark. There's no yeah. understanding of like, of what's, of why, what this is, why it is, what this is, why it is. She just knows that this. <clears throat> yeah. I saw someone but, do this, and I'm going to mimic that. Monkey see, yeah. monkey do. I don't know why he was doing it, and I don't know why I'm doing it. 
But the guy and, who and she really doesn't hit. understand what he's doing either because she mm -hmm. has no. She's not putting the nail there. She's not hitting it. Like she, she Planet of the Apes is a is, is not going to happen anytime soon. I don't think. No, we dominate the other apes. Not even a contest. Well, in Planet of the Apes, did you ever have you seen the new movie? I think there's like four or five of them now. Um, but it started. Um, I've seen it started off with with like a virus that that I think made the apes smart and killed people or something. So there's like not as many people, but but now you've got super smart apes. I think the new one's coming out soon. It's like Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. That CGI is good. Those apes look disturbingly real. CGI is really good at everything but human faces. I don't know about that, man. I watched that show, Masters of the Sky. Oh, uh, I please. How deep are you? I watched the first episode last night. Okay. Uh, after we got off the show, I, I watched They're the first They're all the same. Episode. You've seen it. I don't think that CGI is very good. And I expected yep. more out of Apple TV, mm -hmm. Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and and it's supposed to be cut from the same cloth as Band of Brothers, which I get, you know, <laughs> from a, from decades ago at this point. But still, I think I expect a lot. I don't know. Those B-17s look a little uh, not real. And something about that main guy. I think he played Elvis in that biopic. There's like he's guys, Buck or Bucky? The really good looking one. Blondish. Yeah, he's got like Elvis hair and a woman's mouth. <laughs> Dude, that guy. No, no, no the guy. And he can't grow facial hair. Like he, he's a femboy. <laughs> I, I'm four episodes in. Now there's only five released so far, so I'm almost current. And uh, that show fucking sucks. There is oh. no character development in that show. I am now four hours into this thing. I don't give a flying fuck about a single person in that show. And this is a mild spoiler, so, but I don't think it'll ruin it. There is a person in the show who disappears off camera. I'm like, I don't fucking believe you. I don't believe you one bit. These people have plot armor thick as fuck in this show. That every time a plane lands, it has like no landing gear. It's all shot. Oh, the they fuck. love show. They're missing shot. half of their plane. They land in with like partial wings. None of this shit is like it, it is so action packed. Oh, by the way, most of the missions, like two thirds of the bombers go die. And I'm like, that can't be how it really was. It can't be that these guys had a one-third survival rate and they had to get to 25 missions. What is one-third times 25? It's a really small number. No one might, must have ever survived that war. Yeah, that's it is how it's like. horde shit. Yeah, thanks, Taylor. <laughs> uh, that, that's, I am, I, I'm like Yellowstoning it now and then I'm like kind of compelled and interested and wrapped up at hating this show. It is, Damn. It is. So for those who don't know what we're talking about, it's it's called Masters of the Air. Like I said, it's on Apple TV. It's uh, Tom Hanks and uh, Steven, Steven Spielberg. Spielberg produced thing. It's supposed to be Band of Brothers, the, the continuation of that, like the, the, the Band of Brothers trilogy, if you will, that the Pacific being the second one. This is supposed to be the air war in, in Europe. And it's American flyboys heading over to the good old England, bomb Hitler. And I thought that sounded fun. But man, I just... Seems a little gay, and like I thought it was weird. Stone. You know what I didn't like, and, I, and I'll tell you this: like, like I'm not religious, but there was a part where the, they're about to go bomb the Nazis and fly through an ocean of flak, and the chaplain comes and he's like, "I'm Father Michaels. I'll be down the hall if any of you need me." And the guy goes, "We'll let you know if we need you, Padre." It's <laughs> 1940 something, like it's 43. Everybody yeah. in that room is coming to suck the Padre's dick and ask him them to bring, call in a favor with God. None yeah. of these guys are agnostic. None of these guys are too cool <laughs> no. for God. These guys think God is cool as it gets. These guys All are right? Christian I as can be. They're, he's from Casper, Wyoming. This yeah. is a white man from Casper, Wyoming, who was born in 1920. If he is not Christian, then they would have beaten it into him by now, I promise you. So oh, that yeah. scene to me, and again, like, like it's the, I don't like inaccuracies. I don't, I, I don't, but. He's dead. These they should all be religious. None of them saw the Padre. I remember in Band of Brothers when they're about to drop into fucking occupied France. We're all taking a knee and throwing one up to the big guy. And mm. one of my fa one of my favorite war movies ever, right? With that uh, Andrew Garfield guy. Um, mm. Hacksaw he was the Ridge, something close to Hacksaw that. Ridge. He that was, was the good, yeah. he was the uh, what's it? What is it when you're um, a conscientious you, objector? A maybe? conscientious objector. He's a conscientious objector because he's uh, his religious beliefs. And he like went into battle as a fucking combat medic, but he didn't bring a gun. And the I, I cry if I tell the story because <laughs> mm. there's a part like he saved so many people the first day that that the, the the commander's like, why aren't you boys up on that ridge fighting? The men won't go up till Private Garfield says a prayer for him, sir. 
Like, no, like, like they're all waiting on him to get there and like say a prayer over him because the shit he did the day before was so miraculous. They think he's got like the touch of God on him or something. Oh, it's yeah. Beautiful. And it's it's like, yeah, they're out there fighting for their lives. Probably all very religious, I would expect. Mm -hmm. Can so, you like, imagine that the annoyed me? Like in, that, in that show, in the chaplain from your fellow soldiers, it'd be yeah. You take it easy, Padre. The rest of your <laughs> your like fellow pilots are gonna be like, "What the fuck is wrong what with you? you? He's a man of God. You don't want him praying for us. This guy doesn't want him praying for us as we're up there fighting the Krauts." By the way, by the way, the very next scene, this guy's way too comfortable friend Buck and Bucky are their names. These two gay friends, <laughs> um, clearly. Uh, fucking like one of them's like here here's my lucky deuce take my lucky deuce up with you it's a two dollar bill take my lucky mm. deuce up with you i flew two missions with it i bit a corner off before each one i made it back and someday like, this will be red and, and it's clear like, like that, <laughs> and it's clear the guy's taking it to to make his friend his boyfriend feel good and he's like yeah i'll take you a two dollar bill yeah i'll tuck it in here he'll do but but meanwhile it's yeah, we'll let you know, Padre. Nothing for the Padre, but but like our boyfriend's two dollar bill. Yeah, I'll bite a corner off of it. I'll taste your fuck. Oh, it tastes <laughs> like you, Buck, or are you Bucky? Which is which? <laughs> Fucking it's lame funny. as shit. That happens that again, actually. Shit. Another guy. This isn't a spoiler. Um, someone hands a snow globe to his peer because uh, it's his good luck charm. I was like, oh, it's I guess this is inaccurate. common. Then all, sudden, around the 70s. <laughs> then all of a sudden we're in France, right? We get into France and the flak is coming up like the Empire is shooting at us. There's no way flak looked like that. Every flak cannon has the uh, the altimeter fuse dialed in exactly the same. Yeah. All they got to do is pull up a few hundred feet, boys. Or down, <laughs> or down. It's all blowing up right here at 2,300 feet where we are or whatever the fuck. Like at our altitude is where the flak is set. So it's like up or down, like it would solve the whole problem. It's nonsense. It's just for visuals. It's silly. And then they show the Nazis for the first time. And oh, they got those uniforms. They got those helmets. Man, I love their uniforms. They're fucking, <laughs> let me tell you, there's none of, they're all fucking lockstep. They're getting shit done. Everybody sure looks clean. Off. Everybody looks well dressed. I don't know. Every time I see them, Taylor. Yep. <laughs> Every time you see him, you want to dust out for that uniform in your closet and <laughs> you step uh, around town. I just I mean, think that style's coming back. You know, I I, I just wish I remember. Think when of Tombstone. how good our military would look if after the war we were like we're taking all the Nazi scientists and we're taking all the Hugo Boss guys and you're you're dapping us up same way. We show up in Korea just with drip. Like we look fantastic. <laughs> like God, this is the World War II American Army. They've got like collars. They got pads in their right. shoulders. Like they're looking great. That would. I think we should do that. We need to have better would, looking army uh, attire. People. Would I would put our military them. in shoulder pads, like Kanye was wearing, to make us look bigger and more powerful. Like that would be part of every uniform. Like the huge football pads underneath the uniform. Yeah. I know black, what? Like hear, hear me out. Hear me out. Ron DeSantis chooses the combat boots. Right, oh, lifts for every every soldier we have is suddenly five inches tall. Up and over, soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> you would hate it's that easy. because it's that's mutually assured destruction. Because he's, <laughs> now he's five inches taller, but the six foot two guy is also. Is he still, you know, kicking? Kicking DeSantis? around? DeSantis? Yeah, is he still wearing those boots or did he? Cut yeah, that? he's reversing his book bands right now because he found them to be a bad idea. Wait, something. is he? What about? Well, I think the people boots? are using the book bands against like the Bible and stuff, right? I actually am not even sure. I just saw um, him uh, kind of backtrack on a yeah. bill that he liked previously. Interesting. Um, I, 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 I saw. Boots. Is he still we wearing are... the boots? Oh yeah, yeah. He's got. He's oh, a bootman okay. for life. He's he's just trying to get. Well, to you the can't. Core you of can't change your height. <laughs> he's been photographed with his wife wearing those boots now, Taylor. He has to wear them forever, <laughs> or he, or he has to do something to her. The leg lengthening <laughs> surgery. Oh, I didn't even think of shortening the wife. That's a brilliant idea, honey. You gotta lose six inches. <laughs> <laughs> what about the Weight Watchers? I'm not talking about that. <laughs> he like goes to China for like a, a two month no talk, no no show trip, and they're like, he's colluding with Chinese officials. Comes back and he just got secret leg lengthening surgery. In oh, China. Dude. They, they do it wrong. We're very politically leg. charged here. We've got a long-standing bet, Woody and I, on who on who will be the next president of the United States. Um, oh, I, uh, I I've, I've got a, the bet with a few people. I made it a couple years ago now, probably. Um, oh, I won a bet, I, by the way. Which one did you win? I had 
Alexander something Navalny, the the Russian dude in the death pool. Ah, that's true. We have we also have a death pool here where we each pick. I mm. think three, maybe five people who the there are some rules. We can't pick people older than sixty years old. I believe because that's you mm. know it's no fun when there. people pick like Feinstein four days before she dies. It might be younger than that. It might be forty or fifty. Like it's young. So yeah. we wanted the death pool thing to definitely not be natural causes. <laughs> we wanted you to pick like an occurrence, so that way oh, you. Oh, wow. wonderful, my man! Wow, well so, done, thank you. And I just say I love my list. All right, I, I thought I, I I knocked this out of the park. I picked a lot of unhealthy fat people, and frankly, African Americans because they suffer from a lot of uh, diseases that that, that 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 others don't. And also, their health care is on average not like that gunshot great. Gunshot wounds. That's how I won the death pool, <laughs> by the way, with DMA. Taylor, come on. <laughs> Like what? <laughs> what? I a took some high of risk, high movie? reward ones at the time. Ben Affleck was looking sad in a lot of photos. I thought <laughs> <laughs> I thought that might pan out for me. It did not. Lil Wayne is a is a, a genuinely very good guess. He was in the news at the time we guessed this for like fucking lean. lean again, which mm -hmm. kills you. Alex Jones was in his reddest phase. Uh, <laughs> Travis Pastrana. He is Danger. a risky, a risk taker, and he's getting older. And that's when like the, the Houdini kind of guys tend to go. Jonah Hill at the time. I don't like that Jonah Hill is thin in this photo. He was monstrously fat at the time that I picked <laughs> him. And then Jorge Garcia might be dead, mm -hmm. and it could have slipped under the radar. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> he, he has those bags under his eyes. I always think he's on drugs. I forget why I chose Kanye. Alex and all, do I need to say anything more? He's that guy yeah. that's uh free climb Pre or Free climber on uh, oh, El Capitan. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. That's what I'm going for. And he's just on. He's just freaking hanging from rocks on the edge of death all the time. Chris yeah. Brown was going through some sort of like pedo rape trials, and I was like, oh, he might just. <sighs> but uh, Alexander Al Alexi that's Navalny. A You'll have to. What else do I say? Have yeah, that's, a, Alex that's a good pick. Like, like as we should. I wonder. I colluded did... with Putin to win the death pool. I, I knew it. <laughs> really, you're really falling behind here, Taylor. None of your chosen celebrities have died yet. Well, um, the, I think the rules are when the first person dies, we have to repick. If that were true, we would have repicked by now because I. Picked oh yeah, because we're very stringent with this stuff. <laughs> oh, you just said. It. <laughs> you're like the rules are this. Well, that already happened, and we didn't do it. Well, that those aren't the rules at all. <laughs> no, I was saying because we don't follow the we we set up death pools. He's trying to get out, pay me five dollars. I think so too. That's a hundred percent. Oh, happening. do we owe? Do we owe Woody money now? You both owe me five dollars. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. And you might owe me ten now, Kyle. Rats. I would owe you fifteen now. I believe. Oh, really? I, 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 yeah, Will I Wayne, keeping, come on. I, I'm Let's... keeping track. I want the PayPal. Um, I don't want to send you five dollars and and it. And you to get four eighty five like you've been doing people. <laughs> Woody, Woody pays bets five dollars at a time, and you'll get four dollars and eighty five fucking cents. And it's like, oh, damn it, you couldn't eat the fifteen. <laughs> just, just let a few pile up before you mail send me the. It doesn't money. tell me what your fee is. I don't know what. I, just, what, I gave you five dollars. <laughs> I'm I'm just speaking up for the poor patrons who don't have business PayPal accounts for some reason. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so, uh, we can get back to this, but before we do, we're going to hear from a oh, couple yeah. of wonderful, wonderful sponsors. This episode of PKA is brought to you by FaroDistro.com. PKA fans, have you been interested in THC but aren't sure where to start? Look no further than FaroDistro.com, your premium source for THCA flour, dabs, edibles, and other smoking accessories. THCA, that. not your cup of tea? Then check out our expansive assortment of Delta products, including edibles, vapes, and disposables. That's right, folks. Faro Distro is your go-to destination for all things THC related. Get ready to elevate your experience with Faro Distro's exclusive Faro Exotic THCA buds. These buds are so premium, they practically come with their own red carpet. Crafted for all cannabis lovers, these USA indoor-grown beauties are the epitome of luxury. And for all you dabbing aficionados, get ready to savor the richness of our THCA diamond sauce. Trust me, once you try it, you'll wonder how you ever dabbed without it. These are the perfect pairing with DabX products like the DabX Go and the DabX Rocket, which I believe is what Kyle's holding up now, our premium dabbing equipment. And let's not forget about mouth-watering edibles, Perfect for anyone looking to elevate their edible game from Delta 8, 9, and even 10. We have an incredible assortment of edibles and many delicious designs. If you're looking to add a touch of wellness to your routine, explore Faro Distro's range of CBD products and therapeutic mushrooms because self-care never tasted so good. 
PK, PKA fans, use code PKA20 for 20% off your whole order. You heard us. That's 20% off your entire order, including the DabX Go or the DabX Rocket. 20% off PKA20. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to ferrodistro.com to discover a world of premium THC products that cater to your every whim. Elevate your 2024 experience with Ferro Distro and make this year the best. So check it yeah, out. This, uh, PKA 20, 20% off. This mini dab rig thing is so nifty, being able to drop it into the bong or whatever, and being all magnetic and just sort of snapping. And just, I don't know, is it Apple that had, or, or whoever? It just works. I oh, know yeah, that's fucking Apple. Fallout, I think, maybe. Anyway, <laughs> um, like, it just works. Like, you just tap it twice, and it fucking heats up to the right temperature. I got to put it down now so I don't burn myself, but, but you know. <laughs> yeah, it's very high-quality stuff. It is. Ah! If you've taken dabs before from those ridiculous rigs where you have to have a torch sitting on your coffee table, and it makes you look like you do real drugs. Man, when the popo showed up, I had that whole rig set up. It was a bad look. Dude, it you does. Know, like, I, had... uh, like I, I, I smoke weed, and... When I go somewhere and like I see the torch and the dab set up, it's like this feels like a hard drug now. Now that we've introduced torches to it, I don't know. But By this, the way, I didn't you just go blue... pop, pop, and then it's it's ready for you, and then cools down real quick, heats back up real quick. Very Fairly high quality a stuff. I inject my weed. Uh, don't only inject in your weed. Don't <laughs> don't <laughs> we what have... a what a horrible, stupid way to die that would be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get so baked. Oh no, my my blood's all gel now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> was I not supposed to use flour? In this <laughs> <laughs> you inject flour, <laughs> little bits of particulate. You probably get fucked up. <laughs> fucked up as in like have to go to the hospital. Not high. yeah, you you just die. So anyway, ferrodistro.com that. that is linked below. PKA twenty for twenty percent off. This episode is also brought to you by Merrick Health. Merrick Health, it's time you improve yourself. It's time that you go get the test done, get regulated, see what you can do and how you need to do it in order to improve yourself to a, a world unknown. Did Kyle ever imagine that he would be a shredded demigod? Not until he went to Merrick Health. Yeah, wasn't that flattering? I, I mean, I've always sort of considered my. <laughs> <laughs> On his I mean, biggest day. I mean, you're gonna, you're gonna have to ask Debbie bigger guy. questions. I've, I've told you, I, I, I often believe that I'm in a simulation that's just created for me, and, and you're all just little NPCs. <laughs> He has body dysmorphia and that he always sees Arnold in the mirror. He's Dude, I've got him on the wall. I've got Arnold on the wall and he's 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 um he's he's doing curls and he's in excruciating pain while he's doing them. And it says Does like it say one conquer. Month. It says conquer. Yeah. It says conquer. Yeah. It's a good poster. It's a good fucking poster. I, but anyway, I, I, that poster won't get you jacked. No, it won't. Health can help. Yeah. Merrick it's health. Well, it's pretty cheap to get started. What you want the, the first part is is getting your blood work done. And even if it comes back and says your testosterone levels are okay, the blood work is so comprehensive and the doctors that they're going to have you consult with telemedicine, everything are, are so good at what they do that they'll find other things. I had an issue with my thyroid that was concerning that it was like, oh, this could be something scary. And we fixed it with supplementation. You know, we fixed it with just over the counter supplementation and, and we tested again in three months and it's like ev- all of my levels were better. Like, so much was wrong with my blood work. And three months later, um, after continuing with Merrick, it was all optimal and super optimal in some some scenarios, right? Like, like it was I had very good blood work three months in and just the psychological effect, even if you're not going to like pump iron and gain 20 pounds of muscle this year, like you will feel so much more confident, so much more energy if you're if you're getting sleepy in the middle of the day. And you didn't used to if uh, if you're if it's not that you can't have sex, it's that you just don't even want to. You're kind of disinterested. If any of that stuff's happening, then you really need to get checked out because it'll change your whole life. You'll be a different person and people will take note of it right away. And I always say if you do want to pump iron and get fucking big, like they understand that and they can help you do that, too. And you you will get enormous. If you if you're one of those people who's worked out before for six six weeks, eight weeks, stayed on a diet and a workout plan, but god damn it, I'm looking in the mirror. I took pic before pictures, and you're you're like, what a fucking dumbass I am that I would even take before pictures. What did I think was going to happen? What did I think was going to fucking happen? Eight weeks later, you you you're, you can't tell which is which. That's not going to be the case. Eight weeks after you start with like Merrick and start working out and having a decent diet, you'll be like, oh shit. Oh shit! You're gonna be. You're, you're like, I. You'll you'll buckle down even more. 
you'll be like oh, mm -hmm. eight weeks from now i will be a completely different human being i think i think 10 months in i had morphed into like a thick daddy i was like <laughs> fucking 200 well you've and, always considered yourself a thick daddy that's my nickname you gave it to me <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I was like 220 with no neck or something like that 225 with no neck and just 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 like all traps like like well this is this is after i like leaned out this is later on so but, he's um, out. yeah this is this is about he's filling out that tank though on the left this is like 10 or this is about, he's actually, a thick actually, daddy on the left <laughs> and the right <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is actually the phase I'm, I'm referring to this is this is actually eight months in. do you remember when i kept telling you better. not to leave that phase I was yeah, like, you like just this. stay like this. You're fucking huge. Just you like just, this. But see, yeah. I've got like a little bit of love handle here. And I don't like that. And uh, like, but but I, my I'm I'm enormous like that. Like I I my clothes are are different like that. But when when you lean out and you start look, getting that gaunt look, like you're unhealthy. That's what you really want. <laughs> Why you want red on the left? You, you, you look like, like a Chilean miner. <laughs> I've been fishing all day. <laughs> all right, all right. I was angry at the fat. <laughs> no, it almost spooked me. I'd be like, this is how blood's traveling around my body everywhere. Yeah. Like <laughs> I have oh. armpit veins this big. But yeah. You got a Van Damme look out. going on there. Right? Yeah, you can get you can you can I, I'm very you lean get right there. Anything you want on Tinder when you're that guy on the right. Well, nobody wants that on the right. <laughs> no, bring that, bring yeah, that back I promise you. Again. All right, all right. Anything you, you want on Grinder. No, I don't think anybody there wants that thing on the right. That's that's way too vascular. That's grossing me out a little well, bit when I look at my biceps. You know, two thirds of this podcast, though. <laughs> me and Woody were very encouraging. <laughs> Wait, bring that photo back up because I, that showed evidence in the left, the before picture, that you could absolutely grow a beard. You just choose not to. You could see it looks uh, like it would come in full when you were. See? Oh, oh I don't know about there. that. Look at I that. I see what you're saying. Yeah. By the way, Mary Kelp helped me with hair too. Like, uh, I, I get finasteride from them for my hairline. Yep. I think it works. Yeah. I, I, yeah. They, they, they do everything, they do all sorts of supplementation. Ask them about all the things that they do because you will be surprised at some of the services they offer. They've got all sorts of drugs they can prescribe. Yeah, that's MerrickHealth.com slash PKA, code PKA at checkout to save 10%. Time to improve yourself. 2024 could be the year, folks. What is that quote? I, I always, is it Socrates? It's something about like, um, you shouldn't die without knowing oh, the potential like, uh, of, the, of beauty of your body. Man, yeah, it's a shame for a man to go his whole life without looking jacked and it's something to that effect <laughs> no no it really is I, I it. Just, no 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 it's the other one. confucius say no paraphrase jacked yeah so it's uh it is a shame for a man to grow old without seeing the beauty and strength of which his body is capable like yeah. i i felt like like it's that gay kind I, of wisdom I, yeah i don't dragons. i don't give a shit it's first of all it's greek and they figured everything out and mm, and so checkmate i mean you know they they Olive oil. They're like they a lot uh, of Socrates, it. but what if there were more places to put our dick? <laughs> and he's like, "My God, what a question!" <laughs> let me, let me pontificate. Come here, let little me, Caesar. Let me get one of my boys to come over. <laughs> yeah, and of course, this episode also brought to you by Lock and Load, the premium, mm. premium ejaculation increasing supplement, taking the world by storm. You can get it 10% off over at GorillaMind.com with code PKA or code JIZ. You can also get energy drinks, weight loss supplements, dream supplements, protein powder, anything and everything you want efficaciously dosed is available there. Link in the description to GorillaMind.com. But start out with the lock and load. Let's improve your load first, and then we'll backfill start all Start with the, the load, mm -hmm. and then you move forward from there. Okay, once you come, you, you ropes, look, come look, big, if, yeah. if you can't shoot ropes, then what's the point of working out and being buff, right? Exactly. Like, like first time you shoot that pathetic bitch boy load, she's going to break up with you and she's going to talk shit. She's going to, it's, it's no, you don't want that. Yeah. Six. No one cares about your six pack. No one cares about those, those cum gutters. If you can't come. Okay. Yep. hundred mm -hmm. percent. So start coming like a man code PKA code jizz lock and load. And that's all. That's all the ads. That's that's all, all right. the ads. Yeah, <laughs> make you people better. Yeah, you know, we're all about self improvement. We're a very niche hot. market. <laughs> <laughs> it's drugs and sex. Oh. It's, it's all we have here. I mean, those are every two now of and the then. Every now and then, we'll get a sponsor to be like mental health. 
And it's like, I mean, I bet a lot of our guys need it, but, but. <laughs> like, God but you know what? I'm coming, I'm high, and I'm still sad. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm jacked. <laughs> yeah. When you yeah, when you cry in the shower all doubled up, you're not gonna have that embarrassing belly. <laughs> like you're, gonna, you're gonna look great. You're gonna look mean. Oh, it's been a while since I've cried double over in the shower. Those are sad times. Beaks. Is that a meme? Like, do people really like cry in the shower? One time I did when I was like 17, you know, it's just real sad over a breakup. How long did you <laughs> how long was I in the shower crying? Yeah. Uh, just got to, you know, to get a good cry out, you know, water cry. as it takes good 40 minutes. No, no, we had a good water <laughs> heater. Dad was all about that. No, I, I like, I think I just didn't want my parents to see me crying and, uh, and like, what's wrong. I don't want to fucking tell you what's wrong. Cause that like, like that'll make it worse. Like, I don't want to talk about the sad Mom, thing. I wanna... man, I've been getting easy pussy and now it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, I think that's uh, probably 17 is the last time I had a double over in the shower crying. Although I have a good cry at least every, like a real meltdown cry probably every two months, I would say. And it's usually triggered by a fucking YouTube video with like a war veteran talking about like, like the shit he, that but I served in the company. I thought, I, yeah, some shit like that. He'll be like, he'll be like, I thought we was all dead, and then Mikey stood up. He was still alive, <laughs> and he had the Bren gun. And them Germans never seen him come. And I'm sitting there like, <laughs> get him, Mikey. <laughs> I'm like tearing up, feeling sad. Like like that's the 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 Gaston um clip from Band of Brothers when that one guy is like. Talking about how cold Bastone was. Sometimes it'd be a cold night. And my wife would say, Oh, it's cold. She'll come to bed. And I say, At least it ain't like Bastone, though. Bastone was cold. And it's like, that doesn't really get me. But the grandpa I served with a company of heroes thing, even when Taylor says it, I'm like, Yes. <laughs> Taylor does it too well. You need to stop. <laughs> it's so, it's so grandpa, funny. Yeah. Were you a hero in the war? <laughs> grandpa says, Grandpa says, No. But I served in a company of heroes. <laughs> <laughs> um, that the one that yes. <laughs> every time I watch uh, Medal of Honor stories, I, I like 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 half of those will make me cry because mm. the stuff the guys like like you know do is always so ridiculous. Like I remember the one Vietnam Vietnam one where they have to hold it out against uh, some overwhelming force, and he had like an artillery piece that he was firing point blank with beehive rounds. And like they kept shooting him off his gun, his artillery piece, but he kept getting back. He's like, and I just thought, Lord, let me fire one more at him. And I get back up, load the big boy, and give him them beehives. And he'd scatter. He'd kill a dozen of them a shot. And he'd shoot me again. And I'd say, Lord, let me shoot one more. <laughs> and he just kept letting me shoot till I was all out. And then I looked across the way, and they wasn't no more Vietnamese. But I heard a boy crying. He was on the other side of the river. My legs were so shut up, I couldn't swim no more, but there was a raft. And I got on that rubber raft, and I started paddling with my arms, because they'd still work. <laughs> <laughs> it's shit like that. Like, he got to the other side. It was like, then I realized that whatever God the Vietnamese pray to is fake as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ guided my bullets right into the brains of those <laughs> 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 He's like shooting around. And Lord, help me to put down this rice farmer who's upset with our invasion. <laughs> and he ghoulishly put his children oh, behind his back. <laughs> and he begged me in his goofy speak. I said, Lord, let guide me to the village that these men came from here today. Let me find their families and fall upon them with your righteousness. And the Lord love. brought down his cleansing fire. <laughs> Stick no, I love that shit. The there was, uh, there was... I cry for less, man. I'll, I'll cry for fucking cartoons winning a battle. <laughs> I, 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 I definitely, I don't think I cried at Avengers Endgame when, you know, Captain America gets the hammer and everything and goes ham on Thanos, but I I could have. I did. Oh, shit, I definitely could have cried. I've seen it a hundred times. Dude, yeah, it's, it's a great fucking scene. We talk about it all the time, but it really is. Like anything like that um, think will, will get me. Good. Oh, Green Mile. Green Mile. Yeah. Green Mile I don't makes me very, very sad. There's very little so victory in so Green Mile. I, I won't I, cry at that. I don't want to watch it. 
because I know um, I'm going to be so mad at Percy and how he yeah. treats. That guy's the, a great actor. He is a great actor. He made me hate him as much as I hated Joffrey ever. Probably yeah. more. Actually, not even close. I hate Percy more than I hate Joffrey. Like Percy yeah. is so despicable in that movie. Man, really? what a great film. Oh, have you have you not seen Green Mile? I it's been a while. It's it's so so it's another Stephen uh it's another uh, Stephen King adaptation. Oh oh what mm. I know we were talking about uh what was the pilot TV show? Uh Masters of the Air. Masters of the Air. One problem I have, I lean on Jackie so heavy for this. They are all the same age. They are all white and they are all men. They look identical to me. It's World War II. Every fucking one of them is an identical actor. You could swap them around. I'd have no idea. It is rough. I saw a black guy on the poster, so I'm sure he's coming at some point. He's probably going to be one of those Tuskegee Airmen. Um, yeah, not in the first but, four, but I saw it too. Yeah, uh, I was <laughs> surprised that they ha- didn't find a way to like, He's as white as any of us, and like, <laughs> like get sneaky men anyway. Like, let the sergeant be like, looks white to me, and like rubber stamp, like, like let him in, like, like the only Negro who served in the Western forces. I met- whitey chalk, <laughs> whitey chalky. <laughs> I met a World War II pilot. This guy was pretty cool. He, I think, he took me for a flight in his like world war ii era plane it had like 18 cylinders like this radial engine going everywhere it was a a bi-wing uh it was a cool thing anyway he had strong feelings on the tuskegee airmen he's like (laughs) he he, um called them a word i won't say oh shit (laughs) yeah yeah and he's like you know those brothers they didn't do shit. That movie's totally fake. They were the worst pilots. They didn't earn their way into the sky in the same didn't way. Didn't we he... test? Didn't we test like syphilis on them or something? I feel like the government the like infected Airmen? the Tuskegee Airmen with like diseases oh. and did like bioweapon testing on them to see what would happen or something. Um, the we have to let Richard go. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I didn't know if I needed to acknowledge it. I'm just like he's being billed by attorneys I, right like now. Let's prioritize yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, so Thank you all, so much for coming on the, coming on the show. They're all on the West Coast, and like we, I, I, I really Please. can't wait to tell you about some stuff. Uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll be able to sponsor the show or something at some. Oh, point. that'd be fun. Uh, Hell yeah. 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 Well, just, no. Thank you for coming. No, um, we'll you, link. Man. Um, let let them know like whatever you want. Link to the description. We'll make it. Li- oh, make sure it's cool. Link, but, yeah, but but you should yeah. go. You know, if you're getting billed right now, we yeah. hate attorneys, and we really <laughs> hate paying them. Well, yeah, so so go do that. Yeah, I, I can't wait to fill you in on that. Maybe this does turn out good. Maybe it doesn't turn out like um, yeah, lawsuits and VCs and all this other BS. Viet I'll fill you in. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Not again. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Fuckers. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Well, for let's not on. make it, it four years. You know this this next gap. Yeah. <laughs> okay. About NFT. Do it quicker. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you. So much thank you guys on. for having me on. I really appreciate. We it. always enjoy. I love you. Of course, man. Thanks, Anytime. Man. All, right. All right. Later. Hate that guy. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> scumbag in the first oh, order, yeah, right? Man. Oh Using God, him. he's he's, <laughs> so, he's such a genuine. So hard to like, like him. Friendly guy. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> Richard, Richard's a real nice yeah, he's guy. He's great. Him and his fucking your friend those awful. Dogs. Him and his great attitude and his. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so what dogs. did we did oh. we uh did we fact check diseases on pilots? Yeah, Tuskegee. didn't they didn't they like spray the Tuskegee Airmen with like syphilis or something? Yeah, they, like, that, they sprayed like a lot of St. Louis with shit in the fifties. That's to, what like, that's what's wrong with you now. It could be. What kind of stuff did they spray St. Louis with? Head growth the serum. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, retard juice. I got it. Don't need to fact check that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look at that. I nailed it. Tuskegee. Wait, they gave the pilots. Syphilis. That doesn't seem. I'm like not sure if they sense. gave the pilot syphilis. I think they gave um like like mil like black military men there. Yeah, in in Alabama, I think right. Maybe, that, maybe it wasn't south. related to the pilots. Same name, different thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, good good thing they didn't do it to the pilots because you wouldn't want them up there all itchy and burning. Taylor, I'm having they already like can't fly. Ocular migraine. Can you read this to our crowd? Of course. The Tuskegee experiment began in 1932 at a time when there was no known cure for syphilis, a contagious venereal disease. After being recruited by the promise of free medical care, 600 African-American men in Macon County, Alabama, were enrolled in the project, which aims to study the full progression of the disease. 
Oh shit! In damn, they didn't have a cure. So this they didn't have different. a vaccine. They just wanted to watch syphilis do its thing. Okay, but these are, this is just the name of the experiment. This is not related to the pilots. No, right? it's right. not. Yeah, no, right. No. Same name, different thing. I'm trying to find news about. I thought they had done it to the pilots. What are the false claims? That's that something why you that. conflate the Tuskegee yeah. experiment with the Tuskegee Airmen. Right? I thought sense. that's why they were so bad at flying planes. They were because like, <laughs> they, 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 their their palms hurt from the. Uh, it says this was awful. Yes, awful. I use I, it as my um preventative yeah. healthcare spiel. Like syphilis is awful. It's terrible. It kills you. Makes you crazy. Hurts. It's an, ter- just do a terrible, terrible. Super easy to fix. Fifty cents. Yeah. Oh, I don't know about that. I was like a eighty dollars shot in my ass that I got. Well, maybe it's yeah. eight, but yeah, it's like penicillin. Like this, th- those cellins are super cheap now. Some guy yeah. wrote a whole book, false claims about the Tuskegee Airmen, by Daniel L. Hallman. Say it Says, again. <clears throat> I looked up the. I was curious about when you said your your friend was like not a fan of the Tuskegee Airmen, which is such a hilariously niche thing to. To not be a fan of, but uh, yeah, there's a book here, false claims about the Tuskegee Airmen, Daniel L. Hallman. I will. I'm just reading his list here. I will address seven false claims about the Tuskegee Airmen. The false claim that the Tuskegee Airmen never lost a bomber. The claim that the Tuskegee Airmen was an ace with five aerial victory credits, but one of his aerial victories was reduced or taken away. The false claim that Tuskegee Airmen were the first American pilots to shoot down German jets. The false claim that Tuskegee Airmen sank a German destroyer by strafing alone. The false claim that Tuskegee Airmen were in, inferior to white pi- pilots in combat. The false claim that the 332nd fighter group significantly outperformed the other fighter groups. The false claim that a Tuskegee Airman flew more combat missions than any other Air Force pilot or more combat missions as a fighter pilot in three wars than any other Air Force pilot. Man. I stopped carrying the middle of that. About yeah. <laughs> I, I, I didn't give... see one of them was positive. Like the false claim yeah. that they were inferior. Yeah. And there was like a false claim that they were significantly better. Apparently they were just like everyone else. My guess would be that this guy's like, hey, they're trying to myth like mytho- mythologize, mythologize, I guess the word would be. Like, it, yeah. like this group as if they were like the best of the best. And then there are other people who are like they were the worst of the worst. And can you imagine how scary the truth it would be? is that like, oh yeah, of course nobody can kill a battle you know ship with strafing alone or i guess maybe that's a common can you imagine can you imagine you're a tuskegee airman you're flying out over the pacific how terrifying that must be it's terrifying yeah what if your plane goes down then you just drown mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> i wasn't following for a while <laughs> you just sink beneath the waves because what what the fuck else could you do Oh, I picked it, up when you dropped button down. It, it didn't even it, hit the ground. I caught it. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. It, it, you know how long it took us to teach him to fly an airplane? We didn't have time to, to teach him to swim as well. <laughs> <laughs> some, some, that's like the kind of character they would put representing like a white major in a Hollywood movie now, where they <laughs> they would be, be, be some like mustache twirling, mm-hmm. you know, yep. evil, evil, despicable, smoking thin cigarettes, scoundrel, some scoundrel. Yeah. Man, scoundrel, such a good word. Let's bring that. You think we're going to go out there and find them? A black man in the blue ocean. Please, Nigel. I ought to guffaw at you. And I will begin guffawing. Yeah. yeah and then, I don't know. Well, I bet they were fine pilots. Seems well, like the guy who wrote a whole show thus far. Uh, I am going to watch like second and maybe continue third, fourth episodes. I'll, I'll see what, what more there is. It's debuting, I think, as we speak. Fridays. I think new episodes mm-hmm. come out, is what I should say. Um, there's five out but, currently. There'll be six out as most of you hear this. But I was awfully underwhelmed by the first episode. I had high hopes. And then, like, I, I don't know. I kind of heard people in other me- shit, shit that I watched talking about live streams and streamers and stuff were talking about it. But they liked it, but I didn't like it oh. very much. I think I will not watch it then because the, uh, neither of you seen that in this. Kyle said he Although, really values re- like it being honest and realistic, and it will just fail you in that regard. Every... Well, I'm not sure about that. Like, like I, I'm literally not sure. Like, like I, I would suspect that they, it's based on historical stuff, like the previous two entries were, like, like, like directly taken from events, like when those guys got lost and actually went to France. Like, surely that happened. Like, that would be a weird thing to just make up and put in there. Um, I will say this: Greenland. So that's a 
pretty wild thing to miss. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't have a map or anything. Maybe. Uh, the one guy got his <laughs> face blown off, though. Like, it, it, dude looks over at his co-pilot, and his co-pilot's face has exploded mm -hmm. uh, from either shrapnel or or maybe fighter strafing because there's like fighters shooting at him and that was gruesome that was mm -hmm. that was pretty fucking gruesome it was cgi but it looked awfully real it did that thing where like the nose was blown off so it looked like like a like a skeleton nose and like his all of his lips were gone it's like his mouth was shot out it was it was real rough uh, i like that the thing about aviation warfare is uh, the way it impacts the people is a little different. They never see who they bomb and they never see their friends die, right? If, if you're in trenches, then you're constantly seeing the most gruesome, gruesome stuff. You are seeing people take their final breaths and it's impactful on your own like mood, <laughs> mood in air warfare. That doesn't happen. They just sort of disappear. Like, Oh, Taylor Back just then especially gone. Taylor just, like he just landed too hard in a potato field somewhere. And that's it. I guess that's it. I just have to carry on. And he just disappeared while I wasn't looking in this show. Everything is so like visit. They're constantly losing one or two people out of the plane. They're constantly like, they really see all the damage that gets done. And I'm like, that just doesn't seem real. That's not how it happens. I don't know. Um, I, I just remember, you know, it's that famous picture. I think is a B 17 that's mm. shot full of holes and oh, they were yeah. they were figuring out where they needed mm. to add armor um and and they're like i ah, should armor the parts with holes in it like, no 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 those are the parts where a plane can be shot and return <laughs> it's the <laughs> other places that need the armor y you're right and they were stupid but i could see myself being that level of stupid like like let's let's, let's look and see where all the holes are it's not a stupid stupid idea right? yeah i mean they're made out of some thin ass shit you know it's all it's yeah. all just so th it's it has to be light or whatever but uh but yeah I, I i would guess that a lot of it's historically based i would hope so certainly because that that dr i don't care about that the, the friendships at all and that that buck and bucky guy are just way too lame and gay for me they're, they're, they're the annoying the shit of out of show. me it, they're shit. The show's the stars about of the show are two gay guys. They are Captain Winners and the Drunk Friend, like but it, gay. They're way too close. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're they're way too close. Gay, but, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, he so, gives him a bicycle first day. And it's just like, oh, you're gonna you're gonna need this here. Everybody wants one. They can't get them. I got you one right here. Like, people have been begging me for this bicycle. Been holding it for you, but like named him after himself. Uh, this is all true. He's like, you look <laughs> it, it, like this. It, he's like, my name's Bucky and you're Buck. Why am I Buck? You look like a guy I know named Buck. And so like now it's Bucky and Buck. It's like they're telling this to their girlfriends and their girlfriends, like, their girlfriends are like, their girlfriends are like, this is me and my love uh, friend. <laughs> by, the way, by the way, his real name, it's Roscoe. No, no, no. John. No, no, no. That's right. Gail. <laughs> Gail, ah. that's what it is. Yeah, <laughs> a little it's not one of those manly cool names. It's a <laughs> Gail. So yeah, you got like the gay. You got two gay dudes yeah. um, flying flying across <clears throat> Europe. It sounds like a modern reality show. Honestly, He's not gay. They're oh, he does gay. bone a chick later. One of okay, them. Yeah, well, there's nothing gay about that. We call it. We call that a beard in Europe. Mm. Well, and here too. Yeah, but they're in Europe. I uh -oh. maybe I'm. Uh, misinterpreting the motivations of 1940s women but like these guys are here temporarily right and they very well may die in the next two months and then they have dances and they're just trying to bone the girls who go to the dances i'm like was there a hookup culture in 1943 to to for women to just show up dances and fuck passing pilots and navigators and whatever I bet yeah, the kind of women who went to that were like looked down upon in their community. No, like if you if you're like a fucking if you're like a French woman or something, and you're like boning some American or some German woman, like they'd mm -hmm. probably be like, "Oh, what the fuck? You're being, oh, what is of these? these? So. We are not good enough." I, I just I have this so. idea I, that 1942 women didn't want relationships with no future. Oh, they wanted that. Well, I mean, as soon as they got, they, they were going to have a future. They're they're banking on this guy, right? But I, I no, I, I'm sure there was, there's always been hookup culture, right? Like that's how yeah, we got that made up story now. about. G that's how we got that made up story about Jesus. Whoa! Like, like Mary, 
Mary clearly <laughs> hooked up with. <laughs> Watch it. <laughs> Mary was easy while, there. Easy. Tread carefully, guys. While fucking David or whatever his name was was out carpentering, like Mary clearly went off with Shep, the the, the herder. <laughs> Yahweh. <laughs> um, and and like 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 that's the fact that that became the story that that we tell as Christians or they tell as Christians. However, however. It's how far from the truth must they have twisted it that they stuck with that one? Mm-hmm. Like, like I feel like Jesus' mother was probably like the town pump or something like that. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> like, 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 like if, if, think about in the world of like religions and mythology and all of that. Like, you're being asked to believe a virgin birth in the in that world where they're like some other guy on another street corner is like we're living on a giant turtle in space like that. Like they're like, ah, I don't know. I think the virgin birth guy is a little closer to, to reality. So like they weren't, it wasn't an unbelievable thing to them. They were already believing lots of stuff like that. It, it's yes. interesting in Christianity that it's so important for this mom to have been a virgin, right? Like the best mom ever, never even fucked anyone or something. And I wonder if the Bible wasn't that way, how it would have, changed even current society like so would virginity mean, be less valued important so I feel you're misinterpreting what what it's a virgin birth meaning a birth without consummation she was not a virgin nor is that implied she mm-hmm. was a man's wife uh, she yeah. was a married an audio book by a comedian that said otherwise ah well then he's wrong bill because- burn <laughs> noted theologian yeah. <laughs> kyle kyle swishing from the three-point line here you're right yeah she was not a virgin it was a virgin uh, birth. That's a stupid thing. That's <laughs> a weird distinction. No, nah, you're going to have to take that up with St. Peter. <laughs> at the I'm pearly gates. That. I'm going to do that. Get on my knees. There's tonight. some old yeah, Jewish guys fucking. that eh, they're going to disagree with you strongly. And if you mess with them, they'll drag you down to their holes. They'll get you. <laughs> you don't want to go get tortured with Satan for all eternity. Those holes got filled in. Dude, I think. There's no way they filled in all the Jew holes. There's no fucking way. Somebody put, the, put a fucking, hey... I noticed you've been filling in the Jew holes. You like them where they are. <laughs> Something happened. Somebody came along that we didn't hear oh, anything so, else about that. That's if that best. had been Mexicans, <laughs> if that had been Mexicans burrowing beneath the streets of El Paso, there'd be a fucking six week expose on that shit. But <laughs> oh no, it's some Hasidic fellas burrowing in Brooklyn. No big deal. Don't look at that. Oh, they're not mole people. And anyone who says there are, the mole king will have something yeah. to say about it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm sure it would have blown over if you it was. You saw a... them pull that guy out of the ground, Taylor, out of a sewer grate, nonetheless. They had torched a sewer grate. He was a fucking modern day ninja turtle. He was crawling through sewer grates and he was so skinny. It was like a magic trick when he came out. It, <laughs> it, it didn't look real. That guy was all it, hair. It's the way some people describe skinwalkers sometimes, how they seem to be there and not be there at the same time, sort of flesh but fluid, changing, metamorphosizing right before your eyes. What was he before he got to the sewer grate down below? What are they down below? Ah, what are they? Underground folks, clearly. Mole men. Yep, Taylor. you live underground, mole you man. become a mole man. I don't make the They've rules. They've been living beneath New York for millennia. That's why the Native Americans sold it to us for such a, such a, oh, oh, oh such a pittance. Oh, yes. Yeah. They're like, they said they would give us those glass beans and they would take the mole land and take <laughs> upon them the curse of the mole man for all time. Oh, take the deal. Take the deal. Oh, that I is already, a great deal. He goes, I already did. He's got his I beans am, around his neck. I am so sick of those mole guys trying to get me on a predatory loan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Man, that story disappeared pretty quick. Like whatever ended up happening. Clearly, there was nothing to see there. There was so we all moved along. When you did like the uh, the Italian guy voice, I was laughing, thinking about like like an anti-Semitic Italian New York guy who's like mad they found the tunnels because he wants to keep them there. He's like, it was a fucking fine thing we had worked out. We stay on land where we belong. They stay in the tunnels where they belong. And now the fucking government's coming in, telling them they can't be in their tunnels. And what does that mean for me? It means now they're walking around in my fucking neighborhood with their goddamn hats on, (laughs) spitting. (laughs) Are they, do they, do they spit or is it? No, Chinese people spit. That's what Mm. it is. Yeah. We haven't talked about public transit. 
Chinese the people Trump do that. verdict yet? The business fraud one? Um, yeah. That'll probably, I, I don't think, I think that'll probably get appealed. I, oh, it's definitely going to get appealed. Yeah. Um, I, and they, so I, I'm so far out of my depth. I'm not an expert on this stuff. They keep calling it a $355 million verdict, which it kind of is, but it came with about $100 million in interest because it's just, I don't know. I'm like, where did this interest come from? If you just got the verdict, where's the interest? Well, the 355 million is meant to represent how much he underpaid in like insurance and oh my interest God. and shit that, like this that. This is insane. <laughs> sure. I'm not wow. arguing. That's what they came up with. They and then not the 100 million, president. the 100 million is the interest because these things happened sometime in the past. But what gets me is there's still interest accruing because he hasn't paid it. And it's 87,000 something a day. So it's a million bucks like every 11 and a half days or $31 million a year in interest on this thing. So I guess that, that was the baffling. The number is so big. A lot of times when you like the McDonald's suit, remember with the coffee, the new verdict, very much lower. I'm guessing it'll be a very much lower verdict, but he will be guilty. I think we'll see. I wonder what he'll do when they, when they make him the leader of the land again with all that power. When they've spent the last two or three years dragging him through Eight courts. Years. <laughs> uh, the last three years especially. Yeah, true. I wonder what this very easily offended, juvenile, like mean, conniving, cruel man will do when they ma- when he becomes the most powerful person in the world in nine or ten months. He's probably going to get some payback. The... the there's no way you could have me prosecute him or persecute him in some way. There's no way you could put me on the team for that. You saw they ruined that girl in Georgia who's like, they, they, I'm sure there's some sort of Trump private investigation team was like, find it. Oh, and Fanny it tur- Willis. And it turns out that like she's got like the guy on her payroll that she's sleeping with and there's all this inappro- impropriety and trips they're going on and money's mm-hmm. moving that shouldn't. And it's like, oh, shit. Who's going to step up now and be the prosecutor against Trump? Let's hope they don't have any cobwebs because... He, I don't. That's the ball they're playing. That's the game they're playing. I, I they really should leave him alone. They're about to make him the leader of the world, and they're just really being mean to him. It would be like if Joffrey's about to be coronated, and you know that he's the scariest motherfucker ever, and you're like pissing in his wine, roughhousing him, giving him no- <laughs> Indian burns and noogies. <laughs> Indian little burns. Bitch. <laughs> you're oh, not you're gonna not do ever- shit, Joffrey. Yeah, Seven Kingdoms, my ass, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> And one to grow yeah. on. One, Meanwhile, two, he's three. cranking the crossbow in the corner. <laughs> he's, he's, cr- he's, he's cranking the co- crossbow in the corner. Like, like we're about, about to, to get literally give this IRS. guy. He's about to be a very powerful person, and he's we. He's at the end of his life. Okay, like leave him alone. Leave I him think alone. You told me. I, I really do think you're right that he has a really good shot at winning. Like at I'm this equally point. confident he's going to lose, but I wonder which one of us is right. Yeah. Like I, one of us will be. That's why we play the games, be. boys. That's the beauty <laughs> yeah, of yeah. it. We get, we get the pontificate and pour over it for these months ahead of it. I love it. It's my favorite thing. I don't like politics at all. Like I don't care about Senate bullshit, bureaucracy, nonsense. I don't think the wheels are the, the wheels are meant to not turn, so that we never turn them too far one way or the not, the other. It's it's meant to be a big rusty machine. That's how republics stand the, the test of time that's why i don't think the u.s is going to fail because our bureaucracy it's so hard for us to turn those wheels any direction too hard okay. um, but 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 trump could be a, a emperor trump because he's not like most of the bureaucrats we usually have who re- genuinely seem to bleed red white and blue trump bleeds green and they've been imp- trump and is pro- our elected officials do not bleed red white and blue i think some of them do like some of those guys especially like the ones who like were in the military, it's the ones who like signed up for, for, for that sort of public service, you know, and like, I don't know, they're, they're true believers still. Not everyone is, is, is like, you know, just in it for themselves. I, I, I do believe that. I believe there's, there's, I mean, I think the vast majority of them are in it I for think, themselves. I, if I were mm. to draw a trend, my be guess both. is that the new people tend to be like red, white, and blue and for America and that the position corrupts you over time. I think that's fair too, because like you, there's no way to look at like a Chuck Schumer or a Lindsey Graham and be like, yeah, that guy cares about the American people. It's like, no, they're reprehensible scumbags, and they will serve whoever their current pay lord is. I, I think if you're in there and you're watching your colleagues gather wealth 
and it's normalized and everyone's like, listen, you know, you just get paid to vote the way you were going to anyway. What's wrong with that? Yeah. I, that, I bet you're a hundred percent right. Like that's how it it's occurs. easy to, to rationalize that as you're like, well, ever, I mean, Nancy Pelosi's worth 300 million and this guy's worth 300 million. And uh, I can't be the only poor person here. Right. Like everybody's worth 85 million minimum and we make 170 grand a year. What? I'm going to be living in a real house. I'm going to live I, in an apartment in DC on 170. Yeah. Pish posh. I hate to hear people complain about making 187,000 a year. I think that's what house of rep is. It's if not, it's close to that. A lot. But I'm told that in DC, that actually is not a very great living. You know, if you need to get an apartment like in DC, cause you're actually going to the Capitol all the time, then rent cost of living etc 187 is not at all rich there and you know i could couch my bet here and bet on joe biden because it's plus 250 uh only a 25 24.47 percent chance here of him winning the election according to, th- to this uh it's based on bet mgm um mm-hmm. so there's Donald no way Trump- biden is the pick that runs there's no way they will put somebody else in Who's better and more popular? I, I try to catch myself and be like, ah, that's just MAGA fools running up one side. So they made the, you know, odds favor Biden money. But I'm like, what do you, you just, you want some more copium to snort? <laughs> you know, just, just admit that like people wouldn't put that much money on bad bets, right? They, they must think it's a good bet. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine so. Like they, I just, I'm, I'm sticking with my early pick from like almost a year ago. I think they're going to, Biden will bow out because he's just Mm. too fucking old and he's very unpopular. And they're going to bring a charismatic young guy who's very good on the mic like Gavin Newsom. When? When? Yeah, it would have to be. It would have to be pretty soon. But I can't even produce the commercials for a new candidate in time. (laughs) Like, 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 oh, my God, it's time. Like, we're about to get into the heart of this thing. Like, you're, you're. we're going right now. In the old we're days, presidents weren't chosen in primaries. They were selected by the convention. I suppose Good. they still are, technically, mm-hmm. right? At the convention, they, they cast their votes, right? The delegates or whatever? I'm actually not sure how it works on the primary level. Maybe. I don't know. Because I remember, like, I'm basing my knowledge on Boardwalk Empire when they have that oh, with that, that thing where they just keep redoing the recount and then they, they pick the other guy to be the, the guy. But I, I don't know how real politics works. Just mm. just movie politics. I've seen The West Wing three times all the way through. I know quite a bit. Yeah, so you're pretty knowledgeable. Subject matter expert. Yeah, yeah. I'm basically a Supreme Court justice is like aid. Like yeah. like that's the level of knowledge that I possess. Like I've, I've seen Honey Ball. <laughs> I know sports. Like <laughs> like like it's like I live on Capitol Hill and work there. That's that's the level. And, and I'm like have close yeah. personal contact yeah. with Supreme Court justice. justice. And you know the entire. I'm just a Bill song. You've sung it to me. <laughs> I know. The, I know the hook. Um, I know the hook. <laughs> that is true. You return to the chorus a lot. <laughs> oh, that's not my song. Oils, I know that other me. one. That other one that goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yes. <laughs> Dude, I learned so much from that one. <laughs> twelve. <laughs> the little echoey kid voice. Oh man. Yeah, did you know I, that? I did you know that Israel's Israel still shows. beating up that guy outside the bar? <laughs> Dude, Israel, <laughs> like, you know, weird. Israel's still beating up that poor guy outside the bar that offended them uh, back in October. Israel, <laughs> there is a, <laughs> the no, the nation of Israel, the, the home of. Oh, the way you said I Israel swear. beat someone up outside of a bar, I was like, oh, another MMA. Yeah, match. yeah. Because <laughs> I sort is of... in the middle of a U.S. funded genocide, and we have a nation of people who just collectively agreed to stop looking. We just uh, vetoed the just the, like, the, like something. Stop looking. We just vetoed something at the UN against Israel too. We did what Russia and China always do, do when like Iran or North Korea go rogue. And, and, mm. and you hear about you're like run cover China vetoed it for Iran. You're like, what the fuck? Why don't they see that the Iranians are evil? And then now here Israel is like day 472 of Israel's <laughs> defensive bombing campaign. <laughs> yeah. A two and a half year old could have been a bomb. She was dressed like a frog. Yeah. Maybe like, in her pajamas. Today we destroyed 17 had explosives in her. She exploded when we hit her. Just a huge <laughs> red mist, sir. She was loaded with C4 or something. I don't know. <laughs> Dude, some of the clips you see coming out of there are reprehensible. Really? Like, fucking horrid, horrid stuff. Yeah, it's My, it's awful. 
my prop I mean, like the infrastructure or what? are way up and it just makes me not know anything like i i will see a bombing and be like <laughs> Bro, I know that was the Beirut fertilizer thing. Like, I can't be sure. I, yeah, I, can be I don't even know. The Nolan movie. <laughs> the audio is bad. I'm so suspicious of every piece of information I see come out of is either that Arma. Ukraine too. Mm -hmm. Dude, Arma. How much Arma footage has been shown and told Dude, that it was Ukraine? I wonder if that game got more popular as a result of that. Oh, People I were like, oh my this. God, this is so awesome. So as you know, I swore off Walking Dead long ago. Um, mm -hmm. I watched it with my lady friend a while back up until like I watched my favorite season with her. When she got there, I jumped in. It's Terminus. I like the Terminus season uh, with okay. the cannibals. That should have been late season, la later in the show. That was some dark stuff. Um, and then when we got to Negan, I bow out. I don't I don't I don't want to see anymore. Um, but I think they're going to pull me back in. Woody, have you seen the previews for this Rick and Michonne show? Uh. Yes, and I think Dixon's already out, but I'm not sure. Yeah, so here's what they did, Taylor. They took Walking Dead, and they took, like, the three... They split it into three, and they made three new shows. Three. They made a show with Maggie and Negan, and then they made a show with, like, Daryl Dixon, and, and then they made... Now they're making a show with Michonne and Rick. And Michonne is trying to find Rick. That's her. She maybe she's finding like breadcrumbs as she explores. Like I don't know what city it is, but it's major city. And Rick has joined some sort of like new world government. They're like we're the most powerful military on the planet. Like they've got oh. like helicopters and like uniforms and like and and he's had he's I guess it seems Rick pretty is, good, right? Just honestly, not only that, Kyle's it saying, looked I, the scope looked big. Like I want to insert this: the last two seasons of Walking Dead, Michonne was searching for Rick. So storyline consistent i watched like i'm yeah. pretty sure all of the regular show and i was oh i i think i really stopped paying attention the last couple seasons entirely after like it didn't uh, they jump forward rick, in time rick is he's not around the last couple seasons right true yes hmm. yeah then that's when i totally tuned out and was like this sucks negan's like a bitch now and doesn't really do anything and he oscillates between like repentance and a very disinterested desire to go back to his old ways, but it's not like an, a desire. Like, I wanted to see him go back to being hardcore. You didn't watch it did. the very end, did you? I must or, not have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And towards the very end, he just becomes sort of a member of the community and he's a good warrior. So he's, he, you know, saves your favorite character here and there. Okay. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I, I might actually be pulled back to it. One thing hmm. that just further cements how awful call of duty is now i saw that rick and michonne are playable characters in call of duty it's like what are y'all doing like like nobody must be showing up to fucking shoot people on shipment anymore you can't get them in there with a with yeah. a pink m16 Dude, Fortnite anymore. has peter griffin and they've got rick and michonne it's a big <laughs> they've got drop a off what There's if they a bunch got of call of duty like, would you play as uh, would you play as homer would that would that kind of tempt you? Be like, I'm gonna do a little shooting no, with Homer Simpson. Because, it wouldn't tempt me like, either. But I, I've I've like swayed it. so far the other way with the Tarkov thing. Like, I really enjoy mm. uh, the survivor the survival aspect to games in general. I like that I got to feed my character and water him, and that maybe like if I get a broken leg, then I can't just wait in a corner for ten seconds and then just keep going. Like, I got a broken leg. We're gonna figure this out. Uh, I like those aspects to the game, and I like. Uh, the weapon modification in, in Tarkov is really fun. I know COD does an okay job, but man, they go crazy in Tarkov. They're always adding new stuff. Um, that's kind of what I like. It, it, it's it's two or three things combined that I like. I wouldn't play it if there wasn't loot. Like if you weren't like going in there and sneaking around and opening crates and be like, oh, here's a thing. Here's a shiny thing. <laughs> like if that didn't happen, I wouldn't play it just to shoot Dude, it. There's too much that gets loot. Fast. Like the, the inventory just looks draining and it looks tedious it's a skill it's a it, it, part of as much as it's a skill to like shoot somebody or follow a target with your curt with your uh your crosshair it's a skill to jump on a body open it up and quickly inventory manage and and while you're doing that taylor obviously you're doing a price check instantaneously where you're like each slot you want to be as much oh, money as possible because mm -hmm. you've got maybe just your, your bag holds 20 slots you want each of those slots to be, I, carry as much money, so you're just. Taylor, were you talking about the stash or like in the raid? 
both? Like probably both. I would look over oh, okay. and see them streaming and it would be just a huge amount. I think Taylor's talking about backpack. dash management and Kyle's That's talking it? about efficient looting, which is yeah. a skill. Yeah. 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 I mean, stash management is a fucking skill. Like, like people don't know how to do yeah, that. It looks it, so dude. boring. <laughs> like, it, just, just it's moving boring, a but it, out to make. But imagine it was like I, I dumped whatever two hundred fifty seventy five thousand dollars in small bills on your bed, and you were tasked with organizing it. Would you be bored? Like that's what organizing your stash in Tarkov has the same vibes. Like, oh, I'm gonna have to manage all these awesome weapons, expensive night scopes, and gold Zippo lighters. It's your money. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I can see how you could enjoy that. I just, it, I like it. It's I mean, too I, tedious. That part of it, like, I wish some, if I had a, a servant who came in before I got on and spent an hour doing that, I would certainly have uh, Manfred. That would be his name. <laughs> I, would, I would have Manfred going in there and, like, Manfred, go organize my stash, flea market all of my uh, weapon mm-hmm. parts, and vend my goods. But none of the task items, and if you make a mistake, there will be a recompense. <laughs> if I could do that, if I could do that, I recompense would because I don't. I don't okay. love so then it's it. not fun that part of it. It's it's tedious, it's monotonous, but it's part yeah. of the game, and uh, and and so I don't mind doing it. I don't hate doing it, but I would rather not do it. I suppose, uh, but it's part of the game. It's a multifaceted game with lots of grind. Everything's grindy like that. Every aspect of that game is shitty and grindy like that. I like multiplayer. I've realized like single player games, I'm good with that kind of thing. Like it can be fun like Skyrim. Like I always use that as an example because that's the most fun one. Like it's great. But How many other daggers? games, like multiplayer games, I really want to have it so it's like every game is a new thing. So like Call of Duty style, Age of Empires style, like you open up the game, you start a new lobby, you kick off. At the end of the game, you're not bringing anything with you. You have to you restart on the next one. I've mm-hmm. enjoyed both. Like, one thing I liked about Left 4 Dead is everybody was even. It doesn't matter if you have 10,000 mm-hmm. hours in game or it's your first one. Your characters are identical. It doesn't matter which character you choose. They're all the same, same hitboxes, same everything. And that just felt fair. you know. So you go in and you have even fights and fair is yeah. fun, right? Tarkov is not fair. Not fair in the slightest. I, I can be much better than another guy who's better equipped and lose and vice versa. And every so often, if you're way better equipped, you lose to someone who got lucky or is a hacker, maybe. And so, uh, uh, something about that not fair fuck you aspect is surprisingly fun, too. There's no there's no limitation. You know, there's there's no like, hey, don't do that. That wouldn't be cool. It's like, will we do it in real life? Well, in real life, it'd be, you know... We're, we're killing each other in foxholes with knives. Oh, that sounds awful. Yeah, you can do that too. You can you can do you can beat people to death with hatchets. You can you can do all sorts of fun things. Art. It's a mean, nasty, nasty game just because of a lot of things. I ruined a guy's night for sure the other night. He was doing the, <laughs> I, for sure I did. There's a task that makes you go to a map at night and plant two very expensive pieces of armor. It takes 30 seconds. You have to sit there and it goes 30, 29, 28, 27, and you're planting them. They're Two hundred. They're very expensive, both of them. I don't want to buy them and then go in and somebody kills me and I lose them. I killed a guy who was doing it. I took them and I planted them for my own. It was so. It ruined his night. It had to. It had. Did to. you hear him? Or where is this the um, factory mission where you go? It's to on interchange room? where you have to plant two gazelles, which is the Type Five oh. nice armor out by the musician stage. It's a scary task to do by yourself. Um, if you got a squad, they everybody watches your back and yeah, Kyle's planting his thing. Watch out. But mm-hmm. when you're by yourself and the crickets are chirping out there and the scabs are jabbering, it's real scary. Something about interchange. If, if you hear a squad, like if I hear a squad on woods or shoreline, I might go for it. Maybe I can take two and then it's only 1v2 or 1v1. Yeah. If I hear a squad in interchange, <laughs> I'm hiding behind a cash register or something. Yeah. It's been a really fun wipe. Um, they changed. They took the snow away. Um, uh. I think that's. I don't like that. I miss the snow, but I'm still mm-hmm. just having a ton of fun. Did the community um, hate the snow or the community loved the snow? It was just meant to be seasonal though. I I, I suppose. Uh, There's temporary. no snow in February in Russia. I'm sure there <laughs> probably is. I don't know. Oh, that's the other thing I did that I thought was a little bit funny. So I switched my servers to Russian servers because I wanted to take the war to them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and so like I'm like, I mean, whenever somebody talks to me, I just I just scream Slava Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> but then they probably I, target you right 
well, we're already in a fucking gunfight. Oh, what are they going to do? Be mean about it? <laughs> 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 I'm going to shoot you twice. <laughs> yeah, Slava What's Ukraine, Slava Ukraine? Ukraine? I don't know. It's like long live. Victor- it, I think it's victory. Uh, okay. You know, it's what the Ukrainians are always fucking screaming in their promo vids and their propaganda and shit, right? You know, you watch like a bunch of Russian tanks explode and then you, there's some hot blonde goes, Slava Ukraine! And you're like, glory to yeah. Ukraine. Yeah, Slava Ukraine. Good. Slava. Slava. That, that means glory. I guess. Glory what do you to say so? Slava. Like Google says so. Well, mm. the Google wouldn't fib to us. No, about, no, about no. We trust our tech overlords. We trust them. I, I, how do you even play with Russians? Is the connection all shitty? He chooses about 150 ping, 170 ping. I don't mind. Like That's I feel like I get pretty rough. It's genuine, general in that game. I don't, I don't know. I don't notice it too bad. Like I'm okay. I'm, I'm real fucking good, Taylor. You don't understand. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like first of all. All right, so half the time the person that you're that you're running into is scared, I have found, and timid about it. And the other half, it's the opposite. And their aggression, if I if I if by the way they move and the way that they give me audio cues that I can tell this is an aggressive badass. I can hear a chat and tell it cuz they're doing certain like movements. They're like I can tell by the way they're wiggling around. They drop their fucking bag right away, so they're light and nimble. It's like this dude likes to fuck, and he knows how. But then, <laughs> but then there's the guy where you both enter each other's audio range, and he goes all sneaky, and he's and and they'll be like, "Yo, you over there?" And he's like, he didn't say anything, and, you, and I hear him like pull his gun up and aim, like because he's scared. He's just like hoping I don't come around the corner. I'm gonna start yelling at that guy and then like voiping in game and throwing shit at him and like rattle his nerves. I can't remember which UFC fighter it was, but he was talking about overloading somebody's nervous system with feints. He's, he was he was talking about just giving them a lot to deal with. Just uh, maybe maybe um, um, George Saint Pierre was talking about doing it. He's he's like, I know every time I faint, he's gonna react. And and your nervous system, it can only take so much of that. It can only do that, operate at that high level where you're twitch 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 twitch. For a few seconds, maybe oh, you're an athlete, maybe a minute. So I just keep giving it to him, keep giving it to him. And he's peaked. His 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 brain is running at a thousand percent hunt kill mode, hunt kill mode. But after a while, that's taxing for your brain. You can't do it. And a malaise builds. And then I strike. <laughs> <laughs> and so I know for me when I play that game, when some when I hear that chat coming, or maybe his buddies are with him too, and they've already started talking shit about what they're gonna do to me. Hey buddy, coming for that ass. And I hear somebody go. Come here, pussy boy! <laughs> I'm scared. Because they've already made it personal, and so it's going to be like, when they, like, I know that they mean business. They're not going to yeah, They're about to deliverance this. you. They're yeah. going to be mean about this. So, like, my hands start shaking. I get an adrenaline dump, because I know that if I beat them now, then I can talk a little shit, because they can hear, like, the last, when, and when they die, they can hear for a little bit longer. through the They board. can? Yeah. They'll be dead, but they'll hear me, fuck you, pussy! I know because I hear it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying out here. Pussy! But I can hear relief. I can hear relief in their voices so often. They're so glad that I died and they didn't. Like That's the nature of the fucking game. Because if you die, it's that 20-minute wait to get back here again between the lobby and that stash you hate so much and all the other yeah, shit. Yeah, there's, I did not expect... Year. I didn't expect there to be so long of a wait period to get in the game. Like You play like 10 games a day. If you're really going at it and grinding, you play like 10 games a day because the games can be up to 40 minutes each. First of all, like it could be it could be 10 minutes or 40 minutes. It's up to you how long you stay in. But sometimes you just get in a situation where you're like, oh, my God, I only got five minutes left because the shit it's it's like a little war movie every time. If you really role play with it and you mm-hmm. got a squad and you start in, and you role play a little bit, then it becomes this Saving Private Ryan story where maybe Woody's pinned down under the windmill. I've got to get Woody! <laughs> and there's fucking machine guns and there's tracers flying and stuff. And, and you're like, like uh, no, the, the Saving Private Ryan guy is now Forrest Gump. You got, you know, <laughs> even worse, you're Ben My Stiller. My Woody is in trouble. And Turn then I'm Ben gunfight. Stiller in the field getting gunned down. Gunfights could last a minute or so. Yeah. But like, I don't know. Oftentimes there's a sort of a cold gunfight, I'll call it. Like, I know you're there. You know I'm there. And now we're both trying to make sure that when the fight starts, we have the advantage. Mm -hmm. That can last very long, even like 20 minutes. And because of that, if you have friends like somewhere else on the map in your squad, maybe they're doing their own mission. Maybe they're like, hey, I was going to go check gas station for loot. You go do what you were going to do. We'll meet later. 
you can say, Kyle, I'm struggling here. I think this guy is there and I'm here. You know, can you third man in? And that can't happen in COD 4, COD anything. You know, yeah, at best you can say, I maybe hit him once before he got me. He's and one they shot. do have the arena mode for Tarkov too now, which is oh, basically, right. it's like Counter-Strike rounds, you know? You just go, you rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Mm. Live, live, kill, die, live, kill, die over and over. And that's fun too, but I just enjoy the grind of it. And so it'll be boring and then it'll be exciting out of nowhere. I heard someone refer to it as Call of Duty as homogenous gaming. How you're constantly at this like, Seven out of ten. There's always a crazy war going on right here, right fucking now. And if you die, man, you're ten steps from being right back in the thick of things. And it just mm -hmm. stays like that, always, just like that. And a game like Tarkov or DayZ, even more so. DayZ is incredibly heterogeneous in that you've got, you might be in there for two hours without seeing another person. And you've just been killing deer and farming and then suddenly there's three murderous men there with machine guns and night vision. And one's got a bat and they're saving you for him. Like it, can just, <laughs> it just happens. They're saving you for the Batman. <laughs> they, they're bringing out the bear Jew. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. Donnie got a Nazi here. Wants to die for his country. Oblige him. <laughs> so uh, all right, how far are you away from the, the turn off of Tarkov? Man, I'm closer to the end than I am to the beginning. Like, I'm close enough to, like, Kappa and Lighthouse that, like, I'm kind of, like, might just keep on, keep on keeping on. Definitely could get the Lighthouse with Lightkeeper is what I mean to say. There's a seventh traitor in the game, Taylor, that you only unlock very far down the quest line. I've certainly never unlocked it. I hear people describe it as, if you had a job or school or anything if you don't do this for a living you don't get to do lightkeeper what the fuck because there's these five month wipe yeah. cycles in the game you need to start back over again wait so, so how much longer is this wipe cycle probably it's another three, three to probably another three months minimum um and it could be plus or plus two months maybe do you kind of lose motivation as it's going then because you're like well if i get to kappa or whatever I would only have that for three weeks or whatever. And, and um, then that's I would so, yeah, that's actually one of the reasons I've never really gone hard in the paint for Kappa is because what Kappa gives you is a bigger secure container that that safe container that you can put things in and keep even if you die. And the purpose of that is, oh, I can store valuables in there that I find in the raid and counterbalance the loss that I take when I die. But by the time you get to Kappa, you have so much goddamn money that the idea of keeping three more things secure in your container is just like this luxury of luxuries. It's a cherry on top of a cherry on top of a hat wearing a hat. It's like mm -hmm. I didn't need I needed that so long ago. Day one, I needed that when I, when bandages were gold, Jerry, mm -hmm. when I couldn't stop when I was bleeding and I couldn't do anything about it because I didn't have any money for Band-Aids. You're like, then I needed a secure container. But by the end, you don't. You're just so rich. I want the game to become more hardcore. I want it to become like Pastilli does, like hardcore mode. I want the flea market done away with, and I want the get the the secure container to be an alpha container, and you'd have to earn bigger containers. Why not just play game. it the way Pastilli does then? Well, I've already started this way, and it seems silly to punish myself without an audience. I feel like I would need people watching if I was going to do a hardcore playthrough. And I gotta say, like it could be so. I've been watching Pastilli do it, Taylor, and it seems damaging to his psyche. It <laughs> seems like it's he like it's 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 really bumming him out because what you know, what is hardcore mode like your character is more vulnerable more no maintenance you, it's self imposed rule set where you don't so oh, it's not a game mode so content no so content right. he's playing with everybody else uh, about on a who's on a different playing field basically continuously in the game you need little doodads or whatnots to complete a quest to build something in your hideout or to do even a barter trade so that you can acquire goods. There there might even, there's a quest that says, modify an AK-7 for you to these specifications. Now for me, I click flea market, type in AK-7 for you, buy one for 30,000, drag it into my stash, put a, figure out what all the doodads that need to go on it are, buy them, put it on it. Pastilli can do none of that. Pastilli has to find an AK-74 you out in the world of Tarkov, hopefully, and then he's got to bring it back. And then he's got to go back into the world of Tarkov and oh, oh, look, this is the grip. This is the grip you need. Oh, 
we got to get out. So suddenly everything he finds is incredibly valuable because he, you need so many things. I just go on that flea market and go, wires? How many do I need? 15? Bup, 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 and I buy 15 wires. You mm -hmm. know, he has to find 15 fucking wires. And if he <laughs> dies while he's carrying seven because he looted a bunch of PCs and got lucky, it's heartbreaking because that's that's going to take so much longer to find seven more miserable. wires. It's miserable. And mm -hmm. there are more things that make it even more punishing, like like other self-imposed things. It's miserable At the beginning, to play like that. So when I start Tarkov, like if I were to begin this wipe, it would give me, I'm making this up, but like seven guns, a hundred little med kit, post-it note type things and more. Mm -hmm. He throws all that away. He starts off just like with nothing and has to build up from there. And of course, he doesn't use a secure container. So every time he dies, he loses everything. everything. And like I put things in my secure container, like a surgery kit. It's kind of expensive and I use it again and again and mm -hmm. keep it in there. He can't do that. So these rules make so, it really hard. And no I one else is following these rules. Off. So he's at no. a disadvantage. Vavity has been trying to do this quest all week. I think he just completed it. It's called Setup. You have to go on one particular map. You have to wear a Yushanka hat. It's the, the ear flap Russian hat. You have to wear a dirty vest with very few pockets so you can't have lots of magazines. And you have to use a shotgun to kill players. 15 players. For, for Vavity, who's been struggling with it for like a week and a half or something like that. Just It's been miserable. Every time he needs a new Ashanka, he just goes and buys one. He clicks buy. But still, he has to go find another goddamn Ushanka in the world before he can even attempt the very hard thing to do. You know what I mean? So every time he loses that kit with the scav vest and the Ushanka and the shotgun, he has no way of acquiring those three items that are just the basis of beginning a quest that, that you need to do. It sounds it's, awful. It's awful. None of that yeah. sounds fun. It's so I wish hard. everybody had to play in that manner, and it would be a, a really good game. The other thing about setup that Volvo is what you want to do is you want to do tasks like setup where you kill a player wearing a stupid fucking hat and no armor and whatever. Um, you want to do that early when everyone else is still broke and they're using shitty guns, etc. Now, Vavity's bumping into Kyle's. What are you, level 45? Something like that? 42, 43. 40, yeah, yeah. That's high. Kyle's like rich. He's not like Bill Gates rich yet, but he's like I got Donald 45 Trump, mil. Right? That's pretty rich, right? So We're Kyle rolling. can have any kid he wants. And then Vavity runs in. There's Kyle all like fucking M4, a fully auto, great mm -hmm. armor, proper helmet. And Volvity's in there with a pea shooter trying to beat that. He needed to fight Kyle back when he was level three. Yep. Then he would have had an easier time. I enjoy that, frankly. I like the uphill battle of starting late. And, and it, huh. it, it, it gets rid of this thing that is inherent in my personality with gaming. And this is how you play Rust, by the way, Taylor. On Rust, there's like a pistol in the air, go moment for the mm -hmm. beginning of a new wipe. And those wipes are weekly. So today was the wipe. This 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 morning at like 11 a.m. or something, like maybe 5 p.m., all of Rust that's on like the, the mm -hmm. regular service wiped. And then everybody's sitting there refreshing, trying to get into their server of choice, like with all their buddies. Are you in? No. Are you in? No. Because they're waiting for the server to come back up. We've already gone to a special website that, that lets you vote on what the next map is going to be like. We've already picked where we're going to live on the on the map because we know what the map's like before it's even generated. And it's boom, go. Everybody's naked on our beach with a rock and nothing else. And I mean, everybody, 400 people. And we're all just running and screaming. And some people are apes. So they just want to hit people with rocks. Or they want to run and make a spear immediately and poke naked people. But some yeah, of why would you not? Because <laughs> we have a plan. We're all going to like this part of the map. We're st we need to coordinate, get going, get the ball rolling because everybody has it sticks and stones today. But tomorrow it'll be semi-automatic rifles if we work hard enough. Oh, there's and no like, like archery sword phase. Just there is. That's dunked. day one. Like like day okay. one is archery, and uh, it's almost all archery. See, like I few pistols. The way you describe Rust, I could see myself giving it a go. When you get back into Rust, I'll play something mm -hmm. with you. But yeah, it's Tarkov. Even the way you just oh, I wouldn't do that to you. Fun. No, it seems hellish. No, seems I wouldn't like do that. Very to you. little fun. You need to enjoy not only um, like military style um, simulation shooters, but also survival games um, and, and 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 stuff like that. It's a it's an interesting combination of games. Yeah, I don't like having to feed or water a character. Like I know there's like a hardcore Skyrim mode where it's like, do you want to have to fucking feed yourself cheese wheels and shit? Your horse too. The and it's like You're no, feeding the horse. No, I do not. I want to get as to the paralysis spell as fast as I can, and then run around <laughs> paralyzing entire cities. <laughs> That's what I want to do. 
Yeah, I've I, I've only played AOE two for like months now. It's the only game I've played. I, now I'm in I, I, I'm in Operation Trick Viper or Hera to be friends with me, so I can go from I terrible tried, to marginal. Have didn't you tried just to asking tweet? him to be your friend? Yeah, like, I did. did. Viper did reply to me, and so mm. maybe I can maybe I can parlay that. Hey, will you, will you teach me? I know that you've probably you're probably playing this game nonstop. How about you play with my retarded ass, and so you can give me basic shit like, no, that's not how you lure a boar, dummy. You you do it this way, like just little basic things that he yeah. can help me with. You that know, would be good. I watch like, so like, much of his and Harris content. Like that's all I've been watching on YouTube. Is trying to get I, better, trying to improve. It's I it's love so doing that with fun. a game. I I love him trying to improve and learn yeah, all fun. the tidbits. It's like all right, I, I'm click now. I'm clicking as fast as I'll ever click. Maybe I could learn like a better way to stand though, or a better mm-hmm. way to like hide behind a box. Oh, they can't see me if I'm behind this box, but I can. I'll never forget that. Now I'm I'm a little better. I'm a little better now. It, yeah, I, I like that phase of of gaming, and I, it never it's ends enjoyable. with some games. With yeah, this, with this one, it certainly doesn't. Like, but just like improving on little things, like oh, there's a trick that I never thought of on how to micro archers. That's way more effective. That's great. I'm going to incorporate that. Then you work at it, you kind of suck at it, and you get competent, and now suddenly your archer plays way better. Like it's the eco's tough to to balance. Like they they constantly are doing balance changes on the sieves to try and keep them semi like balanced because there's 45 of them so it's easy for one to get more powerful or less and so like in the eight month phase i didn't play it at all between last year and this year like when i popped back in and looked at the sieves it's like oh that's new oh that's not what it was oh that's been nerfed that's been buffed and so it's like relearning a lot of it so i need to really it's like figuring out some core builds that can apply to a lot but even that is tough i got so frustrated my uh my brother joined because me and my brother and a lot of our buddies play on discord and my brother like became a patron of Hera to get to get his like custom high level build orders and then he like sent a couple to me and i printed them out and i i'm gonna become and now you're Hera. distributing them on the internet no, I'm for distributing money them for free <laughs> no for a price yeah for a no, price. I mean, it's uh, part of our patreon now <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna join. I'm gonna join Harris. Yeah, it's part of our Patreon. <laughs> you get Harris build orders when you go to you Patreon. Slash <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the so one dollar like, level. Why not? I mean, come on. He, like, there's a, the new Civ. Mm. The Georgians has like a different start. They have a mule cart for resource drop off, and so they don't have to go to wood Ooh, very big. early. It's very big. Here in this woody mule scout. carts. Yeah. And he has this build order, and I watched a video of him do it. I've watched the video like three times. He's like, guys. It's perfect. It's easy. It's the simplest build order ever. Look how early the 17 population scout rush is. Look at how smooth the Dark Age can be. And I'll watch it. And it's like Grizz mode where I'm like, yeah, it is easy, Hera. You're right. And then I go and I try it. And I'm like, oh, I, don't know, I just got to feudal age. I don't have enough wood for a stable. Everybody's bumping into each other. It's not working correctly. And so I like try to modify it in a Google Doc where I'm like, okay, you gone clearly Hera's so build is too clean for my ass. So we're going to add a wood guy here. Maybe that'll cover my my mistakes a bit. No, it doesn't. It's very frustrating. Have you gone down the path yet of looking at your favorite players or good players' hardware? Being like, maybe his mouse is the trick. Or maybe what kind of monitor no. is he on? How big is Hera's monitor? Maybe <laughs> I've got maybe my monitor's too big. I'm looking around too much. See, the thing with it is for me, you can the monitors the wrong like, side. That's but the you, difference between me and land, Mike. It's thousand dollar yeah. monitor, dude. Just I got a clouds monitor. Here. Here. If I got two hundred special mics for a second. I'd be landmark, and his ear yeah. has sets different. Is it? It, it seems seemingly on. they like play on a harder mode than I do because like I play a little more zoomed out than them, which I guess like makes mouse clicking accuracy more difficult. But if you can see more of your map a little bit. It makes it easier to kind of plan out when you watch their videos. They're like default all the way zoomed in because they want because they're yeah, only moving know. around the map with hotkeys. You anyway. disable mouse smoothing and in, in your in your settings so you get accurate clicks, Taylor. Yeah, well, I don't know about that. I don't yeah, know if that's gonna, gonna, I don't know if that's going to be the fucking difference maker in my play. I I, I made sure I, I'm see, way I better than I was settings. last year. I'm way better, but I. Imagine watch, next year. Yeah. We'll be I, an attorney. Yeah. Plan, uh, Tell no. me more about your chair. You'll be wearing yeah. a fucking shirt. <laughs> You'll be wearing like a sponsored shirt to, uh-huh. get to, to the gaming awards. Yeah. I get invited, just get absolutely butt fucked by no, anyone. When, 
no, when you go to North Korea, you're going to fucking take on Ching Ping, the fucking AOE two master. See, they never got AOE three or four there because North Korea, but yeah. they've got AO, AO, AOE. See, that's the thing. Nobody plays three. AOE two has always been the national sport of North Korea. We just didn't know it. And you're the great white hope. We're sending you. In. <laughs> We're sending you in because the way the way the tournament works, they get to pick any of our players and you just barely meet the accreditation. You're like a Rocky Balboa scenario. This is the movie that we're gonna, that I'm making. It's gonna be great. Oh, that'd be good. Like it would be so embarrassing to play against someone who's really good. A any RTS, this will happen, but particularly StarCraft, Age of Empires, the complex uh, economy based oh, ones. Oh, Ping's the best. Like, like I could get thrown in a COD lobby with like really good players, and I'm not going to go 0 and 20. I'm gonna get a couple kills. Like I'm going to get a couple. I could luck into a kill with a grenade. I could luck into it. Yeah. If I get so. into a game with like. I know I'd like have a hard Hera time killing Viper Landmark. in AOE two. Like, there's no chance I, I do anything. I no, think if no me chance. Landmark, I think if me and Landmark play like one v ones on Arena, I would never kill him. Really? I don't think I would ever kill unless I did something like cheesy and like hid and like laid and and just hoped he walked and he just happened to walk where he's supposed to. But Fill even every then, pocket with grenades and just yeah. oh it. that wouldn't do it. Oh oh he'd and love that general he'd direction. Pocket. You don't he think push me? Yeah. Oh, well, Tarkov's he'd, different. He'd hear the pin and he would be in my pocket. Like, like, I, no, I don't think I could ever kill Landmark. I don't think so. Like, they're just watching. Those guys are so fast and so accurate, and they know how to. They know how to play. They get those guys with ten thousand fucking hours. Yeah, uh, ten thousand real hours too. Like that's the thing about Basili we were talking about the other day. He has twelve thousand hours in Tarkov, and shit. A lot of a lot of people spend tons of time doing that inventory management shit, or just shooting mm -hmm. the shit, waiting on their buddies to get their gear on. He has spent. An enormous percentage of those 12,000 hours, not just playing by himself, but playing by himself in the most speedy, efficient manner mm -hmm. possible because he's the best at that. He's he's like continuously racing toward Kappa with people over the years or doing like self-imposed like challenges that involve him playing lots and speedily. Mm. So he, he has 12,000 real fucking hours at that game. And that doesn't count as other. He's got another account, I guess, where like... Um, <laughs> he didn't no, no it's 12,000 streamed hours it's 12,000 streamed hours i think he said Good God. <laughs> dude i watched a video of of it's crazy of do you know Arrow how many hours you beating have? people 4,100 or so i i also have a really high number but it, i'm sorry to cut you off taylor no, but it doesn't mean anything a lot of my hours are just i'm not even at the computer and my hideout is like making money for me and I yeah. I just walk into the room, slide some things out, slide some things in, and leave. And it just keeps running. And I do that. Money. Like, if I, I were to look at my account, I bet my AoE2 is off the charts just from leaving it on overnight. I had, like, thousands of hours in Warhammer 2, for or, like, hundreds of hours, like, a lot. Probably a thousand from just leaving it on on a laptop for months at a time. Like, I, I forgot I had it open after we fell out I thought, yeah. yeah, the power bill, I was about to get there. Like, I think to myself, you know, I'm using real electricity to light these lights <laughs> in my hideout. <laughs> and, and farm Bitcoins. You're farming yeah. fake Bitcoins with a real GPU. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it, I genuinely, if when I get off Tarkov, I'm like, let me kill this game because I don't know how much power it uses. Frankly, my electricity bill is always so shockingly low that I'm like, I better not look into this too much. I remember <laughs> my dad had these water bills for years that were way too low at his farm. And it was there was a they were looking at the wrong meter is what mm. was happening. And we didn't know what was happening. We just knew something was happening. And I feel like that's happening with my electricity right now. It's like it's so fucking cheap. But nonetheless, this PC runs so hot playing Tarkov. This whole room. I opened the window in the coldest of nights when it's, you wouldn't believe this, Taylor, like 30 fucking degrees here. Nope. And, <laughs> so it's got to be, it's got to be like using a lot of electricity. You, yours does too, though. You've got a 30 fucking 90 over there. That thing. 40, 90. Uh, that's what I mean. 40, 90. I've got the 40, 80. Dude, it runs AOE too like a dream. No shit. I what could run it. I could, I could get 20 run monitors Mind... and run 20 of them. <laughs> how's it run Minesweeper, Taylor? How, how's, how's Solitaire? <laughs> I bet, I, bet when, I bet when you win Solitaire and it goes, there's no frame drop at all. Not I at bet all. It just powers right Dude, When you win it, in yeah. Age of Empires, a huge amount of 
embers come across the screen when it says victory oh, embers. and there's a mod because some people's pcs can't handle the embers and there's a mod called no embers i'm embering loud and proud now wow. sometimes the wind you don't get them on losses and that happens a lot but those embers come in on a victory feels good that's another reason why i'm hesitant to play certain games indie games sometimes is like this these these computers are expensive, and I and I feel like I should be doing them for expensive stuff. It'd be like having a big old John Deere front end loader and like getting it out and like doing some bullshit tasks. Like this this thing needs to run. It's like it's having that Belgian Malinois all cooped up, not not killing things and biting people. Hmm. When you're ready to play Rust, I'm down to play, as long as we are, our deal's still on. That you download the AOE two I gifted you a month ago. And we play a little bit of that. Ah, that was the wrong account you gifted. Clearly. No, it wasn't. I didn't get that message <laughs> in the middle of the night. And, <laughs> and ignore it. <laughs> I bet if I check my email, I could find that. And it's like, <laughs> Kyle has declined your gift. <laughs> I definitely didn't decline it. I'm sure I accepted it. But that would be funny. That would um, be. Oh, man, It'd be a good I, time, I, man. Dude, you would have so much fun because you're really good at... You do this every games. time. You're, you're really bad at manipulating me to play this game. You always say the same, but you're really good at this, Kyle. You'll be so good at it. Everybody's going to be like, wow, Kyle's a natural. Like they always yeah, do. because I'm not right. trying if to manipulate you. Play the game, <laughs> I want to play so a game with my friend. You played this game. Yeah. It's saying. kind of manip All right, so it's manipulation nonetheless. There's good manipulation. There's that thing that mothers do where it's like, where's my big strong man at? Oh, you're going to school, <laughs> you going to school today to be a big boy? My goodness, yes. you're so big. Look at <laughs> it. Oh. Look at you, you little hoss. You know, you're just pumping, you know, shining yeah. the wheels a little bit. They got a big, strong RTS player. It's rough. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you'd have the most APM. Like, it'd be crazy. Everybody'd be like, how's he click so fast? It's that trigger finger, I bet. Dude, oh. If you got in there with my friends and I even heard, <laughs> if I even got a sniff that one of my friends was like rushing you on one of your first games, I'd be like, hey, <laughs> shut that down. None of that. <laughs> None of that. I don't want any of you to even see Kyle's base until Imperial Age. <laughs> Let him yeah. tee off. I'd Man, be at my base and I'd be like, oh no, Kyle's attack. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you like foster bad habits though, right? Like, like, oh, this game's cool. Yeah. If I know anything about AOE, yeah, Sim City for the first 18 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Sim City for the first. Yeah. But the, uh, if you'll lose if you just Sim City, then that's, yeah. That's I, what it's called. Yeah. Sim I'm not City. going to have fun. At but all. wait, I feel what, like if, if you Sim City in preparation for a fight, and you avoid fights for that long, you're in a very good spot, right? Yes, Typically, but like yeah. the goal early game is to attack early so they can't set up. Mm -hmm. And so like the best defense is a good offense. Like if I'm playing Blood Kyle and we're on the same level, like Kyle wants to get to Castle Age and boom and get I successful. Never... So I need to keep him from doing that. And by having stuff running around his base, he can't interfere with mine. I'm much. sure you're right, but it's why I didn't like Civilization. It's like, a, I just want to Sim City for like an hour or so. You guys aren't on the same page. A big <laughs> Why are you party. rushing me with these horse people? If you're so, like playing with like buddies, like I like I'm better than a lot of my friends I play with. And so because what you made a purple garden in front of your castle and I wanted to see it burn. Like I, I don't I don't <laughs> rush we my buddies. Goals. <laughs> Actually, so, I, I rushed my younger brother a lot because he's also mm -hmm. like he's about as good as I am. Mm -hmm. And so like we'll fuck with each other. But one of the I won't like fuck with a friend who's picking it up. One of the core things about Civ Five multiplayer was you can press tab and you go into this convoluted menu system and you can see everybody's military score. So you can you can see like oh we're all the same. No need for me to build anything. I can continue to Sim City. I can I can focus on mausoleums and shit. As soon as you see someone's military score start really going up, you will usually ask them, "Hey, your score went up. What'd you build?" Oh, it's it actually got they, they gifted me a trireme. Don't worry about it. Oh, understandable. That makes sense. So what you do, Taylor, is let's say it takes eight turns to build a samurai. You put mm -hmm. seven turns into a samurai. You stop building. Now you start building a chukunono or whatever a chikono or I can't remember what it is that it's the uh, chukunu. It chukunu the the crossbow that shoots yeah. twice. Those take five turns. Put four into it. Yeah, China's Switch special unit in AOE. So you keep doing that. You keep switching to like a different thing. And now when you're ready to do your big military boom, one turn into each thing. Unit, 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 every turn. If they're not on their shit, literally checking every turn, they might miss it. They might miss it for a while. 
suddenly there's a giant army on their doorstep, like in, in the course of five turns. Like, like so. Well, that seems fun. I, I would play Civ. Like, I oh, like no, practical no. games. These like are that. all these are all viruses, mind viruses, Taylor. This is what <laughs> Richard Ryan was talking about earlier with the mind virus. This that's what these games are. The, to play that game, Taylor, I would have to. T- you talked about your YouTube recommendations. Yeah, I would have to alter my YouTube recommendations to play that game. Right now, I'm getting movie reviews, lots of '70s jams, lots of that that brandy or fine girl shit that Woody put me on last week. Like I've been seeing yeah. it all goddamn week, all week. You'd be getting build order recommendations. Yeah, I'd be getting build order recommendations. I, right now, I'm getting like Landmark and Bastillion Willers and shit. Lots of Tarkov loot guides. 500 rare spawns on lighthouse and where to look dude i know all you have to do is try it and you will despite yourself want to get better because you'll be like i could do this i could get better at this oh yeah taylor probably isn't even good oh he said he's not good he's not good i'll beat his ass in a couple of weeks perhaps you we should wouldn't find a game that yeah. neither of us have played before that we attempt because i, I want it to be I, rts i, 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 want- I love that genre I hear RTS is dying. Like I feel like I read an, uh, an online article that there's just like no good RTS and all the RTSs suck and everybody has gone back to legacy R- RTS from days gone by. Then it's like the dying light of of a gaming genre that once was. Could be. I mean, I know AoE2 does well. Uh, StarCraft 2 is obviously enormous. I, I've tried now. that a few times. I didn't like Stark. I'm just not. I'm more into like the history and like the different nations part of AOE than I am in like the three alien races that you can play in uh, in StarCraft. Even though like StarCraft, se- like it seems like a really fucking hard game to be good at. Really hard. W- Wings was great at it. I, I don't. It can't be that hard. StarCraft um, two. He played StarCraft. Yeah, you didn't know. Are oh, you serious? Is this the didn't did he say he played in South Korea or something? He did play in South Korea. That's when he that's when he flew to South Korea when he was seventeen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. that now. He they won, if him, I recall. They called him Two Seat Jordy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they called him Two Seat Jordy. <laughs> he, he only got who he only game on. He double white seat. <laughs> <laughs> he intimidate other gamer with massive presence. <laughs> he devour entire craft services. We go hungry. Yeah. <laughs> I sit there with all my practice. He eating chili like he don't even care. It really get in my head. <laughs> he a master of manipulation. <laughs> he always two meals ahead. He's always two meals ahead. <laughs> you feel the ground move when he come. <laughs> he announced himself before he walk in. <laughs> <laughs> write that down oh um anyway um yeah i i i've we'll seen videos a bit but i never really got into it i don't know i don't know what i'm gonna play after this little phase i'm in right now um i don't think it'll be aoe there is this game <laughs> 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 um somebody linked this today fish actually who's always got well takes on things <laughs> and uh he thought, i, like, I saw this trailer so yeah. I don't know what the fuck's going on here. This trailer is for Zach, a game can you show called, it, please? Yeah, it's called uh, King Makers. King Makers on Steam. We've been working really hard on this for five years. You can finally unveil it to the public today. I hope you guys like it. I don't know what the fuck's going on here. It looks like anachronistic world war. So what I mean by that is, is like bombers and Apache helicopters doing battle against these feudal age footmen. <laughs> but so Steam. Well, right now we got like a feudal age like hack and slash going on. He's the one who trained our army, who grew us into an empire. I don't know where he's from, but if you think you can stop him, you're already dead. What? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get this far. Okay. I wasn't ready for that at all. <laughs> He's got a pistol. <laughs> He's got a shotgun. A shotgun. That guy's got a seven for you. This is the game you were looking for like ten years ago when we started PKA. And you just wanted to mow down Nazi it, zombies. It generally, yeah. <laughs> Look at that. He just killed a horse. I mean, this looks, this looks pretty sweet. Grenade. <laughs> oh, there was a nade. I was like, oh, right. holy shit! He just shot like a general with a sniper to save the future. He's a grenade launcher into a crowd of knights. 
bro! Conquer the past. Dude, what is this game? It oh, looks I like, like this. It's oh, I like that. It, yeah, it looks like we've got fucking overhead RTS um, with with like first person soldier control, which isn't like revolutionary, but like it looks like it looks slick the way they did the transition here. Oh. If it's anything like this trailer, I'm in on this. Dude, I want to. I want to snipe from the top of the. Fuck! There's an Apache. There's a fucking Apache. That's just ridiculous. Future. I hope he can save his own. Dude, he brought the Toyota. Dude, the Toyota might be the most, the best offensive weapon in this game. What just happened? Oh, we went to the future, future. Kingmakers. And it's a fucking, like, spec op guy with a machine gun on a horse. That, I'm, I'm going to check this out. We'll see if that's, if that's just a well cut trailer. I love the idea. I yeah, love the anachronistic cool. combat style. I don't know. At first, I thought that it was sort of a joke, and basically it was like a game like Civ, where if you're mm -hmm. really pounding somebody's ass, maybe you've got helicopters and they've got foot soldiers, but that looked, that was all in engine. Um, so I don't like that's that just gameplay. Their release date is sometime in 2024. It's nah. like NASA adjacent. Yeah. I, no yeah, sooner you know. than 2024. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. You know, I, I'm I'm just I'm, I'm interested in that. That looked neat. I I, I like that. I I'm like not anything. Pre-ordering shit. No, I don't pre-order things unless they give me like a, a purple cape or something, and then there you go. Well, I mean, if there's purple capes involved, you didn't say. Baldur's that. Gate was like, here's the price of the game. Here it is. If you want a cape for five dollars, I guess we'll do it. But but you don't need it. And I was like, I need it. <laughs> I, need the I need it right fucking now well, hang on a minute hear us out we're also throwing in a useless hat that you'll never wear you had me at cave <laughs> <laughs> so i immediately gave him the five dollars because Baldur's gate is genuinely like it's on my mount rushmore of games now it, it's it's, Can you it's see right up there another run through eventually uh, probably yeah, I, I told you, I was playing with my lady friend, she was doing a playthrough, and I judged her playthrough so harshly that we both got mad at the game and, like, didn't bring it up again. Like, it's like a sore spot. <laughs> what did she do like, that you didn't like? Um, so there's this uh, this character called Auntie Ethel. She's this, um, oh, what's it called? It's not a witch. It's, um, a, anyway, she's she's a monster. And she, and uh, you, you, get, you get one over on her, and she's like, ah, oh, mercy, mercy, don't kill me. And I'll give you a plus one to your special skill of your choice. Oh, that's and that's valuable. huge, huge in an RTS. It's a one-time kind of thing for this mm -hmm. permanent buff to a. And what and what you do is you pick the skill that is your combat multiplier, the thing that makes every stroke of a sword, shot of a bow, more powerful. It's the combat multiplier for mm -hmm. your race. They're, they vary by race. And you know she picked the wrong fucking one. And I found out about it far too late to alter shit, alter course. And I was just like, man, I would just start over if it were me. And I meant it, but it was really discouraging the way I said it, I guess. And uh, and so, but yeah, I will eventually play Baldur's Gate <laughs> three again, I'm sure. Um, like, She's uh, like Kyle, I, let's look, check out my character, and you're like, despicable. It's what I got her for a for a birthday. I got her like a gaming PC, a monitor, a chair, and a fucking desk. And then like that happened. So like, we'll we'll, we'll play some more Baldur's Gate. It's we'll point. get through but, this. <laughs> the word you're looking the thing, for, Kyle, is she is a hag. A hag, yes. That's the that's the uh, monstrous in, in the game. I can't believe you didn't enjoy it, Taylor. That story is so wonderful. Uh, oh, I played I would it, like it. it. I, I just I think didn't I beat play it. enough. I played, I played like it. 20 minutes. It, I would play lots of that. Um, I've beaten it twice at least. Um, I really enjoy it. I love the mechanics. Um, it's a game where... I'm sure if you were streaming it, somebody would like look at what you're doing and be like, Kyle, you're wasting so much potential here. They'd look at my gameplay like I looked at hers and it would, mm -hmm. it would hurt my feelings. But I feel like I'm doing my best. And I've watched, that's that's another game that just absorbed my life, right? I was watching goddamn videos on, on all those builds and stuff because it's like yeah. uh, it's like Magic the Gathering, which also absorbed my fucking life. I was watching those losers make their <laughs> daily fucking build up that like a brand new blue deck that'll blow your fucking mind i'm like shit 
I got to know. <laughs> bookmarked. When I get home, I got to no, know. What do you mean on my phone? No, I need my headset to absorb and take notes. <laughs> <laughs> I need to drink my ah, cocoa. So I need and three notes. of these in my deck. I guess yeah. Chiz and I will get in a, a spending battle <laughs> for our decks. That was my first fucking infection of Magic the Gathering. Is when I got into the spending battle with Chiz and wasted all that money. And then I got into it again with you on that new website where it was incredibly easy to throw money at it. And I must have wasted $400. Don't even remember the name of the fucking website. Must have great decks. I don't fucking care. I yeah, would never still play have that, that game that again. Really annoying Magic deck the Gathering is like is. playing fucking dice, except the dice have cool like character names and shit. It's oh, just Magic's a, a bunch of fun. Oh, my God. So like maybe to, I haven't played in a long, long time now. I've been into other, obviously, AOE. But it's been so long since I've had a game that I've wanted to be this invested in that I'm really enjoying it. Like mm. I'm enjoying the getting better process, and that's, I just wish it were a game fun. that was made in this decade, the century. Fuck. Yeah. Mm. It's, yes. Well, I mean, I, that, wish... I guess that's technically a lie. I'm playing the 2019 version, but you know, the original was 99. Yeah, I, th that's that's really a, a barrier for entry for me is that it is such an old game, and it's the it's one of the reasons I never even bothered with Counter Strike. Obviously, everybody thinks Counter Strike's the greatest. Yeah, it's, it's so the popular. most played game all the time, like perennial, perennially. But I know better than to get into a game that people have been pr practicing grenade spots and snipe spots on for decades. Like, like I'm not going to get into that. Oh, no, they put you... It, there's like skill-based matchmaking in AoE. Oh. Like, you, you really actually need that in an RTS game. It's not like Call of Duty where you want to like, you know, tool around with your buddies. Like if you play against someone way better than you in an RTS game, whether it's AOE or Starcraft, you will have less than no fun because the yes, person who you're playing against will immediately recognize you're new and they will just try something like like bully you. Like, oh, that's this guy I doesn't do in, know what he's doing. I'm gonna wall him in. I'm gonna go do Warhammer. early and wall in this guy's berries so he can't collect berries. <laughs> when I play oh, with fuck. like <laughs> when I play with like Midi or Vobity or whoever in Warhammer, it's like all right, how how hard can we meme on him? Could we bring that giant pterodactyl that makes everything around it invisible but can't do any damage? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Can bring we do that? Big, how like, many lead belchers can I bring if we turn yeah. the <laughs> unit unit? Uh, it is really fun by. um that play the dinosaur men the sort and uh and bring just the gigantic dinos in that game. That is a really fun aesthetic, especially in team play. Yeah. If one guy just brings three gigantic saurus and everybody else has normal armies. It's a problem. Yeah. It's because that like, one, I don't remember what it's called, but it's like a the unique, shredder of not, Lustria. The shredder of Lustria. And it's got a bunch of little skinks Skinks. on it that also are throwing javelins and blowing blow darts. Yeah, the lizard yeah. men are a really cool aesthetic one. I wish the ogres weren't so fucking bad, but yeah, they have the, a cool in, aesthetic too. I think the way they modify I think the lizard men in Warhammer 40k lore are like the old ones. They're uh -huh. like the race like hundred a hundred million years ago who started like the war in heaven or something and are responsible for some of the races that exist. I think in fantasy that's too. That's also true. Yeah, yeah. They converted a lot of the stuff. When you realize the conversion, it makes 40k a little less cool. Like the uh the Necrons in 40k are these cool fucking things. They're like they made a deal with uh with with the with the 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 frog people long ago. Um, and they thought that they were getting immortality, but in reality, they all just lost their souls. And so now they're interred in like cyber, they're, they're people, but their, their minds have been put into machines. So mm -hmm. they, they're the Necrons and to, they decided to just sleep through the hard part of the galaxy. So they live in these pyramids and they sleep for millennia and millennia and they wake up later on and they're the fucking Egyptians. Damn. So they're the tomb Kings. They're the tomb Kings. Uh, and and like as well, you like Tomb Kings that, also aesthetically awesome. Tomb Kings are awesome. Um, but but yeah, everything's like that. There's even space dwarves. They call them squats. Uh, there's so so we got space dwarves up in there. They're like humans who I don't know live too near the galactic core, and because of the whatever the planet they lived on got short and hardy and mined so a lot. They, <laughs> so they did as well. I haven't checked since the last time you and I got into. It. I should have when I played a couple of games a, a week or two ago. When we stopped, I think they just released Chaos Dwarves as like a new race. Yeah, they might. I haven't checked the DLC. There might be a new race again. Pro there is. Um, I, I could do that. Or here's a game I would get into with you. I would get into Dark Tide. 
Um, since w since I stopped playing they Dark Tide, score? I think they have. I don't know what they've done, but I understand they have fleshed the game out quite a bit. Lots of DLC. I just glanced over somebody's shoulder the other day playing it, and there was like lots of like unlockable shit and like webs of unlocks and and stuff going on. Is that the I don't K the, the the Vermintide yeah Vermintide yeah, the yeah, chains. Yeah, yeah. Now I have my complaints about that game, but I'll tell you like the it's music. It's aesthetic. It's it's accuracy the to the 40k lore, like blew me away. Like when you're you and your boys are running down that dark hallway that looks just the way it should, and the music is like this. It's like techno mixed with gothic. It's like do da do da da do da da do da da do, and the, and then like one of the characters got like screams some like hardcore shit for the emperor. <laughs> and you're like. Fuck yeah, for the emperor. You like say your voice line too, whatever it is. And you're, you mm. guys like, it's the heretics. And you're like, fuck yeah. And then some guy goes, death to the Xenos. And you're like, oh my God. And then you like clash with them. And that first clash, you just, everything in front of you just explodes in blood and viscera. And then you see in the back, the big stuff's coming. And it's, it's real cinematic every game. It's we can fun. try that game. I'm down. I, I, I love it. They've music. added a lot to it. I play that music. Um, a lot when I'm playing other games, it's so good that or I found this music genre that I listen to when I play Tarkov. It gets me a little depressed after the second hour, though. It's called it's Russian Doomer music, D O O O M E R Doomer. And it's like sad Russian cartoon character smoking a <laughs> cigarette hmm. and like and like this montage of like depressing Russian architecture. And it's just like. I don't know what they're saying. Obviously, it's in Russian, but it's lots of like, blah blah blah. Like it's, it's like sad. And then, you got the, and the cigarette Wojak. In that. That's it. That's the music. Like 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 skip around in there. That's what I listen to when I play Tarkov. It really gets me in the mood to be like depressed and angsty. And I know, have a I have terrible. a I have a mod on AOE <laughs> that replaces the soundtrack, which is good with the Lord of the Rings soundtrack. Oh, and so how's that like, go? Uh, sometimes well there's like the shire parts there's like the rohan parts gondor and so sometimes it meshes up nice where like i'm running a bunch of cavalry and the fucking theoden music comes on it's like this rules this is great and then sometimes it's other... totally disjointed and it's like oh it's playing mount doom music when i'm like peacefully eating sheep three seconds into the game or like mm -hmm. it's playing nice relaxing shire music as i'm getting my ass plundered like that's that's the way it goes sometimes <laughs> what was i gonna say I don't know. What, time to wrap. Russian Doomer. Oh, is oh it? it is time to wrap. Well, oh, 10 seconds. Yeah. Well, well, can you remember in 10 seconds? Eight seconds? Can you remember in six well, seconds, Kyle? You got four seconds. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Check, Check out, out our uh, sponsors. Check out Richard Ryan. I'm sure we'll have a link in the description. Click on the Merrick thing. Make us look good and make you look good. Because quite frankly, you need a little more tea. PKA 688. I see.